What is up? What is going on, everybody? It's time for UFC 300. We are finally live. Just about 30 minutes away, less than 30 minutes. No, about 30 minutes from the time where Cody Garbrandt and Davidson Figueredo are going to be in the cage. Make sure if you're in the chat, leave a like on this stream. Let's try to pump this stream through the algorithm. All right. So, you know, guys, it'd be greatly appreciated if you guys could leave a like. But it is time, guys. It is absolutely time for UFC 300. Very close. I was freaking out earlier today. I was literally freaking out. Thinking about how sick this card is going to be. Even the prelims are going to be sick. So I thought I would go live a little bit early. Just do, you know, I always thought start the stream with a little bit of jelking. Start the stream with a little bit of jelking. And then a little bit of mewing. Okay, so we're going to jelk, we're going to mew, and then we're going to watch some fights. Yeah, but what's going on? How's everybody doing? We are live. We're ready to rock. UFC 300 going down. I'm pretty freaking hyped, man. I'm pretty hyped. Pretty damn hyped. Crazy switch up. Switch up. Yeah, I mean, I was, dude, my heart was racing earlier today just thinking about this card. So I'm really excited for it, man. Very excited. Um, can you mew now? I may as well, brother. Hey, thank you for the five, I mean the $10. Justin, first super chat of the night. I appreciate it, man. Stuck at work till 8 p.m. Boss man said if I could convince him, I can leave early for 300. I'm going to show him your reaction to this. Convince him why I should leave early for this monumental card. Rage Lucas. Dude, what the fuck, dude? Let this guy fucking work. <laughs> no, no. He needs to work. He needs to work. Your work is more important than UFC 300. Okay? Come on, dude. It's just a card. Just some fights. Some silly fights. Put in the work. Put in a little bit of overtime. Catch the last couple of fights of the night. Catch the last couple of fights of the night. I'm kidding, brother. Um, Dude, just straight up. Just leave. <laughs> There's no need to convince anyone. Just leave your job. Go home. I don't know. Say that you're sick or something. Like, Say that you got diarrhea, you got to shit your pants. Just say something. Say something like that and you'll get out. Okay? Literally felt like Christmas when I woke up. But yeah, dude, just leave. Just get out of there, bro. Thank you for the $10. Just get the fuck out of there. Uh, thank you for the two bucks. Yes, it felt like Christmas earlier today, bro. Everyone's saying World War III is about to start. It doesn't matter, bro. This is the biggest card of our lives. And I'm just happy that we're going to get to see it before shit pops off. So let's just try to enjoy these sick fights. The prelims are going to be insane. First fight of the night. The house is going to be packed. Okay. Then the prelims are going to be amazing. We have Moicano, uh, Jalen Turner. We have Sadiq Youssef, Diego Lopez, Aljamain Sterling, Calvin Cater, all back to back to back to back to back. So it's going to be insane. And then the main card. Then we're going to get Bo Nickel versus Hobo. It is going to be unfortunate when we see Holloway Gagey and then they're going to go to Zhang Wei Li and Yan Jiao Nan. That is going to be a little bit unfortunate. I'm not going to lie. We're going to be so hyped and then we're just going to watch Zhang Wei Li and Yan Jiao Nan stink it up for 25 minutes. That will be rough, but it's all going to be worth it when we hear Pereira's walkout song. It's all going to be worth it when we hear that walkout. I'm drinking White Claws tonight. Is that soy? Yes, it's a little bit soy. It is soy, not a little bit. It is soy, uh, but it's all good, dude. Whatever. Uh, thank you for the membership, Kenny. I appreciate you joining the Lucas Tracy MMA Club. Thank you so much for the support. Hey, bro, keep it going. Great videos. Thank you, ours. I appreciate the two bucks. Thank you. I'll, I'll definitely keep it up. I'll definitely keep it up. Fam God, what's up? Lucas versus Mr. Quivers. Confirm for UFC 400. Mr. Quivers is going to need to bulk up, brother. Mr. Quivers is going to need to put on some mass and he's going to need some testosterone and confidence. Mr. Quivers, all right? I'm joking. I mean, he, he's probably, nah, I'm not joking, really. Actually, he might actually need a, he might need a confidence course. UFC 300 start a World War III on the same day is crazy. Exactly, but I, I'm happy that it's starting on the same day as UFC 300. That way I can just tune it out. We're going to tune out the noise, okay? So, one more night of enjoyment. The Drake curse fitting to be broken tonight. Yeah, I was a little bit pissed off when I saw that Drake is betting on Alex Pereira. That's a little bit annoying. I'm not going to lie. Because when's the last time the Drake curse has been proven wrong? When's the last time that's even happened? 
Happy 300 fight day. Hey, thank you so much for the two Australian dollars. Jake B, happy 300 fight day to you too, man. Yuri round two KO. Yuri's definitely winning. I don't know if you guys saw the, the clip of Yuri outside of the stadium last night. Locked in Yuri Brahaska. So I trust in his ability to get it done tonight. I think we're going to see the most autistic version of Yuri yet. And I don't think uh, that $300,000 bonus is going to allow Alexander Rakic, who's been out for two years, to just stink it up. I think he's going to entertain the striking a little bit more. And I don't trust in him to entertain the striking with Yuri and actually do it well. So, Lucas, we need a Lucas T fitness comeback. I've been watching all of your videos for the past hour, and that stuff in the muzzing is hilarious. Yeah, but the muzzing is some other guy. Everyone makes this constant joke. It's the same thing. Some dude that looked like me happened to get into this thing called muzzing. I don't even know what it is. He is kind of a good-looking guy. He's pretty handsome. Um, and honestly, I'd love to hang out with the guy. He seems like a cool, maybe I'll have him on the channel sometime. But uh, we'll definitely do some Lucas T Fitness style vlogs for the main channel, for sure. This summer, we'll do some Lucas T Fitness style vlogs. I'm going to do a vlog with Aljo. I'm going to do a vlog with Aljo and Marab. I'm showing up to their gym in stilts. Not because I'm shorter than them, but because, you know, it's one thing, it's one thing, you know, if you're around the, the similar height. Now, of course, I'm towering over Aljo and Marab, but, you know, Chris Weidman comes in and, and you know, some of the other guys come in. Come on. So I, I'm going to go in. I got to get my eight inch lifts and then I'm going to start doing fighter collabs. I'm going to do a collab with Strickland. I'll rock in the gym at, 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 uh, with the eight inch lifts and I'll just tower over him, man. As long as I can get an interview with him. So yeah, we're, we're going to do some vlogs. We're absolutely going to do some vlogs. 100%, not even joking. We're not going to actually wear stilts. And maybe something with Mighty Mouse. I know a Mighty Mouse troll was in the chat here. He really had me convinced. Sure, it was Mighty Mouse for a second. <laughs> and then he said, Lucas, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude. He's about to break it to me. But I'm going to reach out to Mighty Mouse. Try to get a nice uh, workout in. Pause, dude. That sounds really fucking sus. But... I'm going to reach out to Mighty Mouse's team. I'm not going to, I'm not going to jack, you know, Gru's interview and all this stuff. I'm going to try to do a one-on-one -on -one workout. Me and Mighty Mouse are going to do some pads. I figured it'd be a good guy to do some pads with because, of course, you know, I'm 5'8". People say that I'm short. I'm not going to look so short in that video. I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> and uh, I'm doing i I'm doing a grappling session with Marab. There's no way Marab's going to embarrass me either. So, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you should have brought up the, on, you should have been brought up on charges for naming that man, Mr. Quivers and John beat the Drake curse. If John beat the Drake, wait, Jones beat the Drake curse. When was this? Was this against gone? I don't remember Drake. Oh, no, 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 no. For whatever reason, I had to confuse. Oh, he bet on Jones. Okay. Jones beat the Drake curse. Yeah. Fair enough. It can be done. Pereira is the type of guy to do it. Um, yeah, but Mr. Quivers is the perfect nickname for that guy. Imagine if Brundage wins. If Brundage wins, we'll get a viral moment, and uh, that'll be one of the biggest moments on the card. So I'm actually not going to be upset about that. It'd be nice to see Bo, um, you know, become a big star, though. But I don't think he's going to just by beating Brundage. But, of course, you know MMA fans, if Bo just ends up getting the win, people are going to change up and start saying things like, dude, and people were saying he shouldn't have been on May. It's like, dude, that's not the reason why. But either way, yeah, it'd be cool if he were to win. Imagine the noise in that place of Brundage KO's nickel. That's going to be probably the biggest roar you'll hear from the crowd. If that happens, that would be the, the, you're right. That'd be the, the coolest moment of the night. Or the most shocking, I should say. Thank you for the $10. I appreciate that. Ski mask, mooch. Thank you so much. Big meaty hooks loading. Let's fucking go, Lucas. Hey, thank you for the two pounds, Chris Reed. I appreciate the support. Lots of donos right off the bat. This is crazy. We got 1,300 people in here already. All right? 1,300 people. The card hasn't even started. Um, happy 300 day. Hey, happy 300 day to you too, Joe. It's like a holiday, dude. It literally feels like Christmas right now. Drake watches you. He called Kendrick a pipsqueak. You got to show me where he called Kendrick a pipsqueak. I'd love to see that. Where did he do that? <laughs> That could be a clip that I can use on my channel pretty often, man. So uh, I'll try to look that up. Uh, I won my third Muay Thai fight today. Here's your cut. Thank you, man. I didn't even know, you know, people would make money in their third Muay Thai fight. But hey, I appreciate that. I guess, was it a pro fight? 
Either way, uh, congratulations on winning your fight. That's a big moment. And thank you for the $10. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I didn't know, you know, they were paying people in Muay Thai in their third fight. I was thinking maybe, you know, fight number 50, but that's pretty crazy. Uh, thank you for the $2. Danny, Ferguson versus Miller, UFC 400. Uh, Ferguson is probably going to be in a, a home at that point. Actually, let's hope he's not, but he might be. That'd be really tragic, but um, I'd rather not see that. Ever thought of cooking videos? You got a cookbook? I do have a cookbook, and yes, we will do some members cooking videos. I know I've been saying that. Next week, we have more time. I'm going to do a couple of vlogs for the members that have to do with cooking. 100%. We're going to do that. Lucas, please play Roblox. I don't have Roblox. I've never even tried it. Thank you for the three months membership, though. I appreciate that. Let's go, Lucas. I'm going to leave as soon as Guru gets live. Jokes. Ah, I don't take it. You know, it's all good. You guys, I'm sure this is the, the Guru loading chat for a lot of people. It's all good. Uh, congrats on the success. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Tonight is going to be the biggest night in the history of this channel. I'm sure it's going to be the same way for every single live streamer that does MMA content, all right? But tonight is gonna be a huge night, so I'm looking forward to it. And we are 15 minutes out, basically 10, 20 minutes out, I would say, from Cody Garbrandt getting knocked the fuck out. So I'm pretty excited, man. What pick are you worried about? It's Cater for me. Yeah, Aljo looks focused, but everyone's saying, or not everyone, but I've seen some uh, little rumors that he's got staff you know, not that that's really going to hinder him. It's not like staff really plays a big effect on a fight unless it's Benoit St. Denis. But uh, I, I think that I'm a little worried as well there. I'm a little worried. Cater's been out for a minute. He had a bad injury. And um, he's not necessarily used to fighting someone that's going to spam 20 takedowns because it's not something we've seen from Aljamain Sterling, right? But we forget. We forget. He is a guy that will just spam takedowns. He couldn't do it against Cejudo, obviously, because he's got a great wrestling pedigree. So you can't just spam him. And obviously, he only shot twice against Sean O'Malley because, I don't know, Sean O'Malley is just really good at keeping distance. Bad approach from Aljamain Sterling. I'm a little worried about that one. But the one that I'm most worried about, I would say Charles. I just cannot stand the idea of Charles Oliveira losing tonight and getting knocked out. So Or just getting finished or beat anyway. So that, that's the one that I'm most worried about. Hey, thank you for the three months membership lucas loves imposing his will on women that would be his girlfriend hey thank you so much man top 100 mma goats for 100k subs stop slacking goon top 100k top 100 goats i like that i like that but it's going to be really hard to rank number 85 and number 87 how am i supposed to differentiate 87 from 85 it's just a really difficult thing to do so yeah James Lynch says that there's a rumor that Yusuf had a bad camp. Oh, no. You, you know James Lynch. A anything that James Lynch is saying, you got to basically lock it in. So if anyone heard that, apparently, guys, James Lynch, there's a rumor that Sadiq Yusuf, this is coming from the Lynch camp, Sadiq Yusuf is injured. If I were you, now, now, I've never been a betting man, but the only time I've ever won money is when I take a James Lynch thing and I run with it. <laughs> Okay, so if you have got any money, just bet it on whatever James Lynch tells you. I'm joking. Uh, shout out to James Lynch, bro. Shout out to James Lynch. Honestly, James Lynch is my favorite reporter on the scene. I love James Lynch. I want to do another collab with him. He's a great guy, uh, great channel, and he doesn't take any bullshit, and he's not like these other NPC reporters. So shout out to James Lynch, dude. I I'm actually going to do another collab with him pretty soon. I'll reach out to him. I'll reach out to him, man. Okay. Uh, I'm so hyped on a scale of 1 to 10. How hyped are you? Right now, now that I'm talking to the chat, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, it's kind of like a regular live stream because the fights aren't on. But once they come on, I'll be more hyped, obviously. Right now, it just feels like a, a normal live stream. But now that you mention it, it is fucking crazy how we're seeing Garbrandt Figgy for the first fight. All the fans are going to be there. Second fight of the night, Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. And then, of course, you got Moicano. You got Jalen Turner. Dude, I, I was, uh, my heart was going, was going nuts. I had like these heart, pal not palpitations, but I mean, 
Man, I felt like I'd, I'd taken a couple of cans of pre-workout earlier today just thinking about how sick this card was going to be. So it's it was hitting today. It was hitting earlier today. Big time. Hey, thank you for the $5. 50-year-old Bofan. Hey, guys, the 50-year-old Bofan is here. What's up? The wrestling dads have made it. They're on their way to save the day. You know what? I, I apologize to all of the Bo Nickel fan base that are 50-year-old dads that, that don't watch MMA at all but are tuning in for Bo. So this is really cool. Bo's going to prove why he deserves to be on the main card. You just wait. Hey, if you got a whole army with you, then let him in. Let him in the chat. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you guys. It is pretty cool that you're going to save the day. So thank you for the 5 bucks, 50 50-year-old Bo fan that doesn't watch MMA at all, only watches wrestling, and is somehow going to tune in tonight. I don't buy it. <laughs> the the bow hunters for Bo Nickel. Bow hunters for Bo Nickel. So shout out to those guys. I'm so, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the $2, Sam Scatterall. Thank you for the five bucks. Thank you for the $5, ours. Big meaty hooks tonight. Can't join the membership on the YouTube app, which sucks. Uh, yeah, that is weird. I think you may have to do it on a computer or maybe there's a way you can do it on my channel. If you just go to my channel's homepage, but that is a little bit strange. The link in the description should work. If it doesn't work for you guys, let me know, but it should work. Um, on the road, told boss UFC 300 is like the Masters. Oh yeah, it's it's even bit, it's better than the Masters. There's a Masters every single year. UFC 300 is only once in a lifetime. This literally could be the best card in our lives. So yeah, I, I'm pretty hyped for it. They could fuck up UFC 400. By the time UFC 400 gets here, the UFC could just be a shadow of what it is today. The PFL could be starting to take over. You, you never know what's going to happen. I doubt that's going to happen because the UFC is like a monopoly, but... It's possible that the UFC goes woke and, you know, they could fuck things up by 400. This could be the biggest one ever, guys. So it's, it's time to enjoy the night. Bet the house on Brundage. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to bet 100 on Brundage. 50, 100, $10, not a bad idea. I'm not a betting man, but if I had an account up and running, I'd throw 10 bucks. No, fuck 10. I'd throw like 100 on them. 100 is, a, is like a pushing it because pushing it, I almost, you know, come on. A stretch to pick that bum Cody Brundage. It's a bit of a stretch. I'd throw 50 on him. But yeah, I just don't bet in general. Uh, UFC 300 is better than World War III, obviously. <laughs> Thank you for the 20 Norwegian Krone. I appreciate that. Uh, I've gone big on the underdogs, Do Bronx, Moicano. Yeah, listen, I like Moicano. I like Renato. He's funny. I, I, I love his fight style for the most part. Not the most entertaining fighter, but he's good. He's good. All right. His last performance is a little bit stinky, but. I think that Moicano might get smoked tonight. I hate to break it to you guys, but I think that Moicano may get smoked. There's a lot of bias with people that are picking him. But it's okay. I just think that this idea, this is not Dobronx, okay? Yes, Moicano is great jiu-jitsu, but he's choking out. Who, who's that little pipsqueak from Australia? He's choking out little Brad Riddell. Okay, little Brad Riddell frozen in the middle of the octagon. You know how Brad Riddell was at the end of his career. He was, he was freezing up. He was like... He was like Curtis Blades of the lightweight division. And then who else was he subbing? He, he was subbing some other guys too, but, you know, either way. He's not necessarily Dobronx, okay? Turner's insanely overrated. You know, and especially since Moicano likes money and he wants that 300K, I don't think he's going to grapple as much as he would have. Maybe he's going to go and stand and bang a little bit. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see, though. Maybe he just goes after a submission instantly and he just takes a bunch of risks there. I think that with the 300k bonus, that gives Turner an even better chance because Moicano is going to take more risks. And uh, I think he kind of needs the safe approach of just kind of sticking to half guard, um, maybe looking for a submission if it's possible, but I think Turner is going to knock him out. UFC 300 is wild, but UFC, oh no, World War Three fight card is better. Well, you know, I, I, I don't even want to think about that right now just because Let's try to enjoy one last night of fights, all right? One last legendary night of fights. Of course, we'll probably see a shitty Apex card, even if World War III happens. Um, bro, Chris Curtis called you out on Twitter. Really? <laughs> no way. All right, we're going to look it up. That is pretty cool. Chris Curtis, Twitter. Action man. Here's the action man. Oh, shit. Here he is. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. 
Here we go. Here we go, baby. Chris Curtis called me out. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Never been a fan of this man. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. So Curtis says, never been a fan of the man personally. <laughs> but how the fuck can anyone call his title reign fraudulent? By what metric? This is so bad. He says, Jesus, this is so bad. More outright disrespectful and wrong take. As I said, social media, social media has not ruined the sport. Are you kidding me? We're making people love MMA again. Who do you want? A bunch of Mike Bonds? Shout out to Mike Bond. He, he was responsible for the 300K bonus. But like, what do you want? A bunch of Mr. Quivers? You want a bunch of little elbow rubs and little little eye, eye, eye sessions? Little fucking, you know, you want to eye fuck these guys in the hallway? Screw that. Are you kidding me? All I said in this clip that he's talking about, let's listen to the clip. That he's just in a montage, an anime montage, just on top. So he beats <laughs> Robert Whitaker. Beats Robert he Whitaker. He loses to Yoel Romero in a robbery. I count Rob. Dude, this, did you even listen to what I have to say? Did you even listen to what I have to say? It's a fact. Okay, robberies count. Real fans know that robberies count. Judges get it wrong. Izzy is a win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one guy. Straight up. Chris Curtis, he says, he's never, he said, I've never been in a fight. Are you fucking kidding me? I've never been in a fight? <laughs> this is crazy. This is ridiculous, man. Insane. Chris Curtis, you know what happened when I came to Extreme Couture, all right? Brother, brother, you know what happened when I came to Extreme Couture, brother. So we, we don't need to talk about that. But either way, this is ridiculous, okay? What do you want? Y you want me to say that Izzy just won all those fights and he's the best champion ever? Fuck no, he's not. Are you kidding me? Everything I'm saying in this video is facts. Just because the judges uh, are professional judges does not mean they always get it right, right? If they always got it right, then how come judges get different scorecards sometimes? Facts, dude. Everything how come I'm there's a 49 this video? to Alex Pereira? He goes out there and beats Alex Pereira. He gets that one back. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And just like as usual, he goes out there against Sean Strickland and he loses. So talk about title reign. The Izzy fan... Yeah, talk about title reign. All I was saying was that Izzy's title reign, Izzy was doing, you know, congrats to Strickland on the reign with this, like, sarcastic attitude. And I was just saying, listen, don't be so smug about it, because at the end of the day, if the judges got all of your scorecards correct, then you wouldn't have had much of a title reign either. It would have been a win one, lose one, oh, and who knows what happens after you lose the second title fight against Yoel Romero. You may not get that one directly back, okay? You beat Paulo Costa, then you lose Dion Blahovich. So, shout out to Chris Curtis. Straight up. Shout out to Chris Curtis. I actually like Chris Curtis, but come on. Social media has ruined the sport. MMA Guru has like 170,000 subscribers. There are people that watch him and probably don't even watch the sport. All right. right, I'm I've got like 80K. My channel's growing. You've got tons of independent channels that have like 25K, 30K. You got the weasel with 360K. Independent media is the way to go. We're the ones that are actually growing the fucking sport. And when you sit there at a, a pre-fight press conference and you look to Mr. Quivers and you look to all the guys that are just going to glaze you and kick, kiss your ass. You're looking at people that are only holding the sport back. Those are the people that are asking shit questions at press conferences that don't know how to actually hype people up about the sport. All right. So he's wrong. Shout out to Chris Curtis though. He's one of my favorite fighters. I love the guy, but you know, I think he's wrong on that. I think he's wrong on that. But um, that's my guy, though, you know? He's a good friend of mine. I'm joking. But I just think he's wrong, okay? But it is cool how he mentioned me. It is cool how Chris Curtis did mention me on Twitter. That is pretty cool, though. So that's pretty hype. Who knows? Maybe I can make a whole video about that. Probably not. I don't think there's enough there. But who knows? Maybe fighters are going to start taking more notice. Lucas Tracy is always on time for events. I appreciate the consistency. Hey, thank you so much, John. I appreciate the $5. Not always, but usually we do a good job at being on time. Sometimes I, I come on after the first WMMA fight of the night, but you know, here I'm early. I thought it'd be good to hop on a little early. Apparently the stream has started, but first fight of the night is not going to happen for another five minutes. So, hey team, thank you for the 10 or the five bucks. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello to you as well. Thank you for the $5 team. 
Thank you for the 279. Astro Ben, the 279 Canadian dollars. Got a feeling Armand's getting it done. Yeah, I've got a, I got a rough feeling about that fight too. But that's how it always is when Charles is fighting. I just, I'd hate to see him lose. I'm emotionally tied to the outcome of that fight. More than any other fight on this card, I would say. Don't really care about who wins the main event. I like both fighters. Of course, I'd like to get my pick right. But the two fights that I really want to get right, the first one is going to be the one that kind of sets us off to a good start. You want to start off 1-0, never 0-1. That's important. But I would say Charles winning and Yuri winning. All right? Holloway, Gagey, that's a win-win for me. If I get my pick right, Gagey wins. If I get it wrong, at least Holloway smokes him. And I want Holloway to beat him 100%. Hoping for a Gagey backflip tonight. Yeah, I mean, a backflip would mean he finishes Holloway. I do not want to see that. That's the one outcome I don't really want to see. But, you know, whatever takes some time to get a pick right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I know people are going to be in the chat trying to make me feel salty. If I get it wrong, trust me, I'm going to be hyped if Holloway knocks Gagey out. I'll be very hyped. Cody by accidental KO and Jim Miller by robbery. That would suck if Jim Miller won by a robbery. That would really be the worst way for it to for him to get it done um because I, I hate to see him getting you know flack at the end of the night thank you for the 10 ron though uh thank you for the five dollars brady the day is here shout out to lucas for having the best mma coverage on the internet hey thank you man i appreciate that and i appreciate the long time support from you as well charles is gonna get it done and fraud check that little schmuck yeah the two schmucks gagey and armand i hope that they get taken care of tonight all right. But yeah, the, the biggest schmuck of the night is Armand Sarikian. You better be careful, buddy. Moikano in one. Hey, thank you for the 25 Norwegian crone. Renato, the financial advisor. I appreciate that. Hey, if Renato wins, I'll be happy for him too. Um, with a four-year bulk, are you winning against Crybaby Curtis? I don't think bulking would necessarily help me. I'd have to like become a really high-level fighter. It might take me a longer time to do that with Chris Curtis. And also... 185 pounds. Those guys are still like big. You know what I mean? Some of the heavyweights are flyweights. Some of the heavyweights are featherweights. That's the difference. Chris Curtis is like a legit middleweight. So he's actually a big dude. So I don't think I'd ever beat Chris Curtis in a fight. The age gap is not wide enough. He's not like 40 years old to where when I'm in my 30s, he's going to be in his 60s. So I don't think I can get it done. Lucas Tracy, always on time. Hey, thank you, man. Uh, been a fan for a while. Can't believe we're at 300. Same here. It feels good. It feels good. This is the biggest event we've ever had outside of McGregor events, for sure. Uh, Connor versus Max down the line. Max smokes Connor. And I don't think Connor wants to come back to fight anyone. If he's not come back yet, he's not coming back at all. All right. Or at least he's not going to come back anytime soon. And if he fights someone, it's going to be a, a, an absolute joke old head pip squeak where it's just a freebie for him he does not want to go in there against max holloway trust me but leave it to the mcgregor fans that are you know maybe picking holloway they'll pick holloway to beat gagey but leave it to the mcgregor fans to say connor's a bad matchup for max okay i don't know the, the left hand i just see no one eats that left hand no one eats the left no one eats the left oh yeah no one eats the left hand right how about, how about everyone that's ever fought Connor and whooped his fucking ass? How about that? All right, let's, let's lock in. We're getting locked in. What the fuck? What the fuck? Come on. We need to lock in. What's going on? Yeah, don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with me now. Do not tell me my stream is going to mess with me now. Okay, we're in. We're locked in. Nice. All right, that was stressful. Whoa, dude, thank you for the $10 again. Just wanted to show a little more love. I listen to your videos while I'm doing my road work. Hey, thank you so much. Road work, meaning, what is this like? You're working on the road in construction or you're running, okay? Because road work can mean two things. I, would, I wouldn't imagine Lucas Tracy videos are the best for running, but uh, either way, dude, thank you for the $10. I appreciate the support. Grew is funny, but you got better insight. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the two bucks. Alex Stefan, man. Thank you so much. Rogan is crying on a broadcast. Lucas, look. Rogan is crying? Let's pull this up. I'll, I'll check it out on YouTube, dude. Let's check it out. Rogan is crying. Is he live right now? 
Oh, he's crying on the broadcast? Oh, oh, <laughs> look at Rogan. What's he crying about? <laughs> That's pathetic, dude. <laughs> Come on, man, get a grip. Get a grip, dude. I see, his, I see tears coming in his eyes. Oh, I think he's gonna cry talking about Zhang and Yan. Who was he crying talking about? I just saw Rogan. He was tearing up, I see. What was he tearing up about? Was he just talking about the significance of this sport? Is that what he's saying? Or was he talking about Kayla Harrison? Oh, he's crying about Holly Holm. Oh my goodness, I guarantee you he was about Holly Holm. Damn. That's crazy. I'm not surprised. Rogan really loves these ladies and, and thinks that they're the most inspirational, tough cookies on the planet, dude. Not gonna lie, uh, used to not really like you, but now I love you. Hey, thank you. A lot of people tell me that. A lot of people tell me that. I, I assume that the people that they used to hate me, maybe they saw me get a couple of picks wrong back in the day and they, they didn't like the thumbnails. Maybe they heard shit about me on Twitter, but I do get that a lot sometimes. You know, I, I have converted a lot of haters into, I wouldn't, I'm not calling you people haters as if, you know, there, there's no reason to dislike my channel. But I guess what I mean is I've, I've had a lot of people tell me that. So I appreciate the support, dude. Thank you so much. He isn't anymore, but he was tearing up talking about the event. Yeah, not surprising. Rogan's got his estrogen out the wazoo tonight on that TR. The TRT is 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 flaring up, guys, and it's created a bit of an imbalance. So, yeah. What's up, clown? What's up, MSO? Would not be a Lucas Tracy stream without you clowning me, dropping clown emojis. So, I'm happy to see you are in the chat and doing well. Hey man, just want to say, people give you shit online, but you're the man. Keep up the big meaty hooks. Holloway just said, dude, I'm going to keep up the big meaty hooks, man. Uh, and I'm going to do a tier list for big meaty hooks soon. I know you guys are asking for that, so we will deliver. Thank you for the $8 mammoth. I appreciate that. Thank you for the $10, Kurt. Which female fighter do you think has the best rear glute spread? <laughs> the best rear glute spread. I mean, that's pretty graphic, brother. But uh, I would say, listen, I'll answer it. I'll answer it differently. I, I think that, I think that the the one that has the nicest physique. All right, maybe, I'd say Dern probably, bro. Dern has the nicest physique. He isn't anymore, but he was tearing up. Yeah, he was tearing up. Oh, there's Megan. There's Megan Olivi. What color is the octagon? I don't know. I don't know. Dana said it was blue, but maybe it's just going to be like a light blue. But that's kind of what the canvas looks like anyway, right? A little bit of a light blue. Let's hope he didn't fuck it up. But from what I've seen, I was watching the uh, live stream on ESPN MMA. It, it looks just like the regular canvas. So I think we'll be fine. Thank goodness. I, I don't want a new canvas that could fuck things up and just make it look weird. You can't see the blood either. Not like seeing the blood is a big difference maker. But I mean, w when you change things up, it can make a difference. And if the white canvas is the one that they use for all the events and that's the best product that they have, why would you ever change it? There's Theo Vaughn. Some guy, some guy named Kyler Murray. I think he's an athlete. Who else is in the building? Damn it, it's not a packed out arena yet. We got some casuals there, man. It's not a packed out arena. There's a lot of casuals going to the event, man. If you're not there for Cody versus Garbrandt, you do not deserve to be at UFC 300 up. <laughs> okay? I'm surprised it's not a packed out arena. I'm surprised, man. Lucas, you're behind. What are you guys seeing on the screen? I'm not behind. What are you guys seeing on the screen? Dude, the 300K is about to make everyone gun shy. Oh, it might. It might. But I doubt it. It might make some people gun shy. But I don't think so. Thank you for the 11 months membership. It's just going to do the opposite. People are going to go after it tonight. Because, you know, worst thing that happens, they get KO'd, but they could get fight of the night. Right? They might get fight of the night. Please do the big meaty hooks tier list soon. I will. Thank you for the $2. Ours. 100% I'll do it soon. 100%. All right, guys. We're, we're almost there, bro. We're almost there. Here comes Cody. Crazy to think that we're starting off with... Fig and Cody. I know, dude. Here he is. First fight of the night. Let's go, man. Got some bone broth, too. Here we go, guys. There's uh, 
Adesanya. There's Adesanya in the chat. Full transparency, first time I paid for a card. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been buying all the pay-per-views, but I'm not surprised. A lot of people are not taking risks tonight with how good this uh, this card is going to be. So thank you for the two bucks. Good idea. Thank you for the two CHF. Guru has 1K in donos already. Here's my first two Swiss francs. Hey, thank you. I appreciate this two Swiss francs. I've got a ton of donos already, too. Not a K. I don't think anywhere near that, but that is pretty nuts. How many live viewers does he have? I think we're going to mog him tonight, guys. I think tonight's the night we pass Guru in live viewers. How many he's got? 4.1? That's nothing. We have 18,000 right now. Holy shit. I told you starting out early would make a big difference. 17K. It's dropping. 17K is crazy. We have a lot of people in here. So I, I think we're going to pass Guru tonight. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but there's Garbrandt with his We Will Rock You music. I can't wait till Figgy fucking smokes him, dude. I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be fucking pissed if Garbrandt wins a, a fluky KO victory. Yeah, Garbrandt with his once every five years big KO. He got a KO last time, though, so maybe we don't have to worry about it. Here's Figgy. Oh, he's listening to Brazilian gospel music. You know it's over now. Humble Figueredo's here to stay. Here's Humble Figgy. Humble Fig Newton. <laughs> Figgy's carving up on some Fig Newtons backstage. I guarantee it, man. That's a cookbook secret. You guys know cookbook secrets, Fig Newtons. You're behind? Okay, okay, fine. Let's see if we're actually behind. I'm not behind, dude. I am not behind. Booty Wi-Fi. Booty Wi-Fi. What are you talking about? All right, you know what? You guys are trolling me right now. You're behind? All right, what's on screen? Tell me what's on screen. If I'm behind, tell me what's on screen then. It was 2.2 live viewers. We're at 13 right now. You're not behind? Okay, what's on, what's on screen right now? If I'm behind, I don't believe you. You're actually behind Figgy. I'm not behind, bro. Figgy's literally about to get touched up by the cut man. Yep, cut man's working on his face right now. They're working on the right eye. They're working on Figgy's right eye. Now they're going to the left. Now they're going to the left. Yep, told you. I'm not behind at all. You dropped 500 viewers in two minutes. I don't know what the fuck happened. Did something happen to my stream? I hope not. I hope not, guys. Figgy's almost 37. Yeah, but Garbrandt is not the best fighter anyway. And Figgy just beat Rob Font at almost 37. So I don't think it'll make that big of a difference. Why are you licking the mug? People do that. Everyone does that. It's not a weird thing to lick the mug. It is not a sus thing to lick a mug after you take a drink. Because you don't want water or liquid falling on your table. 500 people just paid for the pay-per-view. Maybe. Um, 1.4, not 14,000. I know I was just trolling. I'm just trolling, guys. Uh, you remind people of MMA Guru and they left. Oh, of course, of course. Cody Garbrandt, Beans, wins by flying elbow, bud. Thank you for the two bucks. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for the five bucks. Who you got? Figgy or Garbrandt? I got Figgy by KO. Same, Figgy by KO. I guess you're just tuning in, but I've been talking about that for a long time. Thank you for the five bucks, Joey X303. Thank you. Um, muzzing to a robbery decision. <laughs> I'm not gonna muzz to any outcome that I don't like, dude. I only ever consider doing that if I love the outcome. All right, like Volk KOing Taporia. I don't know if, if there's any outcome that I need enough, that I need badly enough to make me muzz. Maybe if Yuri knocks Rackets the fuck out. In the first round, maybe I'll hit a muzz. How about that? But I have a bad feeling about all my picks, guys. I just think that's how it is before a big event. I start to doubt. I start to doubt, but we're going to start building momentum. You knew how it was last week. I, I got off to a good start last week, and nobody, nobody could hold me back. Nobody was getting in the way. I was, I was killing all the MMA content creators last week on picks. There is Tabitha Paulo Costa Ritchie with her with her guy 
the the boxing guy. Garbrandt smoked by big meaty hooks. Let's hope. Let's hope Figueredo knocks him out, bro. Thank you for the two dollars. I like Cody Garbrandt. I just want to get my pick right, and I like Figgy too. I feel nervous watching this card. Same. I do too. We're we're just about there. Just about there. Let's go! Yeah! Oh yeah! God of War, baby! Yeah! Let's go! Here we go. When the action begins. Mark Smith in the building. Thank goodness it's not a Mark Goddard. It's the right mark. Here we go, guys. I got the timer. We're about to hit it. Cody Garbrandt. Davidson Figueredo. Here we go. Cody Garbrandt, Davidson Figueredo, round one. Leg kick for Cody Garbrandt. That's not a surprise. Cody's always going to throw his leg kicks. He's going to sweep down soon and throw a low, low kick. He's going to sweep down and throw a fancy low kick. Second low kick for Cody. Second low kick for Cody. Wait for Cody to get hit by one of those nice right hands from Figgy. Figgy lands a right hand. It might be nighty night night. Or at least a, a start off to... There it is! There's that slide kick from Cody. Always throws that. This is what I'm predicting. Very patient start. Very patient. Very reserved start for Cody. And Figgy does it even better. Oh, there's that right hand for Figgy. Very patient. Not the fastest right, though. Not the fastest right. Another heavy low kick for Cody. Very good approach early on. But Figgy's better at being patient. Figgy's the man when it comes to being patient. Oh, that got close, but Cody Garbrandt's reach is not long enough to tag him. Cody's up on five strikes, five low kicks. Oh, they collide! They collide! Figgy got stunned! But his chin is holding up at Bantamweight. They collided. That, was, that almost looked like a headbutt. Classic collision. Is that Arnold? Is that Arnold in the back? Three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, nice. Nice ducking out of the way out of that big right hand is Figueredo. Three minutes and 15 seconds. Big body kick for Figueredo. Big body kick for Figueredo. As Cody Garbrandt throws a kick. Oh, Figgy's being patient. Figgy's being patient. He's seeing everything. <laughs> Damn. This is a tense fight, guys. Another low kick for Garbrandt. He's doing some really good work with the low kicks tonight. Oh, they... Figgy just ducked out of the way of that hook from Garbrandt, but... This is good. This is good. Garbrandt has thrown a lot of strikes. Figgy's still in there. He's still doing his thing. Taking the speed off of Garbrandt's punches a little bit. But a very patient approach from Figgy as usual. Little leg tap from Garbrandt. One, two misses for Figgy. Figgy's not looking that fast. He's looking a little bit weird. I don't know if you guys notice it, but his speed ain't looking that great. Maybe he's trying to Little Garbrandt into a, a false sense of security. Another low kick for Garbrandt. Inside low kick. Three, two minutes and ten seconds on the clock. Figgy's not looking that amazing right now. But Garbrandt, not that accurate with his hands either. Another low kick for Garbrandt. Let's see if Figgy is about to counter with something. I think Figgy's trying to draw him in. Minute and 50 seconds on the clock. Very patient approach early. Cody Garbrandt is looking to wind up on a big meaty one. But Figgy's looking to walk him on to something sneaky. And that's the thing. It's like the battle of the, the meaty hooks versus a sneaky game plan. Oh, what was that? Figueredo rolls for an arm. That was very strange. It almost looked like he got tagged with something, but he just decided to try to pull guard, roll for an arm bar. Hard low kick for Figueredo. I think Garbrandt may have checked that. Figgy's not looking good right now. Figgy's not looking that good. Big hook. Oh, big hook for Garbrandt. Big hook for Garbrandt. Hope Cody wins. Is there any way we're able to listen? 
What do you mean? Is there any way we're able to listen? I don't know what you mean by that. I, I hope that Figgy wins. I want to get my pick right. Oh, big shot from Figueredo. Switching stance there. Lands a nice left hand. Thank you for the five bucks. What do you mean? Like, listen to the audio? Listen to the commentary? I'm listening to it right now. 30 seconds on the clock. Very patient. They're not winning any bonuses fighting like this. I'll tell you that much. There's a nice hook from Garbrandt. Lands it to the body. Figueredo shoots a takedown. He's got Garbrandt down. He's got a body lock. And he gets him to the mat, but Garbrandt reverses it. Big elbow from Figueredo. And he's got a welt on the forehead of Garbrandt. I believe he just elbowed him in the forehead. Has a nice welt on there. I could be wrong. Looked like a welt, but that's it for the first round. Uh, first round, got to give it to Garbrandt for sure. You can listen to Lucas do his commentating. I mean, this is, yeah, boring round. Little bit of a slow round, but I, I give that to Garbrandt. I mean, it it's going to heat up eventually. Cody is so much faster than Figgy, it's alarming. I wouldn't say it's alarming. Figgy's a little bit weird sometimes, bro. He looked faster against Font, though. I don't know if it's an alarming difference, but thank you for the 200 KES. Nigel, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I give that round 10-9 to Garbrandt. He is looking a little bit faster. You can say cope all you want. The first round didn't really show us that much, and Garbrandt's just sitting behind his little pitter-pat kicks. It's not really going to you know, make me cope. If Garbrandt knocks him out, then I'll maybe cope a little bit. But Garbrandt won like a really uneventful leg kick round. Good approach from him. Very boring approach from Garbrandt. But again, people say the skills, um, you know, he's not really looking like a master out there. But hey, Figgy's looking a little bit slow too. Figgy's looking slow. Knock down Figgy twice. <laughs> okay, sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Whatever helps you sleep at night, buddy. <laughs> Knocked him down twice. Are you out of your fucking mind? Anyway. Here we go. Round two. Body kick. From Garbrandt misses. Oh, there's a nice hook for Garbrandt. Nice hook counter. Oh, big hook for Garbrandt. Figgy shoots a takedown. Figgy's got him up against the fence. It's the end. <laughs> you know it's bad when Figgy's shooting takedowns. Oh, wait, did he just knock himself out? That was, that was a nasty throw, but... Oh, he's good. He's good, though. Nice. Grappling advantage. 135 pound skill moving up. No, I mean a 125 pound skill. <laughs> My bad. Figgy's trying to use that 125 or skill to out grapple Garbrandt this round. And he's got control on him. He's got control over him. He did get tagged with a big shot, but Garbrandt's strong. Figgy's got the back. Oh, Figgy's got the back. Oh, Figgy's got the back with that 125 pound skill. So much for Cody Garbrandt and that, that championship skill set. Damn. Just when I thought, oh, nice shot from Figgy. Good right hand. And he's beating up Garbrandt. Oh, big shots. Big shots from Figgy. Oh, he's got a submission. He's got a submission attempt. This is, this is a head and arm. But he hasn't cleared the legs. He hasn't cleared the legs yet. But Figgy's in mount. Oh, it's bad. Yeah! He's got him in the head and arm, baby. He's got him in the head and arm. Oh, he's going to sleep. He's going to sleep. Oh, come on, Figgy. Come on. Come on, brother. Pull this off. Please. Pull this off. Come on. Come on, you're in. You have it. Dude, you're telling me Figgy's not strong enough to get this shit? Oh, my God. Garbrandt's fine, dude. What the fuck? Damn, Garbrandt could be making it worse, though. But Figgy's got him in the head and arm. Figgy's got him in the head and arm. Come on, bro. How does he not have this? How does he not have this? Oh, his, his grip just broke. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, I was starting to freak out. Like, how did he not have that? 125-pound skill for you, but no power. <laughs> no strength. Ref saved him? The ref did not save him. <sighs> Come on, man. 
And Figgy's going to be tired. His arms are going to be tired after this. Garbrandt gets out. Fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. But he gets him down again and he's still in mount. Figgy pancaked him on the mat. Said, no, no, no. He said, no, 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 man. <laughs> the 135 pound skill not holding up against the pipsqueak. Pipsqueak strength right here. <laughs> oh, mean Figueredo. Figueredo's just rubbing it in now with those shoulder strikes. This is a dominant round for Figgy. But Cody can't get out of this position. I don't remember the last time anyone's put him in this position. I mean, this is crazy. Figueredo mounting Cody Garbrandt. This is going to be great. But, I mean, how is it going to affect him in the third round? Because he's not getting close to a finish. And right now, he is not getting close to that bonus. Oh, but Garbrandt's getting up to his feet. But Oh! Garbrandt has his back taken. There's a meta in 10 seconds left. Figueredo's got his back. Figueredo's got his back. He's got the body triangle. Oh, it's in! Oh, it's in! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Let's go! Chokes him out in the first round! Second round submission for Davidson Figueredo! So much for Garbrandt and that championship skill. Woo! Let's go, baby! Second round submission, chokes him out, fucking dominates him on the ground. That's what that championship skill will do for you from Figueredo. Flyweight skill. Garbrandt's never been that guy. Gets fucking destroyed on the ground. So much for it, though. Hey, but he beat Dominic Cruz, didn't he? He did beat Dominic Cruz. <laughs> Shit. Let's fucking go, man. Absolutely mauled on the ground. Completely mauled. And we're out here 1-0. Yeah, let's go! Fuck yeah, man. I couldn't wait to see Figueredo put his ass out. <laughs> let's go! Nice. Nice. He chokes him out in the first. This is sick. We're 1-0 to start the night. Epic. Figueredo pulls it off by submission. He's on the ground. He's thanking the Lord. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> That's that pipsqueak strength for you. That's that 125-pound pipsqueak strength. All right? I don't know much about it, guys. I'm, I'm a big dude, but... That's a, that's a sick finish from Davidson Figueredo. Just took him down. He got hit with a big shot in the beginning of that round, didn't he? He got hit with a big shot. I got scared. I'm like, oh, shit. It's getting bad. He's resorting to takedowns, and he's not going to be able to take down Garbrandt. Garbrandt's a big dude. I did say in my predictions, fair enough. Fair enough, I said the grappling is not really going to come into play, but holy shit, it came into play. <laughs> nice. But hey, I was talking about the skill gap. I was saying that Cody was overrated. I was saying that Cody was overrated. Win picks, screws, coping, talking shit. <laughs> it's all good, man. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the $2, Spiritual Awakening. We need that Cody versus Cruz. Dude, that's a fair fight. That's a fair fight. Both guys, you know, I mean, to be honest, Cruz is better, but at least Cody's got that big power. And up against a pillow puncher, he might be able to pull it off. But I've been saying this, Cody Garbrandt, People will say things in comment sections like, you know, Cody Garbrandt's always had that championship skill set. It's just, he's been unlucky. Just, you know, his fight IQ is not there. Has he really had the championship skill set? Like, he's got big hooks and low kicks, and that's kind of it. He's got a big blast double leg, but he's not really got the best submissions or ground and pound or consistent grappling, or he's not really got the best ability to outstrike someone on volume, right? Let's go. Figgy gets it done. Second round finish. We're off to a good start. We're off to a great start. Nice, man. God of War is back. Hey, I'd love to see him versus Peter Yan. I know that Yan and Marlon Vera are starting to talk about fighting each other. I'd like to see that fight. Former champion, two wins over Rob Font and Cody Garbrandt. I'd say give him a number one contenders fight. Maybe against Sandman? I wouldn't mind that. I think that Sanhagen would probably beat him. So I don't want to see that. But I, I listen, I don't think Figueredo is going to be a champ at Bantamweight. There's a log jam. There's so many guys up there. But a former champion winning two fights in a new division, that's big. That is huge for him. 
That is huge for Figueredo. People thought he was done. I was picking against him against Rob Font. That's massive, bro. Cody is so much faster than Figgy. Hey, that speed didn't really mean much in the end, did it? Jan probably beats Figgy. I think so too. But, I mean, eventually you're going to have to put him up against a, a monster in the Bantamweight division, right? He's been fighting guys that are not top five material, but winning. And he's an old head. Figgy's an old head. So... I mean, I can't imagine a former champion moving up a weight class and having to win four in a row. If I'm the UFC, I mean, if you're going on merit, I know he hasn't beat the who's who yet, but he's beat two solid guys. Not that Garbrandt's that amazing, but Garbrandt's like, you know, he's, he's at least top of the heap when it comes to like unranked bums. So he's got to win over Font. He's got to win over Garbrandt. Give him a top five guy. Fuck it. He's got championship uh, experience. Cody's the new gatekeeper. Garbrandt is not a gatekeeper, bro. Garbrandt's been fighting Trevin Jones. You're telling me if Trevin Jones were to have beat Garbrandt, then Trevin Jones would have been in the top 10, top five? I doubt it. Maybe, 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 but I doubt it. I said from the start, I mean, when this fight first got announced, I was like, we already know the outcome. I, I remember I made that short. I made that YouTube short making fun of it. And we saw the skill gap. Figgy did look a little bit slower, though. He did worry me early on because Garbrandt seemed to be a lot faster, and Garbrandt was tagging him a couple of times, but just a master class grappling from the 125 pound skill. So that was a really good performance from Figueredo. And we usually see him winning with the striking, right? It's been a minute since we've seen him just sub someone. And that wasn't a normal Figueredo submission. Normally, Figueredo will submit someone if they shoot in on him or something like that. He'll just catch it out of nowhere, but he really worked for that. That was amazing. And I was worried that after that first head and arm triangle, he was going to gas his arms out. I guess we didn't see in the third round. He still pulled it off. Amazing win. Really good jiu-jitsu from that guy. So I'm happy for Figgy. Really happy for Figueredo. I need five more fighters to win on my parlay. Otherwise, I'm getting evicted on Monday. Damn, dude. Who's in your parlay? Thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Who's in your parlay? Let me know. What's up? How are you doing? Thank you for the $7, $7 Canadian dollars. Tommy, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Flyweight skill parlay starting strong. Is there another flyweight skill parlay tonight? I mean, there's women's flyweight fights, right? But are there any other men's flyweight fights? I don't think so. Either way, Garbrandt's been overrated, and I don't want to hear that he's not, okay? A lot of people agree with that. It's not like a controversial thing to say. Oh, it's time for Miller versus Green, dude. They're showing a nice montage of Jim Miller. Yeah, who's in your parlay? Charles Celebration's going to hit like crack. Yeah, I'm so happy I'm, I'm off to a good start, 1-0. And, oh. and Miller's about to win two? Fuck yeah. I'm hyped, dude. I'm freaking hyped. I'm stoked. Guru's coping. I mean... When you're, dude, I'd be coping too if I got my first pick wrong. So I can understand it. As someone that, that streams and has people clown me when I get picks wrong, as they should, because, you know, if someone watches my channel, part of the fun is clowning me. Um, I'd be coping too. So I, I, I understand it. Feels good to be one to know, though. I think we both picked Miller. So it's about to be a good night. <laughs> it's about to be a good night. But I could see maybe Bobby Green winning. If it goes to decision, I actually think Green gets it done. If it ends in a finish, I think Miller gets it done. But you never know. Green every once in a while has that fluky, fluky power. Chat saying Lucas owns you. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I know that, that that all started last week, bro, when I went 9-1. and one. Um, But he'll be fine, bro. This, this guy's going to get like 300,000 views on his live stream tonight. So I don't, I don't feel so bad. Guy's about the have the biggest stream on YouTube. Parlay, Figgy, Miller, Jalen, Nickel, and Pereira. All right. Figgy, Miller. That's a risky one. Figgy, not Figgy, but Miller is a little bit risky. Pereira is also a little risky. I'm starting to worry for him, but that's a pretty good parlay. That's a great parlay. I uh, thought all the former champs would get gold gloves. No, no. They're just doing everyone in a, in a five-round fight. For any five-round fight, even if it's a fight night, they get gold gloves. But on this card, it's only going to be for, I guess, the BMF fight, too, since that's for a belt. 
2K viewers, Lucas, love to see you getting that. Hey, love to see you getting the love. Hey, I love the love too, man. So almost at 2K viewers. Guys, if you haven't already, <coughs> let's leave a like on the stream, okay? Make sure to leave a like because that, that'll help this uh, the stream and the algorithm. Damn, I'm already starting to lose my voice a little bit from getting hyped up from that figgy fight. I was nervous watching that. Very nervous watching it. Um, what do you think about the Chinese fight? I'm a little worried. No one's talking about the possibility of us getting an upset. Everyone's expecting Zhang Weili to just steamroll Yan. But it's possible. It's possible we get an upset there. That is possible. I could see Zhang Weili getting knocked out or like rocked badly and then beaten up or something she's been ko'd before let's not forget she's been knocked out on a big card by uh rose namahunas she's been beat twice by rose namahunas which is crazy if you think about it rose namahunas has a really good resume for wmma still not able to compete with molly mccann though which is you know obviously the uh that's the, that's the heap of the heap that's the top of the mountain, Molly McCann. But she's she's in, she's inching her way up there. Maybe she can have a couple of fun finishes and we'll talk about her being in the combo, but Molly McCann is is the goat. She's she's the queen of MMA, queen of WMMA. <laughs> um bro, Cody looked like he never grappled in his life. No one's ever put him there. I honestly was a little bit surprised that Figgy was able to get him down so easily in the second, given how like big Cody Garbrandt is and how explosive he is, but it's the skill. At least they're, they're close enough in size, right? And it's that skill, that flyweight skill. Figueredo with his amazing grappling. And no one's ever done that to Cody. I know Font took him down a couple of times. Some people have taken him down, but no one's really tried to do that. No one's really made it a point to like try to submit him like that. So amazing performance from Figgy. I don't think he's getting the 300k bonus, though. There's no way you're getting a 300k bonus just with a little smudge submission. It was great submission, but it's the knockouts that are going to get the performance bonuses. All right? Unless they have a submission of the night thing. That'd be kind of cool. They do a submission of the night. But you know Dana White's not adding anything new when, he's have, when he has to give out 300k. Love the content, brother. Thank you. Knuckle, I appreciate the $10. Thank you so much, man. Uh, thank you for the $11 and the super sticker. Let's see what the super sticker is. Let me check this out. What is the super sticker? It is just, uh, it's someone saying thank you. Ren, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's see if Buffer actually announces him as Jim fucking Miller. All right. I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to say frickin', which is going to be kind of cringy, but it is what it is. Garbrandt should retire would have been a good ending. Nah, you can't go out like that. You can't retire after. If you got knocked out, I could see him retiring. Especially when guys get KO'd, they get kind of emotional, right? So I could see him retiring after a KO. But after a submission, you didn't take much damage. You can't go out like that, bro. I don't think you should retire. He's still young. I think he's still like 32, 33. Let's check Cody Garbrandt's age. Cody Garbrandt age. 32. Wow. 32 years old. Yeah, he can't retire right now. He should just fight a bunch of smudge grapplers. <laughs> Actually, no. He should not fight a bunch of smudge gra grapplers. I don't know what he does. Because for Volk, I'm starting to say he should fight the guys like Aljo. I'm starting to say he should fight the pipsqueaks. Figueredo's no pipsqueak. He could knock you out. But I mean, even for uh, grapplers, I mean, th they have uh, open season on Cody Garbrandt these days. You and Guru got beef. We do not have beef, bro. I assume that people are spamming Lucas owns him in the chat because I got a pick right and he got one wrong. But no, we do not have beef. Um, just people are trying to instigate something. That's how it is always on my chat. There's, there's people that try to inst... Hey, I, I like instigation at a press conference. But no, I do not have beef with Guru. Squash the beef with brew. Squash the beef with brew. What are you talking about? I do not have beef. Lucas hates me, never shouts me out. Hey, Benji. Thank you, Benji. Thank you for the 40 rupees. Thank you so much. Guru's chat is flaming him. All right, let's check the... Oh, here comes Miller, though. Here comes Miller. Here comes the crafty vet. 
Look at Miller, man. He, he's, he's there, dude. He does not have to be worried at all. Miller's, Miller's that crafty vet that, that knows that no matter what happens, he's still blessed to be in the UFC, right? And, and that's the craft that you're seeing from Miller right now. Look at how he's shaking hands. A lot of fighters, they're worried that the fans are going to pull on their hands. They're worried that, you know, maybe they get injured. Miller knows, you know what? I, I, I shake hands. I do jiu-jitsu. I grapple anyway. I hit pads. There's no way I'm going to get injured on the walkout. That's a crafty mentality right there. Grizzled craftsman, Jim Miller, walking out. There's that, uh, there's that Miller frog-like physique, the, the chicken legs of Jim Miller. There's the awkward, crafty physique of Miller on display. Green is getting knocked the fuck out? I think so, man. I think he's getting KO'd too. I think Miller's going to take a whooping early. Green's going to whoop on him early, but I think Miller's going to catch him with a big shot and put him away. Miller's got big power. And his last opponent was pretty fucking tough. Ended up getting the submission, but Miller's been knocking dudes out. And he's got a good chin, right? And, um, I mean, who's Bobby been finishing? Sure, he finished Grant Dawson, but no one really knew about his chin that much. He also was finishing Ally Quinto, who never had a great chin either. Al's been dropped a lot. Miller's only been finished once in his entire career. Yeah, Miller's got a great chin. The only time he was finished was by Dan Hooker that got him with a knee, which is, of course, you know, like, the strongest shot you can basically get hit with sometimes. Miller has the Blahovich physique. Yeah, Miller has a bit of a Jan Blahovich physique. Smaller calves, but yeah, he's got a, a Jan like physique. Crafty. It's the crafty build. I wonder what he ate for his pre fight meal. Here comes Bobby King Green. <laughs> Let's see what Bobby's walking out to. Is this Ski Yeet? There's Bobby Green. Bobby Green and the guy that looks like Bobby Green. <laughs> Is that George Janko? Is that George Janko next to Bobby? Uh, thank you for the 20 and okay. Lucas has beef with Izzy's dog. I don't know how to have beef with Izzy's dog, but uh, a slight beef with the Adesanya fans. I definitely have a little bit of a beef with the Izzy fans for sure. You should headline UFC 400 against Bedtime. I don't think he wants it. Honestly, I, I, I'm sorry, guys, but I don't know if Bedtime actually wants it. I hate to be that guy, but it's been all nothing but crickets since I've sent him the contract, really. It's been nothing but crickets. Uh, why is there an Iron Man next to Green? I don't even know. Who's the Iron Man? Who are you referring to? Broke my thumb today at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Still in the live. Well, honestly... Not the word. It is actually kind of a bad injury now that I think about it. The thumb is is definitely a, a useful, useful thing. But hey, thank you for the two dollars, Jao Lucas. Should not ruin your enjoyment from the card. Bedtime would cook you? No, he would not. I'm sorry, man. I, I know bedtime fights and all this, but he would certainly not cook me. Not at all. <laughs> not at all, man. I do not think so. Bedtime would get knocked out by those big meaty hooks. Listen, I already have a game plan for bedtime. I know how these MMA YouTubers would want to fight. MMA YouTubers would be concerned with looking good. Thing is, I'm not concerned with looking good on, on the pads, in a fight. I'm not going to be Mr. Technical. I'm going in there to knock him out. That's the difference. These guys, they go in there. They try to be technical. They throw a couple low kicks. They try to do their little pad work combinations. I see... A little bit differently i see openings that other people may not be able to see because you know i just have a, i have an ability to get myself kind of angry if you get me angry in a fight you don't want to fight me you don't want to stand across the octagon when i get angry so i see red i see red man all jokes aside i i would have a i see red approach to a fight because listen that there's no winning if you're not the more experienced guy or if you're fighting someone that has a lot more experience you got to go in there and try to take their head off you have to use the element of the surprise. You have to use the Val Woodburn approach. Just going for it, man. See how it worked for Val. He was able to hang in there with Bo for a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. Lucas, you don't know how to fight? I do, actually. I do, actually. Compared to the average person, I actually do. Did you wrestle in high school? I did not. I did not wrestle in high school, no. Um, but I've done kickboxing. I've done some martial arts. I do know how to fight. Listen. I'm not UFC caliber. I'm not regional scene caliber. 
But of course, compared to the average person like that, that has never trained, of course I know what to fight. Oh, he, did, he said Jim Miller? He said Jim Miller, not Jim fucking Miller? Wow, bro. That's pathetic. Anyway, who cares? Let's get it cracking. Now oh, we're in 10. Here we go. Oh, no, Mark Goddard, though. Not Mark Goddard, man. That's not a good sign, dude. When Mark Goddard's the ref, that is not a good sign, guys. That is not a good sign. Here we go. Jim Miller versus Bobby Green, round one. Nice low kick for Miller. Bobby's talking to him. Nice teeth to the body from Green. Bobby's talking. Nice leaping in sidekick from Bobby. Oh, there's a nice combination for Bobby. Bobby's looking fast. He's looking fast. He's going for that bonus. He's going for that bonus. Oh, Bobby cracked him. And Miller is getting styled on already. Bobby's piecing him up. Oh, yes! Miller hurt him bad! Miller knocks him down with a right hand. Knocked down for Miller already. Knocked down for Miller already. Boom! Big shot for Miller. Big hook for Miller. Miller's saying, Miller's not talking to him. Bobby's saying, what's up? But that's to be expected. Bobby does get rocked a lot early. But his chin, I mean, it's never been that great. Four minutes on the clock. Three minutes, 55 to be exact. Head kick attempt from Jim Miller. But Miller, look, Kraft, he's not going to overextend. He's staying patient. He knows Bobby is still in this. He knows he's still dangerous. And, and Bobby's woken up. Bobby's had some of his best performances after getting knocked down. So we'll see what he can do. Oh, that was a nasty one, too, from Bobby. Right on the chin. Bobby just said, watch this. <laughs> Bobby's talking. Bobby's talking shit. There's a jab from Bobby. But Miller's stalking him down. Little teep and a, and a jab from... Oh, there's a nice shot from Bobby. Pull back counter from Bobby as Miller is trying to land that big left hand. Another one-two from Bobby. He's looking fast. But if Miller lands a good shot on him, it could be the end. Big body shot for Miller. Big body shot. Right hand. Hard low kick from Bobby, but Bobby cracked him with another combination. Nice jab from Green off of the front kick. As I said, guys, Miller would take a whooping early, but he still knocked him down. Still had the biggest moment of the round. Oh, big shot from Bobby. Caught him coming in with a jab. That was nasty. Another jab from Bobby. Oh, Miller came very close to landing that big left hand. Miller's getting pieced up, man. Bobby throws a spinning kick. Misses big. But Bobby fights well on the back foot. Here comes Miller. Here comes Miller leaping in. But look at Miller, man. He's not deterred. He's not breathing heavy. His face is red, but he's still in there. Bobby tagged him again. Caught him coming in. But let's see, though. Nice side kick to the body from Green. Oh, that was, that was crafty for Bobby, though. Minute and 36 seconds on the clock. Nice hook from Bobby Green. That one tagged Miller. Oh, big knee from Bobby. Big knee from Bobby up the middle. Another team. Now Bobby's teeing off. Bobby's having a field day. But Miller's still alive in this fight. He's still dangerous. Oh, heavy low kick for Miller. But Bobby tagged him coming in. Big elbow from Green. You know, we might see an eye poke from Bobby as well at some point. He's known for eye pokes every now and then. Head kick attempt for Bobby. Another teep from Bobby. Really seems like Bobby's landed way more strikes than just eight more. I don't know if those stats are accurate. They do not look accurate to me. Bobby seems to have landed way more than 21. They, Miller comes crashing in. Bobby ducks out the way. 40 seconds on the clock. 
Miller's got to be wary of that knee coming up the middle. That teep and then jab from Bobby Green is money. He's doing a great job with that combination. Oh! Miller hurt him bad! Another right hand for Miller! Bobby cracked him! Bobby cracked him back, but here's Miller! He's got Bobby hurt, though. Big shot. Big shot. Now they're slugging. This could be fight of the night. Miller cracked him twice in that round. This is like Yoel Whitaker. Lightweight version of Yoel Whitaker. Flying knee from Green. Big moment for Jim Miller. Bobby whooped him up, but damn, Miller had the biggest moments in the round. So I don't know. I don't know how they're going to score those rounds. I don't know how they're scoring it. But um, I don't know. I feel like Miller kind of knocked him down, right? Miller was in there. He was in there. He got two big moments. He hurt Bobby twice. You might say 1-0 Bobby, but he got knocked down. I'm pretty fucking sure got knocked down in the beginning of that round and then got hurt badly at the end. And it's not like Miller wasn't landing any shots in the middle of the round. Like, Miller was landing decent shots. Bobby was whooping his ass for sure, but nothing really hurting him. I think Miller is up 1-0, guys. I think Miller's up 1-0. Fuck the clock. My bad. Can't do that. I think Miller's up, guys. I think Miller's up. Stop coping. I'm not coping. He never got dropped. I mean, he got rocked badly twice. Like, he did get rocked pretty badly. Got the biggest reactions. Those are the biggest shots of the night. Bigger than any shot in the Garbrandt Figgy fight. So, I actually don't mind giving that round to Miller. He had some big moments. Here we go. Lucas, how often do you practice muzzing? Um, every morning. Thank you for the $5. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Psychic Crusher. Anyway, another spinning kick for Bobby Green. Not that wise for him. But, you know, Bobby has great cardio, so I don't think it'll be an issue. Bobby's in there, though. Oh, nice uppercut from Green. Green's still talking to him, but he's he knows that he can get hurt here. Another strong low kick for Miller. I just think Miller's going to have more moments in this fight. He's making reads, guys. Miller is making reads. Nice oblique kicks from Bobby. Yeah, I got the clock. I got the clock. Hopefully there's a bit of a timeout. Oh, big uppercut attempt for Miller. Just misses. Oh, big shot from Green. But a big low kick from Miller. Oh, they go shot for shot. They're going band for band. You don't want to go band for band with a crafty vet. Bobby's trying to go band for band with him, but Miller, you don't want to go band for band with a cookbook owner. <laughs> you own a cookbook, dude. You do not want to go band for band with a cookbook owner. <laughs> Seriously. I know the clock is, is not caught up. It's three minutes and 33 seconds. I really don't like Green. Seems like a jerk. I love Bobby Green, bro. He's talking shit in a fight, dude. He's not a jerk, man. He's just animated. I give her the 20 and okay, but you don't have to like him. I could see why someone wouldn't like him. But I'm a fan of the in cage trash talk. Nice one, two from Bobby. This is a great fight. Oh, Miller's looking tired, though. I didn't like that reaction from Miller. Miller's starting to get freaked out here. Miller's starting to get wide eyed here. That crafty vet's getting wide-eyed here. You make a crafty vet go wide-eyed, that's not a good look. Let's hope he doesn't lose his composure. Heavy low kick from Miller. Heavy low kick from Miller. He's got to keep trusting in the low kick. Big head kick attempt from Miller. But Bobby's stalking him down. Another left hand from Bobby. Another left hand from Bobby. Oh, Miller moved out of the way. He's starting to he's starting to find that timing. He's starting to make reads. Nice one, two for Miller. See how Miller landed on the back? Oh, he chopped down with the right hand. He chopped down on the right hand. Beautiful shots from Miller. Beautiful shots. He's finding those angles that only a vet can find. Oh, nice jab from Bobby. Two minutes and eight seconds on the clock. Oh, Miller cracked him with a big hook there. That just barely missed. But Miller's defense is looking good right now. Miller's defense is looking good. I believe he's trying to counter Bobby. They're going craft for craft. They are both crafty. Bobby is crafty too. 
I know he looks younger than Miller because Miller's an old head, but so is Bobby. Oh, big hook from Bobby. And another big hook from Bobby. Two big hooks from him. Oh, Bobby's defense is looking good now. He's he's bracing with these shots. He's picking his arms up at the right time. Oh, he smoked Miller with that right hand. Oh, nice body shot. Nice right hand down the middle. Bobby's doing a great job at blocking all these shots with his arms, too. Miller's doing a great job of blocking all these shots with his face. Another low kick from Miller. Another low kick from Miller. Oh, four-piece from Bobby. Miller's all busted up. Another one-two from Bobby. Another jab from Bobby. Miller's face looks like a ketchup packet right now. <laughs> Miller's face looks like a ketchup packet. <laughs> Miller's getting his ass whooped, guys. I think I've come to the conclusion that Miller's no longer in this. He's getting his fucking ass whooped. I'm afraid Miller's craft is no longer a factor here. Oh, one, two, three from Bobby. Damn, dude. Bobby is in a flow state right now. He is totally destroying Jim Miller. Miller's face looks like Bisbing in the fifth round of his greatest war ever. Looks like a fifth round Michael Bisbing in his greatest war ever. Oh, big body kick for Miller. There's a nice jab for Miller, though. But I think, uh, I think we're starting to find out that there are levels here. There are levels here between Bobby and Miller's last few opponents. Levels, guys. This is a big step up in competition, as I feared. Ah, oh, I fucking should have picked Bobby, dude. I should have picked Bobby, guys. Miller's not in here anymore. He's got to get a KO. He's got to go for it. Bobby whooped his freaking ass, man. This is like an amazing performance. Yeah, guys, I don't know. I, I think I should have picked Bobby. But we've seen Miller crack him. You could see why. You could see why picking Miller was definitely something tempting, right? But uh, my goodness, this is a big levels difference between the, the apex newbies that Jim Miller usually beats because they have the octagon jitters and an old vet like Bobby who also maintained his speed. It was either the crafty, grizzled cookbook owner or the guy that's been able to maintain that speed. Two crafty vets, the guy that's been able to maintain that speed is winning the fight. I think it's 1-1. One, one. Round 2? 10-8? No, you, you, can't say, you can't say that's a 10-8. Maybe if there were more 10-7s, if the UFC gave out 10-7s, I'd be like, all right, that's a 10-8. But it's either 2-0 or 1-1. One, one. Hey, I know you guys are going to say, whoa, it's not 1-1. It's not one, one. Because look how dominant that was. Like, let's not forget the first round is a totally different round. The first round was totally different. Okay, Miller had two huge moments. But this is not looking so good for him. Big Schmidty hooks. Thank you for the $5. Spiritual awakening, I appreciate that. It's not looking so good right now for our, our boy Jim. But you know what? Bobby's showing levels. This is an amazing performance from him. And he did get brutally knocked out last time, so... You know, it's a, it's a good moment for him. It's a good moment for him. But this fight's not over. You can't count Miller out. You can't count him out. He's got that experience. He's taken whoopings before. His chin is holding up. His chin is holding up. Thank you for the $2, fam. God, do the cookbook as fructose corn syrup? <laughs> it does not. I don't think there's any corn in the cookbook, guys. Dude, Miller's got to stop fucking around with body shots, man. He needs a KO. No more body shots for Miller. Let's see if Miller actually starts throwing his craft. But Bobby's just doing a really good job of keeping distance. There's a good shot. Miller's got to start headhunting. I know that sounds silly, but I honestly think he has to start headhunting. Oh, Bobby just tagged him with a good jab. Oh, nice shots from Green, though. Nice shots from Green. Oh, big right hand for Miller. That was a left hand. My bad. But see what I'm saying? Miller's got to go for the head. He needs a KO here. Bobby's getting the momentum. He needs to snap that momentum with a KO. That's the only way he's going to win this fight. He's outgunned. He needs a nice shot. Oh, he just missed it there. He just missed it there. Oh, we tagged Bobby there with a nice left hand. Nice jab from Bobby. Bobby's looking fast, but he's still in there. He's still there to be hit, but Bobby's defense is good. His speed is good. Bobby's going for that performance bonus, man. 
could be fight of the night if Jim Miller knocks him down and Bobby whoops his ass for the rest of the round, honestly. This could be fight of the night if Miller has a big moment. Otherwise, might just be a performance bonus, but I mean, Bobby kind of needs a finish. He's going for the finish too. Bobby's going to take risks. Oh, he's whooping Miller, dude. Miller's got blood in his eyes. He's got blood all over his eyes. But look, Bobby's turning it up too. He wants that 300K. He wants that finish. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Nice one, two from Bobby. Another cheap and jab. That's money. Another left hand from Bobby. Bobby Green showing a master class right now. One, two from Bobby. And he rocked Miller there. But Miller's still in there. What is Miller doing trying to throw these little inside hooks? These little arm punches? Miller's got to load up, dude. He's got to fucking load up. On yeah! He's got to load up on those. There you go. Miller's got to load up on a big one. Dude, if Miller knocks him out, I'm going to go crazy. <coughs> Miller's going for it, dude. Miller's going for it. But he is taking a shitload of damage right now. Big shot from Miller! Rocks Bobby! He rocked him there. Another big shot from Miller. Throws a knee, but now Bobby's clinching. Smart from Bobby Green to get a breath here. Smart game from Bobby to get a breath here. That's a crafty decision. That's a craft move right there. And now Miller's tired. Okay, now they're out. Let's see if Bobby... All right, a minute and 30 seconds left. Miller landed a good shot there. This could be it. If I'm Miller, I'm going out on my shield right now. I'm looking for that KO no matter what. I'm going out on my shield. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is rough. Could be 2-1 Miller. <laughs> could be 2-1 Miller. Yeah, it could be. Could be 2-1 Miller, guys. Honestly. Bobby's got a lot of blood on him, too. That's not a good look. Oh, blo B Bobby's got blood on his back? I don't know, guys. That's not a good look. Like, Miller's bleeding out of his face, but I've never seen someone bleed out of their back. That's a bad look for Bobby. I think I could have a 2-1 Miller. Uh, yeah. Nice shot for Miller, but... I don't think Miller has the speed anymore. Oh, big shot! Big shot! Miller's hurt. Miller's hurt. Oh! Miller's down! Bobby's gonna TKO him! That's it. Step in. Step in, Mark. <laughs> Step in, Mark. Give him the finish, Mark. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, he's not, he's not raining down on him anymore. I think it's fine. Mark Goddard, early stoppage Mark, is on point tonight. But I, honestly, if he knocks him down one more time, I think it's time to stop it. Miller's getting an ass whooping. This is a brutal ass whooping from Bobby Green. Totally destroying Jim Miller. Levels performance. And takes him down and slams him. Big slam. Come on, man. Give him the fucking finish. Give him the finish. Honestly, 300K. All right. You know, good performance. Amazing performance from Bobby Green. I went with the vet. I went with Craftsman. Another crafty vet gets it done. I'm happy. That was an amazing performance. Miller took an ungodly amount of damage there. Uh, I actually thought maybe Mark Goddard should have stepped in. A little bit surprised, but you know what? All the trash that people have been giving Goddard may make him an even better ref. That wasn't going to be an early stoppage, I feel. But either way, we didn't need a stoppage. Miller wasn't out. We didn't need a stoppage. Good refing for Mark, I say. Good refing for Mark. You know what? I, I know people are going to disagree with this. I know people are going to disagree with this. I have it 2-1 Miller. And I'll tell you why. Although Bobby won the third round, Miller had a big moment in the second where he rocked him. Remember, he had a big moment in the second where he rocked him. He did land a couple of good low kicks. And the thing that people are forgetting is there was a moment where Bobby Green got hit with a couple of shots in that second round. And Miller said, how's that taste? Miller talks shit. I think it's a one. I think it's two one. Miller was talking some trash. He said, how'd that taste? You guys see it? You guys see it? I have a two one Miller. We'll see, though. Bobby Green had a great performance. He definitely... Listen, Bobby Green showed that he was the better man, but Miller, come on. You got to at least give him two, two rounds. Come on, dude. <laughs> nah, but either way, I have it... I have it... I have it 3-0, uh, Miller. <laughs> it's either 3-0, Bobby, or... Honestly, I think that last round should be a 10-8. I think that last round should be a 10-8 for Miller. <laughs>
Ten eight for Miller. Thirty twenty seven. Thirty twenty five is a good scorecard. Twenty nine twenty six. Honestly, that doesn't make sense. Bobby Green gets it done. I'm happy he got it done, honestly. I'm happy he got it done. Christmas came early for Bobby. I'm joking. <laughs> I think 30-25 uh, was a good score. 29-25. I get it. It's impossible. to. I think 29, what was it? 29-28 or 29-27? What was the last scorecard? He's going to call for the 300K. I'm 0-2. I'm 1-1. One one. <laughs> Bobby Green on the mic. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I think that the best scorecard would have been 2-1 Miller with a 10-8 in the last round. So maybe 29-26, I think would be the perfect scorecard. Was that it? Was that the last scorecard? I think that's the perfect one. That last round was a 10-8 for sure. Goddard lets that go, but not Yuri. Exactly, bro. But I think I think part of it is that people are starting to open Mark Goddard's eyes and kind of let him know that if you stop these fights early, we're, we're going at you. He doesn't want to have that reputation as the early stoppage guy. So Goddard is reading the room. He's starting to read the room. I like it, but Green wins. Amazing performance from Bobby Green. One of his best performances ever. And he got hurt early. He got rocked twice in the first round. So I see him losing the first round, but winning the next two. There's Paulo Costa. I'm joking. Tap at the Richie, but she kind of looks like Costa. There's Bilal. Bill Lyle. 301, 30 He said, call my name, dude. Oh, no. Oh, now we're going to go to Jessica Andrade and Marina Rodriguez. Fuck it. Anyway, guys, what, what do you want me to do in UFC 4? <laughs> so who are we playing on UFC 4? Win Bilal, dude. Uh, dude, the cookbook has fructose corn syrup. 2-1 Miller, according to Copas Tracy. Yeah, 2-1 Miller. I had a 2-1 Miller. But I could see them edging it out the green. Uh, thank you for the 20. Miller's last fight, I got a 3-0 Miller. I had a 2-1. But 3-0 is a little bit of a stretch. Maybe you got to give Bobby the last round, honestly. But yeah, no. Miller got his fucking ass whooped, let's be honest. Miller had a couple big moments in the first. If he had only landed one more follow-up shot. If Miller landed another strong follow-up shot in the first, I would have got that pick right. But we're one and one tonight. All right, we're starting off to an okay start. <sighs> I knew Miller Bobby was going to be a little bit risky. I trusted in him. I trusted in Miller's chin. Hey, his chin held up at least. I don't think he got knocked down at all in this fight. I think he got taken down, but not knocked down. That was a bad beating. Horrible beating, man. Miller got a ass whooping of a lifetime there. Fuck loads of damage. So, I don't know. I mean, it's not a good look to retire after that. Maybe come back, beat someone's ass at the apex, and then retire. Or maybe they'll put Miller on another pay-per-view on the prelims, and then he'll retire if he gets a win. But put him up against another old vet. Let him get a win. That's what they should do. Time for a piss break. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to watch this fight, guys. I, I might honestly go to the bathroom. I, I do need to take a shit. So, I honestly, I might go to the store. might get something to eat. Guys, I might just shut down the stream for 30 minutes and get something to eat real quick. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking, dude. I am going to watch this fight, all right? We're going to be disciplined. We're going to watch the tough cookies. Maybe they'll surprise us. Hopefully, we get an early stoppage. For Mark Goddard. Hopefully Goddard stops it early. Someone gets punched, Mark's going to step in, I hope. So, we can't let these ladies fight, dude. If there's a fight, dude, if a fight breaks out, you got to step in there. Dude, we can't have a fight breaking out. That's basically what this is. All right? We, we, we want some good mixed martial arts bouts. So, if these ladies start fighting, I say separate it. Just get them out of there. They're not supposed to fight. And uh, get the next two in the cage. Hard to watch the crafty Miller get pummeled. Yeah, it was hard to watch. At least he didn't get finished, though. I'm happy he didn't get finished. And also, for Bobby Green, it was a good performance. He took a ton of damage in his last fight, so it's good to see him get one back, too. Miller showed uh, some good moments. Miller showed some good moments in that fight. Showed toughness. Um, not the worst loss for him to have. He, he didn't get totally mogged. Okay? He did have a couple moments. He needed to get finished. Not the worst loss. 
Best Bobby performance ever. My favorite fighter of all time. Green is definitely up there. I, I got to put him in my top 25 most entertaining fighters ever. Without even coming up with a list, he's got to be in the mix. Yeah. I'm happy Green had an amazing performance like that. I hope he gets a bonus, but I don't know. I mean, I have a feeling they're going to favor the finishes here. But the performance of the night, I mean, you, you kind of have to go with a really good masterclass performance, right? And that wasn't a total masterclass the whole time through. But in the second and third round, it was. That's a performance. It could be, but we might see something even better. Like, what if Holloway just destroys Gagey for the f second, third, fourth, and fifth round? Right? What if fucking hell, Zhang Wei Li stinks it up for five? And the UFC gives her a bonus. Dana White hops on at the press conference. Um, performance of the night bonus is going to uh, Zhang Wei Li and uh, Max Holloway. <laughs> Zhang Wei Li stinks it up for five and half guard, and people are starting to talk about her, how she, as how she's like entertaining. I saw a post on Instagram the other day talking about the strike differential with Zhang Wei Li and Amanda Lemos, and the caption was, how come people don't talk about this enough? And everyone in the chat was glazing, everyone in the comment section, yeah, man, honestly, like, she's, she's tough cookie and all that. And I said, because it was boring. That's why. Like, Zhang Wei Li's fight against Amanda Lemos was just boring as fuck. And yes, it would have been fun if a guy was doing it, okay? Because if that was Volk in half guard beating up his opponent, at least the shots would have been hard. At least he would have been like landing with, with like, you know, decent power. At least he would have been having big moments and it would have been in an important title fight. But yeah. Thank you for um, the dono. Thank you for the $2. How are you doing on picks? <coughs> I am doing pretty well. We're 2-0 and right now. We're starting off to a good start. We're starting off to a good start. So we're 2-0 and right now. Maybe, who knows? I think I'm in the clear for this one because I didn't even pick this fight. <laughs> I didn't even pick this fight, so I'm pretty happy about that. That's the thing, guys. You don't want to take risks with these fights every now and then. But we're 2-0. and Miller gets it done. I'm joking. I'm 1-1. One one. I'm 1-1. One one. But I'm happy that Figgy won. I'm happy that Figgy won. I'm 1-1 one one tonight. I'm not going to bullshit you. <sighs> Lucas looks like Holly Holm. No, I don't. I don't look like Holly Holm. Um, I'm going to the store with this fight. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be the best fight in the world, guys. It might be fun, though. Hopefully it's fun. I think they're going to go for a fight of the night, too. And they don't have finishing power. I mean, Jessica Andrade, when's the last time she's finished anyone? She's knocked people down, but it's been a minute. Uh, they're giving away four performance of the night bonuses. Hope they get it. Oh, four performance of the night. Not just knockout, so they have KO of the night. They have fight of the night and performance of the night. Do you mean four performances, meaning like two of them would be KO and one of them or, or one of them would be KO and the other would be fight of the night? Or do you just mean four performance in general? Because if that's six in total, or are you saying four in total? I'm pretty sure I've heard people say 1.2 million is how much they're going to give out in total. So I think it's just uh, one performance of the night. Uh, one performance, one knockout, one fight of the night, of course. Yeah, I don't know if Bobby's going to get one, guys. And I don't know if Figueredo's going to get one. But two amazing fights so far. So, hey, that bonus idea is working. It is definitely working. Um, Bro, she killed Dern. Did she finish Dern? Oh, she KO'd Dern, huh? I forgot. Yeah, I know she knocked Dern down a bunch of times, but I forgot. N not the most memorable uh, outcome. Memorable fight? It is a memorable fight. But not the most memorable outcome. Sometimes I get mixed up with the WMMA ones. Dana said they're giving away 1.2 million. Yep, yeah, 1.2 is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I was like, damn, six bonuses would be sick. That'd be really nice. But yeah, it's more like four. Thank you for the two bucks, fam. God, I appreciate that. Marina Rodriguez, Jessica Andrade. We're going to give this one round, guys. We're going to give it a chance. One round, we're giving it a chance, okay? Aussie TV isn't showing the early prelims. That's rough. You got to go and uh, go to ESPN Plus. Do they not have ESPN Plus? You got to get ESPN Plus, my man. I don't know if it's available everywhere, though. Lucas looks like Bo Nichols' unsuccessful little bro. <laughs> unsuccessful. It's funny, dude. That's funny, man. It's funny because, like, 
obviously, I understand the, the looks thing, but come on, I'm more successful than Bo Nickel. Come on, dude. I'm at least more successful than Bo. Bo's had, like, a couple fights in the UFC, dude. I'm at least, you know, I'm at least, um, I'm at least a veteran in what I do. I, I've been a, I'm a big YouTuber. <laughs> Bo's only got a couple fights. He's still unranked, man. You can't be more successful than me if you're unranked. All right, guys. Bo is a, a multiple time division one champ. All right, well, I've had the I've had the best picks a few times for MMA content creators. I had the best picks last weekend. That's basically the equivalent of a of a championship. My church challenged us to do something nice for someone gay today. Oh wow. I don't know who you're going to give the challenge to, but thanks for the five bucks. I appreciate that. God loves you. I know. Thank you so much. But I don't know who you're going to, you know, who's who's the guy you're going to do something to because it can't be me because I'm not gay. So thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Um, Lucas, can we get a live gooning stream? If this is boring after the first round, we'll give it a round and then, then we'll go into the jelking. Okay, we'll do some jelking after. Anyway, here we go. Jessica Andraj and Marina Rodriguez. Bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. She went all alone. Bad to the bone. Let's look up the lyrics. Um, fuck, dude. Where are the lyrics? Bad to the bone, dude. What is the bad to the bone song? Bad to the bone. Okay. On the day I was born, the nurses all got around and they glazed. Haha, <laughs> they glazed. And they glazed in wide wonder. Bad to the bone. I got diarrhea using your cookbook. Uh, that'll happen. That'll happen. People do tell me that all the time, guys. If you have thought about getting the cookbook, I do recommend at least bracing for the first week. You might not feel so good. Because the thing is, of course, they're all natural ingredients. But I do tend to throw some, some random things in there. And, you know, it's not necessarily good for digestion. Now, you're definitely going to be eating some good hearty foods. It's not necessarily healthy. I, I always say, if you get the cookbook, get it for weight loss, get it for looks, don't get it for health. It is not a healthy thing. <laughs> uh, I'm joking, dude. You should not have diarrhea after using the cookbook. Unless you're using raw milk, and that is an ingredient you'll see in the cookbook. You don't need to have raw milk, but some people actually do react badly to raw milk the first time they have it. So, that's impossible. You will not get diarrhea from the cookbook. You may get it from a bad ingredient, though. May get it from a bad ingredient. But I appreciate the 10HK. Yeah. Who you got for this one? I'm not picking this one. Thank you for the two dollars, but I'm not I'm not uh I'm not picking this one. It's too risky. You never know what you're gonna get from Jessica Andrade. She could be throwing madness, she could be throwing bricks, or maybe Marina Rodriguez is a classic high output, actually entertaining style, but you never know. Right now, it's a little weird. But Jessica Andrade is going for it, though. She's going for it. E. coli and salmon salmonella. Yeah, no. You're, stay away from shitty quality meat, bro. Stay away from shitty quality meat, and you'll never get those. Thunder thighs? Yeah, she does have thunder thighs, but she's like, what? She's, she's like 5'8". That's not that short. That ain't that short, man. <laughs> now, nah, Jessica Andrade is what? Like, I'm guessing she's 5'2". How tall is Jessica Andrade? Jessica Andrade height. 5'2". Got it. Damn. 5'2". That's it. She's got to be one of the shortest on the roster. And she is mogging Marina Rodriguez right now. Boring fight. Really boring fight. This did not need to be on the card, but it is what it is. Honestly, you know what? I'm not even that un unhappy about this. I'm not even that unhappy about this. 
if we were yelling every single fight, getting hyped up, like, you know, we'd basically crash by the time the main event is here. We have to have some boring fights every now and then. But Rodriguez is looking for a Darce right now. But Andrade is fine. She's totally fine. Oh, man. This is not that fun, dude. This is not that fun. Cerrone's in Guru's chat. All right, let's check Guru's chat. Let's see. Cerrone is in Guru's chat. No, he's not. I don't see him. Anyway, I'm mostly looking at Andrade's behind, though. Oh, wow. First round's over already. Holy shit. That, that took forever. It was like 20 minutes long. Thank goodness that first round is over, dude. We're back to the apex with this one, guys. Back to the apex. <sighs> Might take another 25-minute toilet break just before the main. Yeah, you may as well. Jessica Andrade is off to a bad start. Zhang Weili is probably going to have a safe approach now that she's grappling at this point in her career, not taking any risks. So, yep. But hey, leave it to the hardcore fans. Leave it to the real hardcore fans saying, casuals don't understand how much of a banger this actually is. Remember people were saying that online, on Instagram? Real fans know how much of a sick fight this one is. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure, dude. I'll freaking throw myself out of my freaking window with this one. <laughs> Um, just kidding. No way y'all are paying 80 US dollars for pay-per-views. Here in Brazil, we pay like 3 US dollars per month for Fight Pass and we get everything. I know, dude, but we just do. Unfortunately, that's how it is. That's the norm. Oh, here he is, Don Fry. There's Don Fry. That's how he was doing it back in the day. That's all Don Fry had back in the day. Don Fry had one of these. Don Fry had one of these and he had one of the one twos. I, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man, I don't mind my chances against some of these Pride FC guys. I don't mind my chances against some of them back in the day. Don Fry was tough, and they definitely had higher tests, but the skills just weren't there. I hate to break it to you, but the skills just weren't there. <laughs> Don was fried. He's probably fried, dude. Americans make more money. I mean, that's true, too. The economy's way better, but time for chess. Yep. Honestly, guys. Let's give it one more minute. Let's give it another minute, and then we're playing UFC 4. We're playing UFC 4 after this. Back shots with Andrade go crazy. Damn, okay. Thank you for the two bucks. Psychic Crusher. We have an Andrade Glazer. An Andrade simp. I haven't seen many of you guys, honestly. I, I, I know we got some Tracy Cortez simps. I've never seen an Andrade simp. You're behind? Oh, yeah, I know. I, I haven't started the clock yet. This fight sucks, man. This fight fucking sucks. Let's see what the commentators are saying, trying to hype this bullshit up. Andrade's leaks go crazy. <laughs> Thank you for the two bucks. I've never seen him, dude. I would rather not. I'd rather not see it. I could, I could go without seeing Andrade's leaks. Thank you for the two dollars. What a tough cookie fight. I know, dude. They're tough. They're inspiring. They are absolutely inspiring, dude. Nice one, two for Marina Rodriguez. We'll, we'll give her a chance. We'll give her a chance. I poke for Marina Rodriguez. Oh, wow. Oh, man. What's one UFC 300 fight you'd put on this to replace? Oh, what's a fight I'd replace this with? Thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Um, honestly, honestly, I'd put up 50% of the roster against this one. I put up 70% of the roster instead of this. I'd rather see, um, Walter Walker versus Lucas Bresky over than this. Cause at least that is funny. <laughs> At least we get to laugh at it. There's nothing funny about this, dude. It's just a waste. I'd rather see... Honestly, I'd rather see a Mateus Gamrot smudge performance so we could at least clown him afterwards and have some funny content and, like, you know, use him on tier lists and whatnot. But what am I supposed to do with this? So I'd throw 50% of the roster, maybe even more. 
Yeah, like there, there are guys that I wouldn't put on here, like Jai Herbert, right? Who's that guy that got destroyed by Dan Hooker with the body shots that shit his pants? What's that guy's name again? Claudio Puelas? Yeah, I wouldn't rather see them. There's a nice shot from Marina Rodriguez, though. I know Omar somewhere in the world. Omar Peoples. I know he's somewhere just, just gawking right now. He's got his jaw dropped and he's gawking watching this. <laughs> we have some WMMA lovers in the chat. Nice shots from Marina Rodriguez, though. She is landing some good shots. She is landing some good shots. Man, she has a weird build, doesn't she? Marina Rodriguez has an elf build. She kind of looks like an elf. She has the ears, the pointy ears. She has the, the, the face. Right? She got an elf from the North Pole look. Not elf on the shelf, but, you know, a North Pole physique. And Andrade. Oh! Big shots from Andrade! Big meaty hooks from Andrade. They're not that meaty. Let's not get it twisted. I don't, I don't think Andrade has meaty hooks. Remember, guys, a meaty hook is like, you know, it looks like an ugly punch where you're just really swinging everything into it. You know how coaches will tell you. You got to work on your technique. Meaty hooks are the opposite of working on technique. But Andrade, she does have something close to meaty hooks, but she doesn't have a lot of pop on them. Lord of the Rings elf? Kinda, right? Uh, thank you for the $10, Ren. Lucas, same here in Holland. We can watch everything for just a couple of dollars. U.S. citizens are getting robbed, man. Yep, pretty much, man. But for me, it's a business expense. And also, that aside, I just, you know, it is what it is. I'm just, I'm used to it at this point. I'm used to getting robbed week after week. I mean, I think I pay like seven bucks a month for uh, ESPN Plus. Like seven or eight bucks a month, but yeah. It's fine though. I'd rather pay 80 bucks than have my stream crash because I don't know what the alternative is. There's no alternative. What's it like in the UK? I'm sure there's some UK people in here, some Irish and UK people. What do you guys have to do for this? But yeah, I, I can't deal with the stream crashing. That's happened too many times in main events for me. Only in main events. I could watch the whole thing just fine. As soon as it, it's a main event and I'm on the East, the Eastern streams, it always crashes midway through the fight and I have to get it back up and I always freak out. This is $79.99. It's like 80 bucks. We need some snoozers to save our hearts for later. I agree, honestly. This is like a chill moment. We're, we're basically uh, having a normal live stream right now. It's not a bad idea. And I kind of like that w with co-main events sometimes. We get very hyped for the whole main card. It's nice to relax a little bit so that we don't lose our voice, especially for me. I don't want to lose my voice early. So I don't mind this. I don't mind this at all. WMMA is the worst thing to happen to humanity. This is actually like a decent fight. I'm not even going to lie. If this was on any other card, it'd be okay. But because it's on UFC 300 after two sick fights, and it's going to get just mogged by the next two based on how entertaining the next two are going to be, it's not a good look. Bobby Green called out Patty Pimblett. Oh, no one's going to fight Patty Pimblett. That, you know, I, I mean, the UFC will give Patty some old head. Not Bobby, though. Bobby's too good, though. You know what, though? I could see Patty catching Bobby, but then again, I could see Miller doing the same thing, and he didn't. But I could also see Patty choking him out. Patty's a big lightweight. I don't think he would try to stand with, with uh, Green that long. He could take his back and choke him out. It's possible. But I don't think so. Get Andrade's leaks up instead of watching round three. I, I don't want to look at the leaks right now, dude. I don't know. That'll, that'll ruin my night. Uh, thank you for the $5, Eidos. Um, get a cracked fire stick. Every channel knows how to, man. 12 pounds a month. Uh, all shows and movies. Okay, is this what you're, you're suggesting I get so that I can watch the pay-per-views for cheaper? A cracked fire stick? I can look into it. Let me look that up. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, who you got, Yuri and Alex rematch? Oh, I, I have a 
at this point, we'll see how Yuri looks tonight. It kind of all depends on that. If Yuri gets smoked tonight, then I would never pick him in a rematch against Pereira. But if Yuri wins and actually looks good, because right now I'm hiding behind the early stoppage and I'm able to say things like Yuri was doing well, he was just getting going, he was just getting woken up by those elbows. But if Yuri loses tonight, then I have to look at him completely differently, okay? And I know that people are going to say you shouldn't do that, you know, but still, you actually can in this situation where Mark Goddard had a really bad stoppage. But either way, I'd pick Pereira if they were to rematch again tonight. I would pick Pereira. And I think it happened even sooner. But thank goodness this is almost over. Just a horrible fight, honestly, guys. Terrible fight. Honestly, I I'm going to get a snack. I'm going to get an apple, guys. I'll be right back. I'm getting an apple. I'm getting an apple. And I'm getting something to snack on. Because, you know, I'm kind of done with this one. I'm kind of done with this one. I'll be right back. Okay, thank gosh. Thank goodness, man, the fight is done. Holy shit, bro. Just completely ruined the vibe. Fuck, that fight sucked, man. It absolutely sucked. I'm not even breaking that down. <sighs> Have you cried as an adult? Yeah, I've cried as an adult. Thank you for the two bucks. I have. I'm not going to sit here and act like I've never cried as an adult. But yeah. I've not like bawled as an adult though. I've never bawled. Okay? No, I have bawled. I have absolutely bawled. But I've never cried as an adult. I may have, I may have been upset, but I've never cried as an adult. Alright? Now, I have bawled though. No, I, I mean, no, I've, I've never bawled as an adult. I've bawled, but I've never bawled. You know. But I, 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 I have played basketball. Absolutely. And they did a pretty good job at it, actually. I used to play power forward back in the day. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious, dude. That's hilarious. Look, look, there's UFC 4. There's UFC 4 on the side of the screen. That's hilarious. I used to play power forward back in the day, dude. It was crazy. And I remember they used to call me Spring. They used to call me Spring because 
every single spring it would be like i'd be like a, a gopher coming out of hibernation because you know they would see me they would see me in the fall and they would say dude this guy's getting fat and then i'd show up i'd show up lean mean and they said i had some spring to my hop they used to just call me mr spring because i had some spring to my hop and i always came out in the spring so it was crazy man um yeah i never had the best dunking ability but i always had a good free throw always had a great free throw always had a good three-pointer but the thing that i was really known for back in my day was always defense i was one of the defenders i was one of those guys real gritty. you got to have people that have grit obviously that's the thing in basketball people on defense have that grit and um you know yeah ebay ebay mothers eBay mothers. Is it mothers? <laughs> Motors. My bad. Yeah, just gone drudge. Woo, woo. Fuck you, dude. Not fuck you, just gone drudge, but just fuck whoever thought this was a good idea to put on this card, honestly. They should have had a shitty men's fight. Put Mateus Gamrod on here, so at least it matters. There's Macy Barber and Yusuf Zalal. Wow, no respect for Yusuf Zalal. No respect. Not even putting his name in there. Oh, look at this schmuck. Max Crosby, dude. <laughs> Max Crosby, what a schmuck. <laughs> that guy thinks he's a tough guy, man. I don't know about you guys, but I, Max Crosby's that guy that's always hanging out with Sean Strickland. He thinks that because he's like in the NFL, he's some sort of a tough guy. If only he knew, dude. <laughs> if only he knew just a regular, a regular Joe like me could take him out. Regular Joe Schmo like me with, with a couple of kickboxing lessons. That's the thing. These these athletes, they think they're tough guys, but not really. Not really. If you've done some training, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. I'm not jealous of this guy. Are you kidding me? What? Jealous of a, of a football player? Football's boring, dude. How would I ever be jealous of a football player? You think I want to play football? Football's boring, man. Hell no, man. Guy's a pipsqueak. <laughs> I'm joking. It'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to be a, a football player. But I could have been. I just, I, I'd rather be an MMA content creator. <laughs> I'd rather be an MMA content creator. Uh, I'd want to see how you'd back me down. How, you, how I'd back you down. That sounds a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie. That sounds a little bit strange. A tiny bit strange. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Probably with some jabs, bro. Uh, tonight is a Brazilian night. Let's go. 6-0 and for Brazil. 6-0, and you think? What other Brazilians are fighting? Oh, no, not Moicano, though. Moicano's about to have a rough one, dude. Thank you for the $2. I, I, it'd be nice if he were to win, but I don't think he's going to. I, I think we're going back to reality with this one. I know we got the last one wrong, guys, but we're about to go 2-1. and one. We're about to go 2-1. and one. Where's the bedtime cameo? Thank you for the $2. I'm going to do a, a bedtime cameo. I saw he did the face reveal. Did you guys see that? I saw bedtime did the face reveal, which is pretty cool. And honestly, he basically looks like a brown hair version of me. So, you know, I mean, he, he he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I saw bedtime's fight footage. I did see it, guys. Did you see it? Pretty impressive, pretty impressive. All right, but I kind of, uh, I kind of expected him to look something like that, right? Lucas, have you ever had peanut butter? I have had peanut butter. Absolutely, that is that is a. I'm pretty sure everyone would say yes to that. Thank you for the two dollars. I appreciate that. Um, you're too small to be a power forward, but when? Why did you cry? Um, why did I cry? I don't know if I want to say why I cried on the stream. I don't know if I really want to say why I cried on the stream because I don't want to turn it into like, eh, it's not really a, it's not really a big thing. I mean, you know, I thought it was a decent reason to shed a tear. I thought it was a decent reason to shed a tear, but it wasn't anything bad. I mean, it wasn't anything great, but it wasn't anything bad. Okay. It wasn't anything amazing, but it was, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, um, I've never cried over a girl, bro. Never, never have I cried over a girl. <clears throat> he lost his pump. I lost my pump. I lost my pump, bro. 
Bedtime is a professional nut hugger. It was a Muay Thai fight, honestly. So apparently he's he's not a he's not a smudge grappler. So respect, respect. Okay, so your girl left you from being gay and you cried. That was not it. Thank you for the two bucks. That was that was definitely not it. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like I've you know never cried as an adult. Like first of all, if you're just bawling, if you're bawling then that's fine. But if you're bawling tears, I hope you guys are bawling. I hope you're bawling in life. If you're bawling tears, that's not a good look. Okay. I think it's always good to reel it back. Okay. It's always good to reel it back. Sometimes if you win the world title, okay. If you win the world title, fair enough. You can let them flow. You can let them flow. Right. I'll tell you a time. I, th I think I, uh, I think I shed a tear. Oh, fuck. I don't want to. No, fuck you. Fuck you. I'm not talking about this bullshit. I'm not talking about this bullshit. Bedtime. What's up, bedtime? I saw the reveal. I saw it. I saw it this morning. I saw it this morning, dude. Uh, well, I know you were live last night. Lucas, we need a good guy, bad guy type of show. Bro, the streets want it. I like that idea. I like that idea. I have some really good ideas, guys, for the future. I have some really good ones. And it involves like an MMA network type of show where other content creators can be a part of like the network. It's not going to be, you can do your own thing. Like it's not going to be one of these things where, yeah, you can't talk about Lucas Tracy or um, you, you can't shit on anyone or, you know, you could say whatever you want, but I'm guessing bedtime's not going to want to you know, I'm, it's not going to be like working for me. That's not what it's going to be. But I'd like to have some kind of, um, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Like an ESPN for MMA content creators. <laughs> where we all have our own shows and every now and then they overlap. And we just debate. Here's Moicano, dude. Moicano and Turner. I'd like to do that. I'd definitely like to do that. But yeah. As far as the tear, you're asking when I've cried. I'll tell you when I've cried as an adult, which is not the time that I'm telling you about. There's only two times that I can think of, okay? And the sec and the time that I'll tell you about, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme, okay? Although you do have to pay to sign up. I'm joking. Nah, it wouldn't be like that. But maybe in the future, in the future, when I'm when I'm a much bigger channel. I'd like to do something along the lines of having like, you know, an MMA network on YouTube, but it can't be on YouTube, right? Because then it would just be individual YouTube channels. I don't know what the fuck to call it. I don't know what to call it. But anyway, we're underway. Turner versus Moicano. Let's go. Big body kick for Moicano. Big body kick for Turner. Underway already. Nice left hand from Turner. Big teep from Turner. Oh, he hurt Moicano already. Holy shit, he hurt him already. Nasty body shot from... Jalen Turner has Moicano hurt in the first round. Big shot for Moicano. And Moicano shooting. Smart game plan for Moicano. Body lock. He's got the trip. He might have this. He might have this. Can Turner stuff it? Turner's good. Turner's good. Oh, and he's on the ground. And Moicano's in half guard. And Moicano's in half guard already. Big for money, Moicano. We got hurt early with a teep to the body. Four minutes and seven seconds on the clock. I'm a little bit late on the clock, guys. A little bit late. Let's see if we can get another submission. Another Brazilian submission. Big for Moicano to get Turner down to slow him down with this. But Turner, let's see if he's improved. Moicano, let's see if what he's going to do for that bonus. Because right now, this is a typical money Moicano game right he's gonna need a first round finish to get a bonus otherwise i don't know turner's doing everything he's trying to buck out of this turner's don't give up your back now don't give up your back now that was dangerous you don't want to give up your back Sorry, guys, I wanted to take a bite of my apple. Stinky performance so far, but it's still the beginning of the fight. And this is a big 
fight for Moicano. If he wins this, top 10 is huge. Moicano wins, I don't know. We'll see. Those takedowns he's got are great, though. The body lock takedowns. But Turner is just getting smudged, man. But, I mean, so much for that performance, right? So much for that performance bonus. Moicano's kissing it goodbye. He's going after this win and this win only. Turner's just getting smudged. You know what? Gamra held him on the ground, so it's not that surprising. I did say that Moicano could win this, but we'll see, though. We will see, though. We will see, though. I'd like to see if Turner has uh, a lot of energy in the second round. Because he's not expending that much energy. But every now and then, he's trying to explode up to his feet. Moicano doesn't want money. He doesn't want money with this performance. <laughs> Moicano is, is, is kissing this 300k goodbye. Oh, the fans are booing him. Oh, no. Fans are booing him now. Here comes Turner. Here comes Turner. And Turner's back on the feet. A minute and 30 seconds. Let's see what happens. Turner still has energy. But he's looking slow. That punch was labored. That punch was labored. Let's see what happens. Jab from Moicano. Little oblique kick from Turner. Slow left hand from Turner. He's looking a little bit slow, guys. I'm not loving the speed right now from Turner. Head kick attempt from Turner. Big front kick from Turner to the body. That same one bothered Moicano early. Nice body shot from Moicano, though. But he's got the threat of the takedown established. Let's see if he shoots again. Either way. Now that threat of the takedown is on Turner's mind. And he's looking a little bit slow. Let's see what Turner can do. Because he's not looking great right now. He is slow as fuck. I don't know what's going on. Look at him. It looks like he's shadow boxing a range right here. I think he's looking to counter Moicano though. Very slow fight. Very slow right now. But this is a smart game for Moicano. Lands another jab. Oh, nice shot! Oh! What are you doing? What are you doing? That's a knockdown for Turner. Big knockdown for Turner. He rocks Moicano bad. And ruined the fucking finish. Fuck! <laughs> what are you doing? Round one for Jalen Turner. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Let's go! Round one, baby! Round one! But what is he doing, man? Horrible fight IQ. Jump on him! Jump on him now! Holy shit! You can't do that, dude! You have to follow up. Two follow-up shots and it might be over. Dude, what the fuck? At least he stole the first. At least he stole the first. 10-9 for Turner. But that was a bad knockdown. Honestly, that was a knockdown if I ever saw one. They might score it a 10-8, but maybe 10-9. But, I mean, what? Was Moicano, like, dominating or something? Not really. It wasn't really dominating. He was winning the round. But just because you're out grappling, dominating. Fuck, dude. Come on, bro. You can't be doing that. All right, let's jot down that timestamp. Oh, shit. I totally forgot about the timestamp in general, the start of this fight. Um, uh, two. Let's go to 12. 212. Renato Moicano, Jalen Turner. All right, here we go. Body kick from Moicano. Moicano's putting the pressure on him. He's going to shoot for a takedown. Turner knows it. Turner knows he's shooting for a takedown. Big shot from Moicano. Big shot. Four minutes and 46 seconds. Oh, Moicano stung him with a shot there. Oh, no, that was Jalen. That was Jalen that clipped him. Turner's got nasty power in his hands. There's the takedown. Good takedown defense from Turner. Great takedown defense from Turner. Maybe look for a knee up the middle. Nice shots from Turner, though. Moicano is exchanging with him in the pocket. It's getting dangerous, but here's Moicano still stalking him down. Another straight shot from Moicano. Joe Rogan's comparing Turner to Tommy Hearns. 
He's got that Tommy Hearns power. That Tommy Hearns power. That left hand of Turner's looking good, though. I think Turner really makes it a point to change up the rhythm and the speed of his punches to try to catch his opponents off guard. Oh, nice shot for Moicano right there. Dude, these, these commentators are not even commentating the fucking fight. There's a takedown. And Moicano's got him on the mat. Moicano's got him on the mat. I had to take off my headphones, man. No point in wearing headphones during the grappling exchanges. <laughs> uh, and Moicano's in a good position. Honestly, wait, does he have mount? Moicano has mount. Holy shit. Not good for Turner at all. Let's see if Moicano can keep this on the mat. He's definitely not getting that bonus. But look, he's going to try to posture up. Look, he's posturing up. Oh, you don't want to give him the back, though. You don't want to give him the back, though. Do not give him the back, Jalen. Jalen's doing everything to get up to his feet. Oh, no. He's got the head and arm now. No, fuck that, dude. Do not fucking tap to this. Moicano's really good here, guys. And Jalen Turner... He's uh, not necessarily proven submission defense. It's not like Gamrot had any submissions to offer. So we'll, we'll see if he can hold up here. But Moicano's got to go for it. He's got to go for this, guys. If he wants his money, money Moicano, if you're going to live up to that name, you better get that fucking bonus. But a part of me is just saying that because I want him to take risks so Turner can get up to his feet and knock him out. <laughs> Shout out to Moicano, bro. I'm sorry, Moicano, but, you know. I kind of want to get my pick right. It'd be nice to get my pick right, you know? Two minutes and 16 seconds on the clock. Moicano smudging Turner into the canvas, as I thought was possible. As I thought was possible. Oh, Turner ruined that finish, man. Just totally ruined his fucking finish in the first round. What the fuck? Tried to have a big walk-off moment? Oh, man, it's all coming back. It's just 10 times worse that he fucking ruined it, man. That's so annoying. This is the worst fight of the night. It's even No, it's it's better than Jessica Andrade, Marina Rodriguez. Even if that fight was good, this is better than that. Even if this is boring, the stakes are high, and there's still two good fighters, so I'd rather watch this. And this is not even that bad. I mean, Moicano looking for a finish here. The landing little pitter-pat pipsqueak shots. It's not the worst fight of 2024. You're stretching it big time. He's actually trying to explode up to his feet. Like, please shrimp or something. Yeah, he doesn't have the best technique. Doesn't have the best technique to get up to his feet, right? You got a shrimp, man. <laughs> uh, who won the first round? Oh, Turner. Oh, shit. Big shots from Moicano. No! No! What are you doing? What are you doing? He's getting up. He's getting up. Fuck that. Screw that. Fuck that. Get up. Fuck that. Fuck. <laughs> ah, come on. <sighs> Fuck, man. You had to finish in the first. Good for my count, I'll do. Oh, what the fuck was that? Like, why did he quit? He just started quitting out of nowhere? Like, what was the shot that hurt him? I don't know. What was the shot that hurt him? Win for Moicano. Moicano gets it done. Amazing win for Moicano, but why did he start shelling up? Like, was he that hurt? I mean, what the hell? What was the shot that rocked him? I didn't see the shot that rocked him. That was it? Wow, anticlimactic. Good for Moicano. Good for Moicano. He's not getting the performance bonus with that, though. Even though it was a good finish. He's not getting the he's not getting the freaking performance bonus. And Turner had the finish, man. That's the most annoying part. He had the finish in the first round. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. Honestly, it's time to hang it up. Make a make a mistake that bad. I don't know if he can show his face again on, on a UFC event. Not after that. That's a particularly bad one. Bro, it's full mount. I know it's full mount, but out of nowhere, I just saw Jalen Turner shelling up for dear life as if he was rocked and dropped with like a big bomb on the feet. That's what I'm confused about. I'm not confused with full mount being a good position to TKO someone. I'm just confused about like, what was the point where Turner started shelling up? Like, I don't remember. Jalen 
wilted so bad. He wilted. He quit. Jalen Turner literally just quit. I was three for three, about to be four for four in my parlay, but zero IQ Turner, man, for fuck's sake. I know. He just ruined the finish. Holy shit. He literally ruined his finish. Good for Moicano. I'm happy that Moicano won. Like, good for him, but it's a little bit annoying for people that were picking Jalen Turner. I, I am a little bit annoyed at that. He just rolled over and quit midway through the second round when he wasn't getting hit with bad shots. It was, dude, he was landing little pit pat shots. I turn over to the computer to read one chat. Next thing, I, like five seconds later, I look back and he's just rolling over and quitting like Vicente Luque. So Jalen Turner's the Yair of 55. He is now horrible fight IQ. Holy shit. This dude literally had a finish. He literally rocked him, had him almost out of there. Bad knockdown. And just let him get 10 seconds where he was concussed on the ground. What the hell? Holy shit, man. Like, just don't... Don't tell me that that was a real win. That was not a real win, I'm joking. It was a good win for Moicano. Hey, at least Moicano got it done. That's what you get for doing a walk-off KO after one little knockdown. They're not going to give him the bonus. Read what? <laughs> He's shouting out his podcast. <laughs> Based Moicano. Oh, you cannot refuse. If Rogan refuses, he's a bad guy. He's literally a bad guy if he refuses. Holy shit. Rogan's going to be guilt tripped into his podcast. Nice. Hey, at least Rogan got guilt tripped into his podcast. If Rogan turns it down, he's legitimately a horrible guy. <laughs> Read Austrian economic literature. <laughs> Bro, I love Moicano. At least Moicano came through with a sick speech. At least he came through with the good speech. But... You know what? Screw it. I I'm happy that Turner lost. Y you can't ruin a finish like that with zero fight IQ. You can't have zero fight IQ like that and fuck it up and just have a finish right on the table and not take it and, you know, not deserve to lose. He deserved to lose that one. He literally deserved to lose. All right, guys, we're one and two tonight. One and two. Who won the last fight? Guys, who won the last fight? Was it um, Andrade or was, was it Marina Rodriguez? Let's see. Figgy won. I got that one right. Who won the last one? Oh, Jessica Andrade won. Nice, bro. <laughs> I didn't pick it. I would have picked Marina Rodriguez if I did, though. Because I'm happy I didn't. Awesome. Sick. Other than the knockdown, his stand-up was good. Yeah. I agree. Moicano was doing well, especially after he uh, shot the takedown early. Good performance from Moicano, but Turner could have knocked him out. Turner was right on the verge of getting a TKO in round one. Right there. And he fumbled it. Let's not pretend that Turner wasn't about to get a fucking TKO. Let's not pretend he wasn't about to get one. He walked off like a fucking fool. So he deserves to lose. So good for Moicano. What did I tell you? Jalen No Heart Turner. Literally, you're right. Yeah, he, he is officially the Tin Man of the UFC. Jalen Tin Man Turner. Thank you for the two bucks, the fam god. I appreciate that. Yeah, let me just jot down the timestamps for this horrible work from Jalen Turner. And uh, yeah, that completely changes how I see him from here on out. I'm not going to pick him next fight, depending on who he fights, though.
I do end up picking him quite often. Oh, sick. We have Calvin Cater Aljo. This is big. We need to get back on our winning ways. We need to get back on our winning ways. Moicano, subs, Turner. Let's do like 219. Moicano, TKOs, Turner. I think that's a finish. No, not a finish in every single fight. Only one shitty fight tonight. At least that was fun. Some people were saying it was the worst fight of the year. That was a good fight. Anytime you have a high stakes matchup with ranked opponents, it can't be that bad. All right. Especially if there's a knockdown and there's ground and pound. So yeah, but Turner was right there. A lot of people's parlay just got destroyed. I was very confident that Turner was going to win guys, but you know what? He almost did. He just kind of ruined it for himself. Turner is his worst enemy in that fight. He gave the fight away. Literally gave the fight away. And Moicano, he, he made the most of it, so good for him. Magni, mallet ass finish. Vicente Luque ass finish. Out of nowhere. As I said, I'm watching the fight. Pitter pat shots, pitter pat shots. All right, we'll wait until the third round, see what happens. I look back at the screen after I look at the chat for a second, and Turner's just cowering away for nothing. Didn't get hit with a big shot on the ground. Just started cowering away. Quit. Lost my parlay. It's time to Google the tallest bridge in Florida. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, it's getting ugly out here. It's, it, it, I'm starting to get worried. I'm starting to get worried about my picks. I believe we're one and two. So we're not off to the best start, guys. We are not off to the best start, but we'll see. I didn't pick the Andrade fight. I would have picked Marina. Thank goodness I didn't pick that fight. What if Luke, if Turner had any IQ, he would have KO'd Moicano? I know. 100%. I hate Jalen Turner. Yeah, man, that, that was a disgraceful look for him. Moicano's yapping too much. He's not that guy. I mean, he's making the most of the post-fight speech. He, he's doing a good job at that. What is this? What is this? Are they about to unveil a new canvas? Tate versus Nunez. Why are they showing that? Oh, I don't know. I thought they were about to unveil a new canvas. Um, what did Turner learn training with Hamzat? How did he get your ass beat? Apparently, that's what he was learning. How to get your fucking ass whooped. On the ground, how to quit. Ten Man Jalen Turner is his new nickname. Um, low IQ Tin Man. Officer Renato Chauvin versus Jalen Floyd. All right. Thank you for the two New Zealand dollars. Officer Renato is coming in soon, though. He's actually going to be a cop. I'd like Moicano as a cop, all right? He might be wreaking havoc, though. I'm not going to lie. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I love it, actually, though. But, you know, I, I like the fact that he's passionate about it, at least. But he might be wreaking havoc. Jalen Turner lost by low fight IQ. He did. He did it to himself. He literally did it to himself. He was his worst enemy there. He gave it up. Had the finish on a silver platter. Could have had his first round TKO, knockout of the night, performance of the night. That literally might have been knockout of the night. That was a sick knockdown. One punch knockdown. Turner was sent flying across the octagon. And he tried to have a nice little walk-off KO moment. Imagine if the ref actually stepped in, though. Imagine if the ref stepped in. We would have said early stoppage, fair enough. But imagine if it was Goddard. If it was Goddard, we actually would have had a finish. So... Unfortunate for Jalen Turner. Unfortunate for me. Lucas, I was sparring my eight-year-old little sister and she was only throwing big meaty hooks. All right. Interesting. Thank you for the five bucks, Angel Felix. I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't know if it's possible to throw big meaty hooks if you're like eight, dude, because you have no sting on those shots. Ah, <sighs> Jalen Turner ruined my picks. He should have finished Moicano. I know. Thank you for the 500 KES. Yep, he ruined my, my good record. I was about to go 2-1, and one, and now we have a losing record so far. So let's hope that Cater gets it done. Or Diego Lopez. Let's hope that both of them get it done. But I'm a little worried for Cater. I'm not worried for Diego. Diego has that aura, but we'll see. This fight is going to be really interesting. Who's up next? Is it Lopez? Lopez and Yusuf, right? Yep. Diego Lopez and Sadiq Yusuf up next. This will be a sick fight.
Why would the ref stop it? Moicano's head didn't bounce off the canvas. He got right up. He did not get right up, but he was down there for a second or two. He was down there. No, but you're right. The ref shouldn't stop it. I'm saying if it was Goddard, he would have stopped it. Not that that's a good stoppage. It would have been an early stoppage. But the point that I'm making is Turner had a finish right then and there. If he had just followed up. If he had just followed up when Moicano was gaining his consciousness. He may have had the finish. He wasn't hurt. He was confused. Yeah, even better. Get him when he's confused. Like, jump on him. Ambush him. That's what he should have done. He ruined it. Moicano ranting like he just went five rounds, throwing a lot of gas out there. I mean, you know, he always does that on the on the mic. Lucas, have you heard about DC's wife filing for a divorce? I have not. That is crazy. I've not heard that. Where is that information? Where are you getting that from? Let me look that up. I don't see it at all, dude. I don't see that. I see John Jones calling DC his bitch, but I don't see that. I don't think that's true. Turner's fucking cooked. He's apex bound from now on. Honestly, we're gonna start have we're gonna have to start talking about him as if he's just a can slayer. Alright. He's good, like he has skills. He's not like Garbrandt. People say Garbrandt has this championship skills. Turner literally has skills outside of a ground game. Like, he does not have a good ground game, but he has good stand-up skills. Just not a good fight IQ. Lucas, do you watch Sam Sulek? I, I don't, no. I mostly watch just, like, MMA content for the most part. So, yeah. Also, you know, I, I think he's a little bit boring. I know that he's genuine, but I'm not as passionate about bodybuilding as I used to be. And so, therefore, it's kind of hard for me to just watch someone talk about their lift and, you know, training hamstrings and all this stuff. Like, maybe back in the day, that would have been interesting. Uh, when I was younger, my Sam Sulik was Rich Piana. Rich Piana was entertaining. I'll tell you that much. Way more entertaining than Sam Sulik. No, I don't watch Sulik, but still. I used to like Rich Piana's Bigger by the Day vlogs. R.I.P. Rich, I know. Unfortunate, man. Rest in peace. That's what happens if you get into bodybuilding. It's probably one of the most unhealthy sports. Body destroying. If you sauce up, that is. Um, if Aljo doesn't take Cater down, he's in trouble. Oh, 100%. Yeah, clearly. Thank you for the 200 KES. Nigel, I appreciate that. Aljo has to take him down, otherwise he's screwed. Not like he's going to get destroyed every second while it's on the feet. Aljo still is fast. He has good footwork, but he's up against a much bigger guy than what he's used to. And Aljo usually makes his money on the feet from a reach advantage. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Hey, Lucas, I love your videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Azil, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the two. I will keep it up. I will absolutely keep it up. Do you watch Greg Duchette? I can't watch Greg Duchette. He's a drama channel for fitness. I I've seen a couple of Greg Duchette videos years ago, but I'm not, listen, if fitness, if the fitness industry was what my life was at this point, then I might. But even then, even when I was doing fitness, um, like, you know, I still didn't watch Greg Duchette. I, I don't really, uh, it's just drama shit and calling people fake daddies. Uh, it's not that interesting to me. Who's GVS? I don't know who that is. Um, do you train and which martial art? Uh, I, I do not train at the moment, but I, I do do martial arts. I, I watch UFC and I, I study the UFC. I have a YouTube channel on the UFC, so I do do some martial arts. I know, I know a thing or two. So it's a kind of a form of training to sit down and watch. No. Uh, but I used to. I used to do kickboxing. I, I've done kickboxing. And when I was little, I did judo, but nothing at the moment, but I'm going to get back into it for sure. I'm going to get back into it. Uh, I also, as I've said, I want to do some collabs with some fighters, maybe some training stuff. And it'd be nice if I, you know, train a few months before doing those collabs so that I just get rid of the rust. 
Every now and then I do some shadow boxing. So technically I box, technically. You know, you don't have to go to a gym to box. If you do some shadow boxing in your kitchen when you're cooking food, then technically you can consider yourself a boxer. Uh, Lucas, did you see Chris Action Man Curtis's tweet responding to you? I did see that. But he didn't really respond to what I said about him. He just responded to what I said about Izzy. He said, I don't love Izzy, but how can you say that this guy's resume was fraudulent? Because the things that I was talking about, like quite literally were proof of his resume being kind of overrated. Like he's a win one, lose one type of guy as a champ. He's had a bunch of robbery wins. So it's not like he's been, you know, nothing but dominant. But we'll show you, I'll show you guys the tweet after this. If you guys are just now tuning in, Chris Curtis did mention me on Twitter, posted a whole or reposted a whole a minute and 20 second clip. But thank you for the 20 bucks. True Mancian, I appreciate that. Thank you for the 20. Hey, thank you for the six months membership. Diego Lopez. Pray for me, pray for me. It's Diego Lopez in the chat. I don't know how this is him. He doesn't have the phone in his hands, but I guess he's got a doppelganger. Maybe he's typing it with his ass. But hey, shout out to Diego Lopez. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got Diego. There's the uh, McGregor. Oh, yeah. Lucas Tracy's twin brother. If Alex wins or loses, Izzy is going to be salty. Um, if Alex wins or loses, what do you mean? I think Izzy would be happy if he won because that would just mean like, oh, yeah, there's there's the guy that I beat doing really well. So if Alex loses, I think he'll be fine either way. I think both outcomes are good for Izzy, actually. If Alex loses, then he, he's happy that he saw that guy lose. Maybe he's a little bit salty still. If Alex wins, then it's good for Izzy's resume. Here we go, guys. Sadiq Youssef. Jeff Side. <laughs> Jeff Side versus Sadiq Youssef. Brazilian Jeff Side. Great comparison. They do look alike. Diego Lopez and Jeff Side. Here we go, guys. Round one. Diego Lopez, Sadiq Youssef. I'm picking Lopez by first round finish. Let's see if we can go two and two. And we're locked in. Lopez stalking Yusuf down. We might see a moment where Lopez gets rocked, though. I'm not going to be surprised. Leg kick from Yusuf. Yusuf checks the low kick of Lopez. The low kick of Lopez and the leg and the leg kick of Yusuf. <laughs> Four minutes, 26 seconds on the clock. Hard low kick from Lopez. Yusuf misses the leg kick. Oh, strong jab from Yusuf. Connects on Lopez's chin. Nice one, two from Lopez, but another strong calf kick from Lopez. Big body shots. Oh! Big knock down! Lopez gets him out of there! No! The ref's gonna let him survive, okay? No, good, good, good work from the ref. Big uppercut from Lopez. Stings Yusuf, and he's, he's on him. He's on him. He might look for a submission here. I would say don't let him up. I would say don't let him up. He's letting him up either way. Big moment from Lopez. Big body shots. Another uppercut! Knocks him down again! And he's in mount! Diego Lopez about to finish him. Let's see if he takes his back. This is going to be performance of the night. And he's out of there! Yeah! Diego Lopez gets it done! Diego Lopez, first round fucking KO! That's performance of the night! And he gets in Dana White's face. Charles Oliveira 2.0! Nice, dude. Sick. There's Mr. Quivers. <laughs> There's Mr. Quivers next to him. Nice, dude. Zuckerberg looking super awkward. Diego Lopez has that fucking aura, man. He just stole the show. This is the guy. Future champ. This is Iliad Deporia's problem right here. Him and Deporia is the future fight. First round KO, demolition job. He's a fucking savage. Big shot. How, oh my goodness, look at his eyes going back in his head. That's gotta suck for Sadiq Yusuf. Sadiq, 
How to feel to be the star of the show? <laughs> this is Mr. Quiver's fault. That's what you get asking Sadiq Yusuf that question. That's how it feels to be the star of the show. Nice, man. I love Diego Lopez, dude. Volk snacks and I'll screw that. I do not want Diego Lopez to fight Volk. Screw that, bro. 300k. He's getting 300k. Easily. Easily 300k. Two uppercut knockdowns. It's over for everyone else on this card that's getting a finish. No one's topping that unless it's Charles with something similar or even better. Jeff Side getting this 300k. True. Brazilian Jeff Side gets it done. Sick performance. He's got a Jeff Side physique too. Underrated physique for Diego Lopez. Literally a 45 version of Charles Oliveira. Like submission game, knockout power. I mean, this guy's a monster. He's a threat. I mean, Sadiq Yusuf was in there for five rounds against Edson Barboza, who doesn't have the same power, but no one's finished Sadiq like that. I don't think he's been TKO'd. Wait a second. Sadiq Yusuf hasn't even been TKO'd in his UFC career. He's been dropped by Allen. Arnold Allen decision? Edson Barboza decision? Bro, no one's put this man away. Diego Lopez just shot all over him. Crazy performance, man. And that's, we're already underway. We're off to a good start. Two and two on picks. I think I picked a first round finish for Diego Lopez. Nice, man. First round finish, demolition job. That's basically what I was seeing as soon as this fight was announced. That was what I had in my head. Demolition job from Diego Lopez. Nasty power. Let's see him versus Ev. No, not Evloev. I think he finishes Evloev in a rematch, by the way. But talk about the chin on Evloev. He was able to eat those shots. See what he says. Volk? No, I do not want to see him fight Volk. He doesn't deserve that fight either way. He doesn't deserve it yet. You can't go from Yusuf, who's coming off of a loss, to Volk. All right? That's not happening. I believe him. I believe him, dude. I think this is Taporia's real test. We were saying, where's Taporia's test? Is it going to be Max? I don't know if it's going to be Max. I think it's this guy. I think it's this guy. You need someone with finishing power. You need someone with nasty finishing power. This is a Charles Oliveira at 45 pounds. The 45 pound division lacks finishers with TKO power. It lacks submission threats. The guys that are getting submissions are like Ortega after he gets his ass kicked for three rounds, right? Ortega out of nowhere. Sadiq Yusuf just got destroyed by TKO. Pat Sabatini destroyed by TKO. And then this guy almost submitted his uh, first opponent, Evlev. Easy submission in his second fight. This is Taporia's real test. And he's a massive guy for the division. One of the biggest 45ers on the roster. He's massive for the division. Were you familiar with my game? I was not that familiar, bro. But I kind of was since I did pick you to win. Shout out to Diego Lopez in the chat again. Thank you for the two bucks. Again, I don't know how you're typing because I don't see him with a, with a phone. But that is interesting. It's starting to think that you're not actually him. Uh, Bo's about to steal the bonus from Lopez by getting the fastest KO ever. Yeah, I don't think so. Bo is not getting the bonus if he gets a submission or like a, a regular ass TKO. He better not get the bonus. That is the bonus. That's the 300k worthy fight. Right there. That is a 300k worthy bonus. Demolition job. Only thing that would have made it better, a little bit better, is if he jumped on the submission and got the, the submission right away after the first knockdown. That would have been sick. But you know what? A TKO is always nice too. And some people prefer that. The casuals like that. All right, but I think a submission and a knockdown can't get better than that as far as the finish goes. Yo, Jeff Side used to wrestle and train MMA. He's a beast. I know. Jeff Side is a legit threat, bro. Or at least he was a legit threat. He, uh, he's a good athlete. And yeah, he did used to wrestle. And he looks like Diego Lopez. Very similar to Lopez. 
Diego can do some real damage at 45 and 55. Yeah, well, let's not even think about 55 yet, but who's beating him? I mean, maybe Arnold Allen. We still don't 100% know about his chin that much. Like, it's not 100% proven, but I, I think Diego Lopez can finish everyone in this division. He, he's got the submissions. He's got the KO power. Sadiq Yusuf, never been finished. He's been rocked. Never been put away. So talk about the power from this guy. And let's think about Pat Sabatini. Was Pat Sabatini KO'd in the UFC? Sabatini got KO'd with the same type of shots. Uppercuts in the dirty boxing range. Let's look at Pat Sabatini's record. Yeah, he got knocked out by Damon Jackson. Never mind. <laughs> Pat Sabatini got finished by Damon. I forgot about that. What a performance, Lopez. Fuck, Turner ruined my whole bet. London, UK. Thank you for the five pounds. Sean Newlands. Yeah, Turner really ruined a lot of things for us. I could have been... I could have been three and one right now, honestly. If it wasn't for Turner ruining that finish. But at least Lopez boosted my energy again. So I'm happy that he got it done. And he's a real contender in that division. And I think that he's the future threat for Ilya Taporia. That is the guy that will give Ilya the toughest test. Like, you got to put someone in there that can knock Taporia the fuck out. And it could be a, a tall, rangier guy like Lopez. He called out Evloev, huh? Or Evloev called him out. Yeah, let's, let's, let's pump the brakes there, Evloev. You're no longer relevant after that robbery, okay? Not that Evloev robbed Yusuf or robbed uh, Lopez, but he didn't even win his last fight. Let's pump the brakes on that. But I think Diego finishes Evloev in a rematch. I honestly do. I think that on the feet, early, I don't think Evloev's taken those shots again. But you never know. He has a good chin. Gonna have a shower. We'll be back after the home fight. Oh, is home fighting next? Oh, no, man. Oh, shit. Is home up next? Oh, man. It's Holly home. That's rough. Serbia's done. Check is back. Let's go, Yuri. I'm hyped for Yuri. And I trust in him. I think he's going to get it done. Loser of Giga and Allen. Is Giga and Allen even a fight? Did they make that? Let's look at Big Marcel. I don't see it. I don't see that they made that yet. Fuck. Why did this guy just quit like that, bro? Ridiculous, man. Just ridiculous for quitting. Fuck. I'm still kind of pissed about the Turner loss, but it is what it is. And I'm not emotionally connected to that fight at all. I'm just a little bit upset that I didn't get that right. And I was right there, guys. I had the knockdown. I just needed the follow-up shots. I don't know what I was thinking, man. <laughs> uh, Card has lived up to the hype so far. 100%. Amazing fight so far outside of the uh, WMMA one. That's the only one that kind of sucked. But every other fight's been great. Here we go. WMMA. Second to last one on the card. Holly looks like hot garbage. She doesn't look that bad. Holly looks pretty good for her age, honestly. She looks pretty decent for her age. But they're showing some kind of a promo. All right, guys, taking an apple break. I don't understand the point of this promo. Just a sentimental UFC video. Soy apple. That was a soy. I was eating an apple soy. Marty Lewis promo. They should show one. This is kind of just out of nowhere. I don't understand why they're putting this on. I don't know what this is for. Maybe it's like for a new TV show or something. Maybe they're doing a, a UFC sentimental moments show. <laughs> Uh, 
Lopez murders Volk. I don't mind that take. I think that that could happen, man, but they're never going to fight. Unless Volk sticks around way too long, which he might actually, but Lopez not getting any, he's not getting anywhere near Volk. He's going to have to get through me first, bro. He's not getting close to Volk. Oh, the Tough series. Yeah, fuck Tough. What, what's her name? Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso? Who the hell would ever watch that? Like, honestly, the fact that they even put that on shows that there's some real brain-dead people that are working for the UFC. They've got to have a total shift of people that are working there, man. Total change of employees. I would never go on tough. Just a total waste of time for any fighter, too. Why do you want to live in a house? You can't even... Con you, you want to live in a house with 40 other guys where you can't even connect with your family and you got to be all hush-hush and secretive as if, you know, anyone actually gives a fuck about the results on the show. This is not 2008. No one really cares about the results on the show. For a couple of catty arguments from Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso, a couple of, like, you know... Tough cookie stares. If you watch Tough, you're a sucker this year. You are a sucker for watching Tough this year. Unless you just want to watch the fights. But even still, at this point, if you even think that the fights are worth watching, if you even think that it's worth checking out the prospects on Tough, then I don't know what to tell you, but they're not the cream of the crop, okay? The commercials during the fights that the UFC put on are so overly dramatic. I know, bro. Judo! Let's see if they show one of my highlights. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, there's this idea that, that the gold medalists in Judo are good in W Judo, in women's Judo. But it's funny because I could easily become a gold medal right now. I could win the gold medal right now in that weight class. So... Thank you for the $5. Yeah, man, they, they go a little bit too crazy with these commercials, but they got to fill the time, don't they? Let's hope Kayla Harrison has a entertaining first round finish. Or, you know, I just want to be put out of my misery fast with this one. There's no way Kayla Harrison could take me down. I know she's got the skills, but I think I'm a bit too much of a brick wall. I have a mean scramble when it comes to takedown defense, guys. Really good underhooks, great scramble. Guys, right, can we chill with the spam? I'm rooting for Yuri too, but can we chill with the spam? She does look like a girl version of Jesse on fire, doesn't she? Kayla? Very much so. She looks like a, a shredded Jesse on fire. Jesse, Jesse on sister. But someone was just mentioning DC. Someone said DC is being sued or there's like a divorce going on. With a domestic battery incident? Is that what you're saying? I don't believe that. Hey, Lucas, I'm warming up for my fight. Good luck, Calvin Cater in the chat. <sighs> she looks like Jesse, but human. You think Jesse's the one that looks not human? I mean, they both kind of look uh, extraterrestrial. At least Jesse with the high blood pressure. <laughs> with the red skin, high blood pressure. I got my remember when Kayla said she could beat Izzy comment. Yeah, get ready to spam it. Even if she wins. Even if she wins a stinky decision. That's what you got to spam. Did she actually say she could beat Izzy? That's a disgrace. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get a cup of coffee, guys. I'm going to need my cup of coffee for this one.
have a cup of coffee and I have what might be considered the most soy snack in Lucas Tracy MMA history, guys. It's a bad one. It's really, really bad. But, you know, I thought I thought I, I looked pretty decent at the store. It was nostalgic. Brought me back to the old days. Oh, trust me. You can hear me, dude. I know you guys are trolling. I have a cheese stick. <laughs> I have a cheese stick. A mozzarella cheese stick. Which may be the soyest thing anyone can eat as an adult. But I'm going to fucking eat one. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to freaking take it off. Okay, actually, you know, you know, just have a have a piece of cheese. I have real cheese inside, but I thought these would taste good. These would bring me back to the old days. I'm not muted. I know I'm not muted. Mmm, this is excellent. Thank you for the five dollars, fam. God, hey Lucas, I tried to buy the cookbook, but you sent me gay porn. What are you talking about? Uh, you sent me some of your homemade gay porn. Okay, that doesn't exist. Not judging, but I only wanted the book. All right, well, you have the book. I highly doubt you have whatever that was because that doesn't even exist. So thank you for the five bucks. Holly Holm is fighting next, guys. Kayla's looking like Marcus Phoenix. All right, let's look that guy up. Marcus Phoenix. No, dude, not like that. That's kind of like me. I kind of look like Marcus Phoenix. The dude's kind of masculine, bro. I'm not going to lie. He's got a very Chad-like look. I think I look like him. What do you guys think? There's a little bit of a resemblance. I'm not going to lie. A little bit. Tiny bit of a resemblance. Me and this, this Chad, Marcus Phoenix. Is that him? Is that the guy you're talking about? Uh, Taporia will run away from Lopez. I don't think so. He better not, man. He better not try to, you know, scatter off at 155 when Lopez is the number one contender. You, you better not do that. We don't need him scurrying away from his real contender. What does getting love from the fans mean to you? It means a lot. Thank you for the two bucks. Lap hugs. I appreciate the dono, man. I think I look like this guy a little bit, right? A little bit of a resemblance. Ah. <sighs> Fuck, bro. I'm not excited for this fight, but I'm excited for the opportunity to clown the fact that the UFC put this on the card. That's what I'm excited for. They didn't even show the walkouts. That's crazy. Why don't they show the walkouts, man? We need Yuri's walkout. They better show Yuri's walkout. We cannot miss that. All right, guys, last shitty fight of the entire night, although there is still Zhang Wei Li and Yan Jiao Nan, which is not a shitty fight, but it might be kind of shitty. Last not hype at all fight of the entire night. But you know what? It might be good. Let's see what Kayla Harrison's all about. The hill is going down. Shama. Hey, thank you for the five bucks. Alex Poetan Pereira. Good luck tonight, man. Good luck. I'm, I'm sure you're warming up backstage. Thank you for the five bucks. Means a lot that, that you would stop and, and watch the chat or watch my live stream. Here we go. Kayla Harrison versus Holly Holm. Let's see. What are we at? Two. Let's just do three hours. Thank you for the $2, Gunsen. AP weighed 232 pounds. I'm worried he will look too slow. Yeah, he looks massive, doesn't he? He looks like a pretty big guy, but I think he'll be fine. He probably weighed the same thing last time against Yuri, and he was totally okay. If he was 232 this morning, wait a second. If he was 232 this morning, he's probably going to be close to 240 in the cage. That is insane, dude. 
240 in the cage is fucking nuts for Alex Pereira. I guarantee he's going to be around that. Jamal Hill's probably going to be like in the high 220s, low 230s. I'm a little worried about the speed too. That's always been a concern for picking Pereira. Thank you for the $2, Harry Oatley. Bro, Marcus Phoenix, you haven't played Gears of Wars? I have not played Gears of Wars. I'm not a Gears of Wars fan. Okay, shit. The, the clock ain't even synced up. We're just going to wait. It's going to get to this time anyway, so we'll wait. We will wait. Dude, Kayla Harrison looks like Michael Chandler in there. This is ridiculous, man. This is insane. Let's see the striking from Kayla Harrison. Teep to the body for Harrison. I'll sync up the clock when we get there, guys. Hopefully, Kayla Harrison just puts, a, puts us out of our misery, but even if that's the case, we're still just going to get commercials, so it's not really going to get us that much closer to the next fight. Looking forward to the judo throw. There's the take to... Oh, you don't want to clinch with her. You don't want to clinch with her. What are you doing? You fool. Oh! Home reverses her. Big reversal for home. She's got Kayla Harrison in half guard. Nice, bro. Kayla Harrison's going to mog Holly. She just got reversed. But why would you fucking... Dude, this is why I pick against Holly Holm. She's going to be clinching with a gold medalist in judo. You can't pick someone going up against a gold medal in judo that has a clinch him up style. Thank you for the $7.99 Australian dollars. Can't see any Kayla in that Harrison, dude. I can't see any Kayla in that Harrison either, bro. She's, it's a man's world. It's a man's world. <laughs> As a man's world. See, you guys are going to talk about the clock, right? Oh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. All right, now we're synced up. Now we're good. Now we're good. And here we go. It's going to get boring. Time to play UFC 4. It's a man's world. These two should be wearing life alert necklaces. Life alert necklaces. What are you talking about? I get Holly home. She's old. But nice elbows from Kayla. She's able to throw her elbows again. How would it feel to throw elbows in front of the king of elbows? Oh, yeah. She's whooping her ass. She's whooping her ass. This is Habib. Oh, Joe Rogan's literally going to cry. I can't wait till Joe Rogan cries. Holly Holm. Oh, there's uh, Alexa Grasso. Alexa Grasso looking pretty good, man. I'm not going to lie. Thank you for the two bucks. Nabby, Moicano versus Hooker on a card with Gyno Bender. I'd love, yes, perfect. I love that matchup. Great matchup. Although Hooker has been calling out Benoit St. Denis. Big elbows. Nice. Dude, she's a fucking roid head. She is a roid head cheat. She's on steroids. I'm picking her to win. I mean, obviously, you got to go with her to win. Hey, thank you for the five bucks. Yuri Prohaska. I appreciate the five bucks. I don't know how to read this. Um, what do Japanese people say to say hello? Um, not ni hao. That's Chinese. Arigato. Arigato. Right? I think it's arigato. Arigato. Yuri Prohaska. I didn't know you. Uh, damn. Yuri thinks he's Japanese. Interesting. I appreciate that. Oh, konnichiwa. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I got it wrong, bro. Konnichiwa is Japanese. Arigato is goodbye. Arigato is goodbye. Oh, no. Arigato is thank you. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Mom, sorry. Sorry for, my, for any of the Japanese watchers at home. I apologize. I, I butchered that one. Damn, Holly's not even cut up yet. This is crazy. How's the weather like in Vegas? Weather feels good, man. But it feels really good. Thank you for the two bucks. I appreciate that. This is a good performance from Kayla, though. It is it is a good performance. You know what? Should we really hate on Kayla? She's on sauce, but if she's going to make it entertaining and actually land ground and pound shots and, like, totally destroy people, I don't mind there being one berserker in the WMMA division that's just on sauce. I don't mind that. Whatever makes it entertaining. 
whatever works. She is on a cycle to make weight, just like the bodybuilders. Yeah, she probably took a fat burner or something like that. Or yeah, I don't know. Maybe she's just a diuretic. Not a fat burner. I don't think she would take a fat burner. But she probably took a diuretic. But, hey, it didn't come up in a test. She didn't pop for anything. So, who knows? Maybe she hit it real well. The real Habib. Yes! Yeah! This is what we need to comment. Listen, I love Habib, guys, and I hate the hate that he gets. I hate the hate that he gets, but if Kayla Harrison wins tonight, we need to start flooding the comment sections with the real Habib, at least tonight. The real Habib. Honestly, why not have a new Ronda Rousey? Why not? Eventually, she's probably going to get KO'd, right? Oh, but she might be the champ now that Nunez isn't around. But I don't mind it. I don't mind drumming up some hype. Let, let's do a real Habib moment if she wins, which she is going to win. 1-0, Kayla Harrison. Wait, so what are my picks looking like? We're 2-2. Two two. We're about to be 3-2. Nice. We're about to be 3-2. and two. Sick. And I almost picked Holly Holm. Watch Dana give Mr. Harrison a title shot after this. He should, though. Like, listen, I don't mind Kayla Harrison getting big fights in the division that's just totally void of big fights i don't mind it i actually kind of like that ufc 300 has been canceled due to waylee having staff shit man i don't know how i'm gonna sleep at night knowing that zhang isn't gonna fight that's pretty rough bro i don't know if i can watch the card anymore i wouldn't mind kayla harrison getting a big fight after this a title fight against juliana pena let's do that Let's just strip whatever her name is, not stripper like that, but let's strip the title off of Raquel Pennington and let's have a, a fight between Kayla Harrison and Juliana the Loudmouth Pena. It'll be a fun buildup. You could have it co-main event to card. But she is so obviously on the sauce. I mean, it is insane, dude. She's more jacked than most bodybuilding heads. And a big takedown for Kayla Harrison. Big takedown. All right, let's see if she can get a submission. Honestly, just put us out of our misery. Just tap. Just tap. This is like a guy, bro. This is like a guy back. Holy shit. She looks like Ryback. She's like the football player. Uh, I don't know. I don't think she's actually a guy, but my goodness, dude. I'd love to see photos of uh, her before she got on sauce. And she's in mount. Great trip. Great trip. She's good. You, you got to give her that. She is good. Kayla Harrison judo. Let's look at Kayla Harrison judo. She's 33. Are judokas known for saucing up? Like, are, are the Olympics filled with saucy athletes? I guess they are, right? Yes! Yes! She gets it done by submission. Let's go. When I was looking up Kayla Harrison before the sauce. <laughs> Let's look at what Kayla Harrison looks like before the sauce. Before the sauce is what I'm looking up. Oh, it just shows her photos of her looking sauced. Kayla Harrison before. Yeah, she used to look like not nearly like she does now. Oh, I guess it was just the added fat. Oh, this is what Kayla Harrison looked like before the sauce. <laughs> Guys, this is what it was. I'll show you. This is Kayla Harrison before the sauce. Looks a little bit different. Still kind of jacked. Still kind of jacked. But this might literally be before the sauce. You never know, though. Weight bully just like Habib, just like Habib too. We should say real Habib on Instagram. Yes, dude, we should start commenting that. What do you guys think? Should we make a real Habib wave tonight? The real Habib. <laughs> I, I can't wait for other um, content creators to, to go out and talk about that in their video. She's not the real Habib. She's on sauce. Let's call her the real Habib. All right? As soon as the UFC makes that Instagram post, I'm going to it and I'm saying the real Habib. Okay? Because she's going to get tons of hate for subbing, um, you know, everyone's favorite preacher's daughter, right?
And I like Holly Holm too, but still. All right, we're going to go to Instagram. Amazing. Great performance from someone that obviously had the, the size advantage, the sauce advantage, the weight advantage, everything. There's a public court proceedings online. Just look up Daniel Cormier, Selena Cormier. Okay. Um, court records? Holy fuck. Filed for divorce. Holy shit. When was this? Filing date? March? That was 2023. They're still together. They are still together, dude. That is kind of crazy. Wow. Wow, that is crazy. Request for order domestic violence. Holy shit. I don't know. Is that true? Let's hear what she has to say. Love from Australia. Hey, shout out to Wayne, dude. All the Aussies that are watching this. Shout out to all the Australians that got called out by Adesanya yesterday. But shout out to all the Aussies. She's pandering to the crowd, saying it's an honor to share the octagon with Holly. Trying to get on everyone's good side. All right, let's see if, if she calls out Juliana Pena. She should call for a title shot. I think she's a good addition to the UFC. She's actually entertaining. I don't mind it. Good performance from whatever her name is, uh, Kayla Harrison. Nice. She's the Michael Chandler of WMMA. Fuck, it does suck that we don't have Nunes to knock her out, though. It does suck, right? Even though I want her to beat Raquel Pennington, and I kind of want her to... Well, I kind of want her to lose to Juliana, though. It does suck that we don't get the Sierra KO'd by Amanda Nunes. Amanda should come back, bro. That's the fight. That is the fight, because look at her. She's on sauce. She looks like Michael Chandler. She's going to run through every girl that's on the roster. They're Donald Cerrone. Cowboy Cerrone with hair. He got a hair transplant. Holy shit. Showing off the hair. All right, guys, let's check the UFC's Instagram page. Uh, Instagram. Let's see if we can flood the comments yet. Let's see if they've made their post. How fast is the UFC? How fast are they? <laughs> yeah, they just posted it. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go. Here we go. We're, we're, we're making, we're making it. We're getting it done. Oh, wait, no, we can't show that. We can't show the actual finish. We can't show the actual finish. The real Habib, the real Habib. Everyone like my post. <laughs> Everyone go to this and like it on Instagram. All right, guys, you know the deal. The real Habib. Flood the comment section. <laughs> the Habib fans are going to hate it. The hardcores are going to hate it. All right. Go ahead. Check it out. The real Habib. Leave a comment. And, and, and I know there's going to be some people shitting on my comment. So make sure to say, yeah, like she's actually even more skilled. Say that. Say like, leave a comment on my comment. That says, and she's even more skilled too, which is crazy, bro. Say, the craziest thing is she's even more technical as a grappler. The real Habib. Nice, 72 likes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. All right, we got to be serious when we say that from here on out. That's the only troll one I'm ever going to do. From here on out, every one of the real whatever has to be serious because that was a troll. I don't want to make it like a troll thing. But I know Kayla's about to get some shit for being on the sauce. And you know what? Now that I think about it, it's kind of good that she's on the sauce. Because we need something entertaining right now in that division. She could have called out Chandler. She should have called out Chandler. That'd be a competitive fight. I, even, I might even pick Kayla. She's bigger than him. And stronger. 
Uh, can you beat Kayla? Okay, all jokes aside, yes. How tall is Kayla Harrison? I think I could beat Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison, height. I'm guessing she's 5'3". She's 5'8". Oh, she's not 5'8 at all. There's no way she's 5'8". Holly Home height. How tall is Home? I'm guessing Home is like 5'9". Dude, Holly Holm is listed at 5'8", too. There's no way Kayla Harrison's 5'8". Kayla Harrison's more like 5'5". Five five. If Holly Holm is 5'8", Kayla Harrison's 5'5". Five five. So, you're asking, can I beat someone that weighs like 165 pounds that's a girl? Yes. You ain't beating Kayla? How's she going to beat me? She's going to have to get a hold of me, which she's not doing, because I'm, I'm literally slugging out a 1-2. Nasty 1-2 to right down the pipe. She's, she's a judoka. She's going to have to get a hold of me. I've done judo back in the day. Fuck, fuck grappling. I'm actually being serious right now. No, she's not. She has nothing for me to fear on the feet. All I have to do is throw out. No, I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. All I have to do is throw out a one-two. There's nothing. That, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not losing to any WMMA fighter with, with striking that bad. There's no WMMA grappler on this planet that could beat me in a fight. Zhang Wei Li is the only one that could maybe. Zhang Wei Li, I would say Amanda Nunes. They have a decent shot. Because at least they have something on the feet, and I could get like calf kick TKO'd by Zhang Wei Li. Or at least she could calf kick me and then, you know, make something happen, but um, not Kayla Harrison. But I wouldn't want to spar Kayla Harrison. I wouldn't want to spar Kayla Harrison, guys, just because um, I, I don't want to spar a woman. That's just kind of silly. Post deleted. The UFC deleted the post? No, they didn't. They did not delete the post. We have 187 likes. The real Habib. <laughs> the better Habib. She's better, to be honest, bro. You guys got a comment? Dude, she's actually even more technical, man. Nice. Someone said she's even more technical. <laughs> Another B-League fighter comes in and beats a top UFC-ranked fighter. No, I know what to say. PFL's actually better, though. When the UFC posts again, let's see. Let, let's see if the UFC thing else. Let me refresh the UFC page on Instagram. All right. Well, they didn't post anything new, but maybe we should start saying the PFL's actually better. Holy shit. We should start saying that. Um, drop the link. Just look up UFC Instagram, and it's the most recent post. And you'll see my comment. Can't find it. Did they delete it? You get so wrecked, I would not get wrecked. And they're showing Gagey highlights like we haven't seen this a million times. The head kick KO over Poirier. We've seen it. We do not need to watch it again. I swear Jarzinho would KO every single fighter on this card stiff. No. Jarzinho is not beating either Jamal Hill or Alex Pereira. I don't think so. He's too fat. Joe Rogan is wearing five-inch lifts. Is he? Was he taller than Kayla Harrison by a lot? I got to look at the most recent fight interviews or post-fight interviews. I haven't noticed that. But I know Rogan is, is uh, certainly not 5'8". All right, let's look. Bobby Green interview. Rogan, I don't know. How tall is Bobby Green? Bobby Green's like 5'9", right? So Rogan do doesn't look that tall next to Bobby. I don't think he's wearing his 5-inch lifts. He might be in like, you know, 1 or 2-inch lifts. Um, Lucas versus Kayla, who wins? Lucas versus Kayla, who wins? Let's do a poll. I think I easily win that, but... I know some people are going to say Kayla just to mess with me. But some of you guys might actually think she wins. Lucas. Kayla. Thank you for the $2, Angel Felix. Thank you for the $2, Priceless Irving. Kayla versus you would be Max versus Cater. Cater is Max. Or Kayla is Max. Y you guys have not seen her striking. Like, did you watch her throw punches in that strike in that fight? She's got no speed on the feet. She does not know how to strike, how to throw hands, and she is not powerful 
She might be strong. She might look like Chandler, but she is not a powerful puncher. I'll tell you that. That's the thing. Women just do not have the same power as men. They just don't. Just watch the video of Lucas muzzing like Ziz. Nice. There's Holloway and his chick. Holloway's chick is pretty fine. I got to admit it. She is a good looking girl. Uh, no wonder Ali was glazing her even more than Habib. Yeah, well, Ali's a simp. So there's that. No, Habib's obviously way better than Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison is essentially a problem against the worst division in MMA. Like a regional scene, a regional heavyweight men's division is better than that skill for skill. All right. That's like the heavyweight division for women's MMA, but women's MMA is even worse than heavyweight. Kayla's still good, though, for, for what division she's in. Uh, she physique mogs you and height mogs you. She does not mog me height-wise. She Honestly, she looks leaner than me right now. I'll, I'll give her that. She uh, shred mogs me. She lean mogs me, but she does not height mog me. Kayla Harrison's like 5'5", five five, bro. I'm 5'8". Solid 5'8". People say I lie about that. I would never lie about being 5'8". If I were to lie, I'd say 5'9". I'd say 5'10", man. I'm a tall 5'9". If I were lying, I would at least say 5'10". I try to be humble with the 5'8". A nice, meek 5'8". Uh, Abdul Banat predicted John Bones Jones as heavyweight champ, but only losing to two of the heavyweights. What were the heavyweights? Interesting. What were the heavyweights? Cain Velasquez? Brother, Cain Velasquez is going to be too much. Is that what he was saying? I think he's he's going to beat all these guys, just not Cain, brother. They were glazing Cain because Cain trained at AKA. Cain Velasquez, listen, I, I like Cain Velasquez. I actually do. I do like Cain Velasquez a lot. But I think he was a little bit overrated. I think a lot of the fighters from back in the day were overrated. You just have to watch old fights if you really want to get a good sense at you know, the guys back in the day just were not anywhere close to being as skillful as the fighters today. And I think I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but just go back and watch some of them and you'll be pretty shocked. Heavyweight maybe hasn't changed as much as the other divisions, but Velasquez is certainly a not as good as people hype him up to be. But yeah, did Kane's trial start? Kane's trial? I Didn't they kind of move past that I mean I would imagine that was like two years ago I would think that by now like the conclusion is already done but shout out to Kane bro fucking justice for Kane man seriously um Kayla masculine mogs you no she doesn't dude come on dude are you kidding me have you seen me that's the thing people see me behind the computer and they just think that oh this guy's this guy's not actually that tough or whatever but it's not until you get in person with a guy like me that you understand, wait a second, there's actually something different going on here. There's something going on here, right? And it's the denseness of me. I'm a little bit denser in real life, uh, a little bit more chiseled in real life. Things stand out, neck pops out a little bit more. It's a little bit different. So I, I think that you guys have a false idea of who, who you're really dealing with just because I'm the nice guy on the live streams and it's not all friendly in real life. Now I'm a nice guy. But not really someone that you would ever uh, pick a fight with. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. I don't mean to sound like Jesse on fire, but it's, you know, I'm being honest. Uh, Aljo versus Sadiq. That's a good question. Probably Aljo. I don't think Sadiq is good enough to beat him. Not because he just got knocked the fuck out, but just because uh, Sadiq's never really proven to have amazing takedown defense. And I'm joking, guys. I'm obviously not that big of a... A monster in real life. I'm about 5'8", but... You know, I am pretty dense. I am a pretty dense guy. You guys will see when I do a collab with Aljo and Marab. You'll see. I'm definitely going to be the biggest guy in the room. All right? I may wear my stilts. If, if I know that the heavyweights are going to be there, if I know that the wide men's are going to be there, I may rock in there with some lifts. I may wear some stilts. Okay? But if I know it's just going to be me, Aljo, and, and the camera guy and whatever... I'll go in there barefoot, chilling. I'll be comfortably taller, comfortably taller than those guys. 
You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, at extreme, at extreme Couture, I was training with the heavyweights. I, 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 was, uh, I was not wearing lifts, I'll be honest. That's why they were saying, this guy's small, brother, but strong, brother. But I'll make sure to wear lifts if Weidman's going to be there. <laughs> you can't get mugged on a you know, collaboration stream. That's going to be it. I'm going to do a collab with Mighty Mouse. I'm going to do a collab with Jessica Andrade, hitting pads with Andrade, kickboxing with Mighty Mouse, the nicest guy in MMA. And we're going to do a collab with Marab and Aljo. But if Strickland asks, if, if Weidman asks me for a collab, if Strickland asks me for, for a collab, I'm going to say, listen, you know, with all due respect, let's just do an interview online. Let's do a Zoom interview. All right, all due respect. We don't need to do a collab in person. <laughs> so in every single collab, I will comfortably be the biggest guy. All right. I'll even, I'll even go out there and, and mog some of the 5'10 guys because you know the 5'10 guys in the UFC lie about their height. Okay. You know they lie about the height. No, I'll go out there. I trust in my density maxing. I'll stand. I'll go. I'll go band for band with any of these guys. I trust in my density maxing. Maybe I don't want to be next to you know the heavyweights like Aspinall, but I don't mind training with uh, Chandler Cole. I don't mind doing that. See this show neck. This is basically this is me naturally. This is me naturally. This is how I stream. I try to be professional, but naturally. It kind of just sinks back into this. So, um, goofy motherfucker, what are those balloons? What balloons? Oh, these? That's just what happens when I put these up on the stream. I don't know why it's not happening right now. When I go Zhang Wei Li mode. Yeah. Um, if you want to be crazy, listen to the stream. Okay. Uh, you're built like Duran Wynn. I'm, I, I'm not built like Duran Wynn. Duran Wynn has a weird build. No, there's another guy that DC trains. <laughs> what is that game where it's like, you know, like the little egg things, the little egg women, where, where you go, you know, layer after layer after layer? What, are, what is that thing called? DC has one of those at AKA. <laughs> But he has it with people. He has him, then Duran Win, and then this little guy that he trains with, the coach that he trains with. What's this game? The, the Russian dolls. Yeah, the Russian dolls. I mean, a very easy answer. DC has a Russian doll system at his gym. If you guys know what I'm talking about, I'll show you what I mean. So these are the Russian dolls. DC has one of these at his gym. I'll show you exactly what I mean. He has like multiple archetypes of his build. All right. I don't know who this guy is that DC trains with, but he always has this small guy at AK that he like beats up in his sparring sessions for, for no reason. One of his training partners, Daniel Cormier training coach. Let's just look up coach. Who is DC's coach, bro? Yeah. <laughs> this guy. This is him. The guy that DC is always whooping up. See what I mean? You guys know what I'm talking about. And then he's got Duran Wynn, who's kind of in the middle. But DC's been giving this guy a hard time. This guy. He's always whooping his ass, bro. Gagey has one of these guys, too. A lot of fighters, they have like a... They have a, a side show or a sidekick. A lot of these fight. Gagey has a sidekick. DC has a sidekick. Imagine being someone's sidekick, bro. <laughs> Imagine being a UFC fighter's sidekick and they get to whoop your ass in all the vlogs. That would suck. Side piece. Anyway, here we go. Calvin Cater versus Al Jermaine Sterling. Let's get it. Here we go, guys. Fighting. Kayla 10 8 aura mogs you at a presser, son. Not at all, bro. Not at all, man. Thank you for the two bucks. Music. I appreciate that. Here we go. This is big. Three and two. Can we go 
four and two. Can we start to separate ourselves from the pack? The rest of MMA YouTube. Let's go, guys. Calvin Cater, Aljamain Sterling. Aljo looking a little bit watery. Looking a little bit watery. Calvin Cater looking lean and mean. And here we go. Round one. Low kicks from Aljo. Aljo's looking big, though. He's actually looking big now. Now that he's standing right in there with Cater. At least his legs. Nice knee stomp from Aljamain Sterling. Let's see if he can bring up that 135-pound speed. But Calvin Cater, it's only a few seconds until we find out more about that takedown defense. Calvin Cater is looking to get that jab going. Aljo, faint and low. But let's see if Aljamain's takedown accuracy can be improved in this weight class. Oh, big shot from Aljo. Big right hand from Aljo. Four minutes and 16 seconds on the clock. Nice shot from Cater. Body shot. Let's go, Aljo. Nice jab from Cater. Solid jab from Cater. Cater fainting at him. Aljo, I'm telling you, he's going to shoot a takedown soon. Head kick from Cater. Let's see how that injury holds up on the first takedown attempt. Knee stomp from Aljo. That's good work. Stomp on the knee. Here comes the first takedown attempt. Shucked off. Get out of here. Shucked off. Easily. And here comes a Calvin Cater 1-2. Here comes a Boston Strong 1-2. Big overhand from Aljo. But that power is just not there. But he's got to be careful. Calvin Cater is going to learn from Jalen Turner. He's probably watching that in the back room. Nice leg check from Calvin Cater. Cater is being very patient, which is good. Which is good. You, you want to wait for the takedown attempts. You want to get in the groove. Stuff the early ones, and you start to run away with the momentum. Nice kicks from Aljo. He's winning this fight at range. Nice jab from Cater. Caught Aljo coming in. Two minutes and 54 seconds on the clock. Another jab. Here comes the takedown attempt. Here it comes. Let's see what Cater can do. Is he going to balance on that leg? But Aljo's really looking to take him down. Big body shot from Cater. Big body shot from Cater. And Aljo's got him. And Aljo's got him. And Aljo's got him on the ground. Two minutes, 36 seconds. Fuck. Oh my gosh, man. Now Aljo has him down. Shit, dude. Let's see if Cater can get up. This is a big moment for Cater. It's going to be hard to control these bigger guys. Let's see. This is a big moment. This is a big moment. Is Aljo going to rush it or is Cater going to come on strong? And Cater's going to come on strong. He's going to give up his back and Cater's going to give up his back. Fuck. Two minutes on the clock. Shit, guys. But Aljo ain't going to do shit with this. I'll tell you that much. Cater's getting right back up. Cater's getting right back up. Let's see if Aljo goes for the submission. Let's see if he takes the risks. Little pit pat shot from Aljo. Aljo's definitely winning the round. Minute and 43 seconds on the clock. Aljo's winning this round. Shit, I should have picked Aljamain. Hey, Cater gets up. Nice. And Aljo takes him down again. Shh. Aljo's really looking for the back, but great defense from Cater. Cater's right in front of his coaches. And Aljo takes him down again. Another takedown, and he's looking for the back. Fuck. All right, let's just hope we don't see a... Uh... We need to get this one right. Cater has to stay off the fence. Aljo versus Volk is the fight we need. Nice! Nice! Cater's up! Spinning elbow from Aljo, bringing out that creativity. Big body kick from Aljo. But Aljo is, is going to get some confidence knowing he took down Cater. But Cater's up! This is good work for Cater. Cater's up! That's going to let him build some confidence. Oh, brutal stop from Aljo. But he's not stomping on the injured knee of Cater. It's that rear knee that Cater injured a few years back. Nice spinning attack from Aljo. Cater's being really reserved. He's not looking that great. 
Another takedown attempt. Cater shucks him off. Cater's stalking him down, though. He's just trying to find that chin, but Aljo has a great entry, and he takes Cater down. That's a round one for Aljo. Very fast is Aljamain Sterling. Good round for Aljo. Really good round for the former champion. I'm going to give it a 1-0 to Cater just because I, I really liked his ability to get up to his feet. And I'm going to give him a bit of a pity party round. But good round for Aljo. Really good round for Aljo. I might give that round to Cater just because he did work his way up to his feet. That's a big win for him too. And Cater's coming off of the injury. So seeing him work his way up to his feet is a good look. I'm joking. Fuck. Good round for Aljo though. Let's, let's try not to cope. Let's try not to cope. So much for the takedown defense. He's never had someone spam him against him, so you know what? So much for the takedown defense against a, a guy that's actually grappling. And you know what? Aljamain Sterling, that bantamweight skill. I'm, I gotta start picking these guys that move up a weight class. I gotta start picking these guys that move up a weight class. Bro, can you explain density maxing? Thank you for the $2. Um, density maxing is basically getting as big as possible without putting on sloppy weight. So putting on as much muscle as possible, not being afraid to put on some fat and being explosive. You gotta be explosive, fast twitch. You don't need, you don't need to be worrying about put on, putting on fat, but you don't wanna get sloppy. It's about being fast twitch, having d a dense look, very dense look. Another low kick for Aljo, here we go, round two. Aljo's looking good. He's looking confident. And another takedown. If this, if he gets this takedown, it's over for Cater. If Cater can't stuff this, it's over. And Cater stuffs it. Nice. But Aljo's chain wrestling. He's in on the leg. Oh, I should have went with the former bantamweight champion, man. It's just Aljo's takedown accuracy never looked that good. And he's got Cater down. And now Aljo's kind of building into this fight with the flow state. <sighs> I should have went with the usual, you know, this guy's not really proven his takedown defense against many people, but still. Great work from Aljamain Sterling early. He certainly isn't going to get that bonus with this boring-ass performance, but either way, right now, this is good work for Aljo, and I'm happy to see him winning this fight. Another L pick. Yeah, I mean, the fight's not over, but... Certainly isn't a dominant performance yet, but, you know, Aljo's doing his usual thing. He's making it work in his Aljamain Sterling way, which is fine because he's winning, but it's not exactly um, a fireworks performance. I wouldn't say that. Cater's up. Cater's up. Hey, Aljamain usually controls people on the ground. Not tonight. Not with the brick wall Calvin Cater. Never pick someone I told you that was out for a while. I know that's the thing. That's the thing, man. We'll see how Yuri does, but if both of these guys lose, then that's even going to be more of a reason to just, again, you can't take the risk. But would a healthy Calvin Cater even be able to stuff these? Because Aljamain Sterling's the first guy to spam takedowns. Maybe it's just the fact that he's not used to dealing someone with someone that's spamming. Well, one thing's for sure, Aljamain Sterling is kissing the bonus goodbye. But you know what? What's he going to do? Go out there looking for the KO? He can't do that. So he has to fight like this. Is that Vivek? <laughs> Vivek watching a boring fight. Not happy. He's about to walk out the building. Either way. Let's see what Cal Calvin Cater can do. But Aljo's picking up confidence. The tide is really just in the favor of him. And Cater's just totally on the defensive. He's got to let his fucking hands go. We'll see. Cater has good cardio, though. He's shown that in the past. And now the fans are booing. Nice. Fans are booing, too. Nice. They disengage. Here comes another shot from Aljo. Here comes another shot from Aljo. Let's go, Aljo. There's some shots. Let's see if Cater can put him down. Boston versus New York. 
Let's see if Cater can pull out that Boston strong mentality. Al just looking a little bit labored. He's not used to trying to muscle around these bigger guys. He's looking a little bit labored, guys. But Cater's just not fucking throwing. Come on. Throw some shots. No. Beautiful takedown from Aljamain Sterling. Beautiful takedown. Nice double leg. This dude is not letting his hands go at all. Dana's on his phone. Yeah, I mean, we. you know what? We need to call for Aljo versus Volk. All right? That's going to be the benefit. I love the fact that Aljamain's going to win. I'm a fan of him. I'm happy he's going to bounce back with a win. I'm not the biggest fan of Cater. I just pick Cater. But we got to call for Aljo versus Volk. So this is going to be the move. After this fight, we flood the comment sections. <laughs> we flood the comment sections with Volk don't want the smoke. That's going to be it. Volk don't want the smoke. How about that? And you know Volkanovsky and his ego. You know Volkanovsky and his stood up for himself ego. He's not going to take too kindly to us saying that he's afraid of Aljo. Wait, does Aljo have his, does Aljo have, have a nickname? Volk is afraid of the funk. Let's say it. Let's start saying it, guys. Volk's afraid of the funk. All right? That's what we need to start saying. Let's make Volkanovsky call Aljo out. Or let's get the UFC to put Aljo in front of Volk. Because he's not doing this to Volkanovsky. Uh, I bet Dana's saying so glad Sean knocked him the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, this is a horrible look for Aljo on this card. But you know what? Listen, guys. Aljamain Sterling was never the most entertaining fighter. It's okay if he gets a win, a regular win. This is a good performance for him. He's bouncing off of a KO loss. He's up in a, in a bigger weight class. It's going to be difficult for him to finish these guys. And you know what? Aljamain Sterling's always been a bit of an overrated finisher, that is. Because we think about him submitting Corey Sandhagen. Who's he, admitted, who's he submitted since? Like, Aljo just doesn't ever really finish anyone these days. Couldn't finish Jan. Couldn't, oh, he finished TJ, but that doesn't really count. Couldn't finish O'Malley. Couldn't finish Shahudo. He would absolutely do this to Volk. Oh, yeah, he would absolutely do this to Volk. That's why we need to call for it. Thank you for the $2. I appreciate that. We got to call for it, guys, because I actually think Volkanovsky might like the idea of that fight. And you know what? Al Jermaine Sterling would love that fight, too, because it's against a big name. Let's make it happen on an Ilya Teporia undercard. Cater has not landed anything on the feet. That knee injury must have affected him psychologically. He's just scared shitless of the takedown. He has ring rust. He's not letting his hands go. I mean, this is a disgrace. If I'm his cornerman, I'm slapping him in the face. And I'm saying, let your hands go. Just, that's it. Let your hands go is the only message. Just throw your hands. You have nothing to lose. Just knock him out. Let your hands go. And he gets taken down. Of course. And Aljo's on the back. Nope. Calvin Cater, still balancing. Worst fight of the card. It's not even that terrible. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Aljamain, so I'm happy to see him winning a fight. But it is pretty boring compared to the others, right? It is technically the worst on the card. But yeah, people are going to crap on Aljo after this. As, you know, people should when there's a boring fight. Fair enough. Which is why we have to call for the Volk fight. Oh, yeah, the clock. I totally forgot about the clock. It's just pointless right now. It's not like we really need it. Aljo beats Volk. Careful what you wish for. 135-pound goat. He is not the 135-pound goat. And I think he may have a chance. No, he doesn't. Let's make no mistake about it. He, he wouldn't ever beat Volkanovsky. Let's not compare Calvin Cater to Volkanovsky, okay? He's not doing this to Volk. And Volk can outgrapple him. Volk would take him down easily. He's a brick wall. Yeah, but to be honest, um, I guess he's coming off of an injury. And I just didn't know how he would do against a guy that spams takedowns. So now we know that he is not a brick wall against people that spam takedowns. And I'm not saying that as a cope thing. I'm just being honest. Like, I assumed that maybe Aljo can take him down consistently because Cater hasn't dealt with someone that shoots a lot of them. But we'll see. Maybe Cater can stuff him as he usually stuffs takedowns, but I guess not. 
let's hear what the crowd is saying. What is he doing? He's just hugging him on the mat. And I guarantee Aljo's going to get pressed after this and he's going to go on his podcast saying, what do you guys want? You want me to stand with Calvin Cater? No, we want you to throw fucking ground and pound. Let your hands go. Look for a submission. Take a risk. There's $300,000 on the line. Like you could get the bonus. Chase after it a little bit. This is the epitome of I don't give a fuck about the fans. I don't give a fuck about being entertaining. I just want to get my little safe win money. But... This is the type of thing that will make it so the UFC never gives him a big fight. They will literally never give him a big fight. And they will do everything in their power to prevent him from getting a title shot. So, yeah, he's got no chance of becoming the 145-pound champion. He will never beat Taporia. He'll never beat Volk. He'll never even get those fights because he'll have to fight 30 times before. All he needs to do in these positions is throw some ground and pound. Just, you're taking him down at will. You know what? If I'm Aljamain, if I'm Aljamain Sterling, I'm even looking for 50 takedowns. Here's a nice takedown. Throws Calvin Cater on his head. I'm looking for multiple takedowns. That's more entertaining than whatever this is. Just keep taking him down left and right. It's a better look. People like that. I'm looking for ground and pound. Look at this. No ground and pound whatsoever. Just a sparring grappling match at your local jiu-jitsu dojo. Just a local jiu-jitsu class is what we're seeing here. That's what's going on. Little jiu-jitsu class. Good performance as far as showcasing a skill gap, but local jiu-jitsu class is what he's showing us. And no one likes watching jiu-jitsu. Name one 135-pounder better than Aljo. Um, Marab. Dominic Cruz. Better than him? What do you mean by better than him? Like, with a better resume? Dominic Cruz, easily. 100%. Aljamain Sterling is 1-1 one one with Piotr Jan, 0-1 oh to Sean O'Malley. He's got a fake win over TJ Dillashaw. And what else does he have? Am I missing something? A nice win over Sanhagen? I mean, he's got a decent resume. Let's not act like it's crazy, though. He's got a win over Sudo. Yeah, he's not the Bantamweight GOAT. And do not for a second, do not for a second tell me that winning in a 45-pound fight makes him any better at bantamweight. This means nothing for bantamweight. It just means that he got a 45-pound win. It's good for his resume, but he is not the 135-pound GOAT. Definitely not. Dominic Cruz is white. Okay, thank you for the two bucks. That, that literally doesn't make any sense. But thank you for the two bucks. There's a nice takedown for Aljamain. Calvin Cater looked like shit, showed some decent take. Nah, he didn't show shit in that fight. He didn't even let his hands go. Didn't even let his hands go, man. 300K coming his way. No, no way. I should have picked Aljo. Cater's coming off of the injury, coming off of the layoff, and Cater's never dealt with someone that could just spam takedowns like that. But you know what? I took the favorite... <laughs> I think Aljo may have been the uh, the favorite there, right? Who was the favorite? Minus 300K in Aljo's bank account. Dana's refusing to pay him after that one. The Ray Longo guys are the American Dagestanis. Spam takedowns, hold on for dear life, and win a boring decision, basically. Yeah, people crap on Dagestanis all the time for being boring, for being nut huggers, but it's actually people like Aljo... People like uh, Gamrot, Pantoja. The Dagestanis are the most entertaining grapplers. They're the grapplers that actually throw ground and pound, like Evlev. They're the guys that actually get finishes, like Makshev. Um, it's Charles Oliveira that is the anomaly from Brazil, actually. And Moicano's there, too. But he, he has a bit of a slow style. Aljo looks... Aljo's hiding his smile. He's hiding his smile. He's going to try to pretend that he's disappointed as if he couldn't have fucking thrown some extra ground and pound shots. I love this. Aljamain's doing the pander to the fans. I know it was a shit performance because I tried to do everything in my power to have the safest, least risky possible game plan. But you know what? 
I'm just going to pretend that I had no ability to change that and make it somewhat entertaining. No interview. No interview. Are you kidding me? Nice. Izzy and Drick is on, on camera. Nice. Ah, I wish we were to get a little bit of a moment there. Fuck that, man. Horrible fight, but I'm happy for Aljamain Sterling. Let's call for a Volkanovski fight. That's what we got to do. So, what do you guys think? Should we start saying uh, Volk is afraid of the funk? What do you think? Is Volk scared of the funk or not? I think he might be. Nice pick. I know. Not a good pick. We're 3-3 three and three on picks. Not great. We could have been 4-3. and three, Or, you know, we could have been 4-2. and two If Turner actually capitalized on that moment. But, yeah, it is what it is. What do we have now? Oh, shit. If Rakic wins, I'm going to be so pissed. Aljo is the king. Great performance from Aljo. And I'm not even bullshitting either. It was boring. Uh, I wish he threw more ground and pound. He's just not doing himself any favors. He could have done a little bit more. Like, that's the thing that's annoying about it. He could have just postured up at moments and taken a couple more risks. And people wouldn't be booing as much. He could have gone for the back. I mean, Cater was broken. Cater was... Just not really able to do anything. He was shit in his pants. Too reserved. Aljo had Cater in a place where he could do anything to him. But he decided to just hug on to him. We all know this is how Aljo fights. What did you think would realistically happen? What do you mean? I mean, I picked Cater. I thought Cater would land a good right hand and knock him out. I thought Cater would stuff the first couple takedowns and then KO him. I know that Aljamain fights like this. I mean, I've seen Aljo fight. It's just that I thought Cater would be able to actually throw punches, but he didn't throw a single punch. Either way, he threw a couple of jabs, but he didn't let go his right hand at all. Cater looked like garbage, okay? But Aljo did what he needed to do, and I like Aljo more than Cater. I'm not like a big Calvin Cater fan. I like Cater, but, um, you know, I, I know Aljo more, and Cater's like a, a bot, basically. So, yeah. And you say Aljo isn't a great grappler? Aljo is a good grappler. He is a good grappler. I'm just saying that his finishing ability on the ground is overrated. And that's clearer. It is very clear. I mean, he's only been able to finish Corey Sandhagen, and, and that's the last guy. TJ Dillashaw doesn't count. So, As an Aljo fan, I'm just a little bit disappointed that he couldn't have made it look better than that. A finish would have been great. More ground and pound. Risking submissions. But whatever. Good performance, and I fucking should have picked him, man. I should have picked him. I was just thinking that an Aljo win was too good to be true. But he got it done. Good for him. K Cater can't deal with guys that spam takedowns, and that's the one thing that I kind of look past is uh, Cater hasn't dealt with anyone that shoots as many takedowns as Aljo. He's only stuffed a takedown here and there, right? He's never fought like a grappler like that. We all know you're Aljo's biggest hater. Interesting, because I was rooting for Aljo to destroy O'Malley. I was picking Aljo and rooting for him to beat Cejudo. I was picking and rooting for Aljo to beat TJ Gillishaw. I'm happy that Aljo won. I'm literally telling you I like him more than Calvin Cater. So you're, you're literally just waffling about that. Featherweight grappling exposed. Yeah, in a way. I think we're really seeing a, a big skill gap between the divisions. We saw it at bantamweight with uh, Garbrandt getting exposed by a flyweight. And we saw it with Cater. But to be fair, Garbrandt and Cater are both known for having decent takedown defense, right? But they're not used to getting put in those positions on the ground. If Cater can get taken down, he can get controlled. No one's really been able to get him down there. Aljo's good enough to at least keep it. Uh, DDP wearing the African gear is a sin. No, it's not, bro. He's literally African. Like, he was born in Africa. Like, he's allowed to rep the continent in which he was born. God, I can't wait for Izzy to school him and continue to call out those horrible Australian fans. The horrible... <laughs> the horrible Australian fans that were rooting for Izzy when he was on the come-up, right? That Izzy was talking about, I love fighting in Australia when he was on the come-up. But as soon as they boo against him, it must be because... Of his complexion. That's bullshit. All right. I know you're trolling with that one. But thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Mavzar beats Lopez. Mavzar's good. But he did fight Lopez on a couple days notice. And um, Lopez kind of gassed out. 
And I don't know if he gasses out if he takes it on a full camp. Either way, Mavzar's good. I think he's underrated, but Lopez might beat him in a rematch. Lopez is going to be Tapuria's real test, but let's please, guys, let's call for Aljo versus Volk. Okay, you know what? Let's at least call for Aljo versus Volk. Okay? Let's go to the UFC's page. Aljo versus Volk. Aljo versus Volk. Make it happen. All right, I just left the comment. Aljo versus Volk. Make it happen on the UFC's page. Please leave a like, okay? Please leave a like on it, guys. Here. I'll show you. Aljo versus Volk. Make it happen. Here we go. Let's start spreading the news that that's what the fans want. Volk versus Lopez prediction. Right now, I actually would pick fucking Diego Lopez, bro. What's Volk going to do? Knock him out? Beat him up for five rounds? It gets risky because every round starts standing. Listen, I love Volk. He's my favorite fighter, but I don't want him to fight anyone that has that crazy type of power. And Diego Lopez is like the second or third heaviest hitter in that division. Diego Lopez, literally a, a top three heaviest hitter in that division. Him, Emmett, of course, Dan Ige's in the mix, but Ige's not putting people out like that quickly, right? Ige is a nice right hand, but not that quickly. So they better show us Yuri's walkout. They better, dude. Like this guy is known for having great walkouts, but of course they're showing us some bullshit commercial right now. Some sandwich commercial. Aljo beats Volk. Sorry, not sorry. Keep the same energy strike. I, I want you to spread the news, okay? Let's talk about it. Comment that everywhere. I don't mind that. I don't mind Aljo beats Volk. Let's start ramping up with that talk because I love it. Let's get it to Volk, all right? Like that, uh, that scene in Lord of the Rings. Let's start lighting the beacon of Aljo beats Volk so it can spread to Australia. Let's wake Volk up. Why do people shit on Aljo? Uh, what did Cater do? It's not about what did Cater do. It's just the fact that Aljo didn't take any risks and had a boring fight and could have maybe made it a little bit better with ground and pound and r took a couple of risks for submissions. But I'm happy he won. It was a good performance. He's coming off of a KO loss. If he loses that fight, his career is basically fucked. And Dana White already doesn't love him. The issue is that I think he could have easily still won and still took a couple of risks. That's the issue for me. Because even though losing would have been worse, winning a boring decision is not that much better. Especially if it was that boring. That was the worst one on the card. And Dana White's going to talk about it. Um, but I'm happy that Aljo got it done. And, you know, I'm a bigger fan of him anyway. So, good for Aljamain Sterling. It was a good performance. The fact that it's on UFC 300 makes it look worse because, you know, the expectations are so high for all the fights. And he just couldn't live up to it. I said this in my video yesterday. It's going to be rough for Aljo to get that bonus, just with his style anyway. But there were some good moments. There were some good spinning elbows, right? A couple of good moments from Aljo. A couple of good shots landed on the feet. The first round was entertaining. 291 likes. Nice. 291 likes on this already. Aljo versus Volk, make it happen. Yeah, Volk can't handle the funk. Sterling fights are official piss breaks. You know what? I, I, I still disagree with that. I don't think Sterling fights are piss breaks. I'd rather watch... Okay, what do you guys think? Would you rather watch a Sterling versus Cater type of fight with guys like Sterling and Cater? Or would you rather watch a decent striking match between two WMMA fighters. I would easily rather watch a stinky Sterling fight where the stakes are high and, you know, a win for either fighter is huge and we actually are invested in, in their careers versus a fight that means totally nothing. All right? If it's Joanna versus Zhang Weili, I'd rather that, but I, I still don't mind Sterling versus Cater. I don't think it was that bad. It was a little bit boring in the second round, but still, it wasn't that bad if you consider that the stakes were high. I'm not going to defend it and say it was a fun fight, though. 
Some of you guys are saying you'd rather see the striking. Back-to-back -back insane KO losses. I can see Aljo knocking him out on some fluky strikes. There's no way Aljo has anything to put Volk away. I think Volk outgrapples him. I actually think Volkanovski just reverses him and outgrapples him and beats his ass on the ground. If Jan can take him down and if Jan can outgrapple him, if Cejudo can take him down, I think... Oh, Yuri's staring him down. Okay, let's stop messing around. Let's stop messing around. It's, it's Yuri mode. Nice. Fighting. Here we go. We need this. We need this one. You wait. Champion and the number two ranked. One, two, three. We're three and three, I think, guys. Okay, guys, let's go. Here we go. Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. Last fight on the prelims. That's what you want, you Volk sexual. Thank you for the two bucks, fam god. Thank you so much. Here we go, guys. Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. Let's go! Let's go! Big leg kick for Rakic. Rakic looks insane right now. He's looking massive, dude. Rakic at least is like 15 pounds heavier than Yuri. But Yuri said he's bringing the violence this time. There's a nice jab from Rakic, but all he's got is that jab in the one, two. Let's see if he can land it and knock Yuri out. Good, strong kick from Rakic. Nice jab from Yuri. <sighs> Man, I'm worried for Yuri, dude. I'm worried for him. Rakic is looking awfully big and powerful right now, dude. Oh, big shot from Rakic. But I don't know if that technique is going to be good enough to trust in. See, that's that one, two from Rakic. That's that ugly one-two from Rakic. There's that jab from Rakic. But Yuri's confident. Yuri said he's going to talk to him in the cage. Yuri's in there. Oh, big jab from Yuri. Hard low kick. Oh, big shots. Yuri ate it, though. Yuri ate it, though. Nice leg kick from Rakic. Oh, what is Yuri doing, man? He's worrying me with his head movement. Yuri doesn't have the same freaking sting on his shots. Like, he's not got the same snap. I don't know. I'm worried right now that he's going to get tagged by, like, a nice, crisp, strong shot from Rakic. Leg kick's working well for Rakic, but they're certainly not Pereira's. Yuri is being very patient. What is he doing? He's trying to headbutt the ground with that? Very weird movements from Yuri, dude. He needs to get going. Three minutes and ten seconds. Nice shot from Yuri. They're talking about the ominous music from Yuri when he walked out. Thanks, UFC, for showing us the walkout. Really great stuff, UFC. Thank you so much. <sighs> Wish they were to show it. Oh, big low kick. Holy shit. That was a nasty low kick from Rakic. Destroying the legs of Yuri. Dude, Yuri... Oh, fuck. It's over. Yuri's done. Yuri's done. Yuri's done. He got injured with a low kick. He's done. He's screwed. It's over. It's over for Yuri. It's over for Yuri. Here comes the takedown. Wait, but Yuri's gritting it out. He's gritting it out. He's gritting it out. Yuri isn't throwing punches! Throw your hands! Come on! Throw a shot! Two minutes and uh, ten seconds on the clock. Dude, let's go! Where is the old nasty Yuri? Fuck, bro. He's been sitting there doing fuck all for three minutes. There's a nice shot from Yuri. Follow up, dude. He's throwing these, like, winging jabs. These, like, windmill jabs with no sting on them. Another heavy low kick. There's a leg kick for Yuri. Yuri's throwing that, that injured leg, I guess. Another leg kick from Yuri. Yuri's going to snap his leg, bro. <laughs> I swear, Yuri's the type of guy to get the most brutal injury in the octagon. Yuri's just going to literally snap his leg in half, bro. What is this, dude? There's a nice shot from Rakic. Nice right hand. But Yuri's not throwing punches. 
Let it go. Let the hands go. It's time for violence. <laughs> Come on. What is this guy doing? Yuri has a brain fart right now. What is this? <laughs> this is not the Yuri I remembered. There's something going on. Like, is he off the sauce? Is, is Yuri Prohaska just a completely different guy? This is the worst look I've ever seen. Holy shit. He's horrible now. What is he doing? Are you going to throw a punch? Hey, hey, throw a punch. Throw a real punch. There's a nice, there's a nice shot. He tagged Rackets with a big one. Come on. It'd be real nice if Yuri could actually throw. Oh, he hurt Rackets. Big shot. Yeah, let's go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Big shot from Rakic. Combo from Rakic. Big jab from Yuri. There we go. Come on. There's a, oh, but Yuri's chin is on display. Rakic doesn't have that Poetan hook. Doesn't have that Poetan hook. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. He's freaking gritting down. One big moment. 10-9 racket. Jiri is gritting down. His chin, when it's not in front of an Alex Pereira left hook, it's good. And you know what? Yuri ain't quitting to a fucking low kick. Nice, bro. I'm still worried for Yuri, dude. I'm still worried, but... First four minutes and 30 seconds of that round was an atrocity, bro. Y Yuri Prohaska is killing me with these, like, looping jabs and... These shots with nothing on it. Where is the old Yuri that used to throw everything into his punches, man? Come on. But Yuri's, <laughs> Yuri is going to have the Holy Ghost on his side. Wait, who's the ref? Boom. Big shot. What's with the fighters not committing? Yuri is throwing... I know, dude. Him and Kelvin Cater? Thank you for the 500 KES. Rakic's low kicks, they're not better than Poetan's low kicks, dude. They're strong, but they're not better than Poetan's. And Yuri is, 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 I'm telling you, Yuri's got the Holy Spirit on his side now. He will not lose this fight. There's, I'm not going to jinx him. Big shot. Look, Yuri eats it. Yuri eats it. One, two from Rakic. Yuri eats it. He's gritting through, dude. Rakic is not used to people taking these. Oh! Head kick from Yuri. On the guard of Rakic. Big one, two from Rakic. But Yuri's eating these. Yuri's eating these. Yuri Prask is in his face. Oh, he might break Rakic. He might break him now. Yuri might break him now. <laughs> Yuri doing the Irish jig. <laughs> he's fighting like he's doing an Irish jig. Thank you for the $2. Come on, man. Yuri, let the hands go. Oh! Big elbow from Rakic. Yuri is just chin fainting at him. I feel like Yuri's trying to break him with his toughness. He's just trying to show Rakic. <laughs> Yuri is more concerned with showing Rakic that he can't KO him than actually trying to fucking win. Come on, dude. Let go some shots. Where's the offense? Fuck. Dude, this, this little low kick with nothing on it. Another one with nothing on it. He's killing me right now, bro. Come on. Like, throw something powerful. Boo! He tagged him! You retagged him with a three-piece. Oh, good head movement from Yuri. Yeah. Great head movement from Yuri. Here we go. Here we go. Yuri Prask is going for it now. See, when he lets his hands go, it's money. Those long-rangey punches with sting on them is money. How good is Alex's left hook, dude? Because Yuri's been eating some bombs. These low kicks aren't doing shit. Oh! Head kick from Yuri. Oh, they're slugging! <laughs> Please, Yuri, don't risk it. Dude, Yuri might finish him. Please, knock this motherfucker out. Head kick from Yuri again. Dude, I'm telling you, we might break racket. Dude, don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. Ah, I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. I don't want to get my hopes up just for Yuri to get laid out. Boom! He rocked racket! One, two, and he's out! Get his ass out of there! Fuck this man 
down. Boom. Yes. Let's go. Big shots. He's got him out. Fuck this man up. Fuck that man up. Get that smoke out of here. Yeah. No. No. Don't engage in the grappling. <laughs> Don't engage. Big shots. Big shots from Yuri. Big shots from Big Yuri Prohaska. My heart's going crazy. Please finish. Fuck that dude up. Yeah. Fuck that man up. Beat his ass. Whoop his fucking ass. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's go. Yuri KO's him. Fuck yeah. Get that motherfucker out of there. Fuck Alexander Rakic. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Let's go. Woo. Let's fucking go. Yes. Dude, he got him. He looked like shit early on. It's that, it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Will and Yuri Prohaska to victory. Grin through the low kicks. Eating big bombs. Letting Alexander Rakic know there's nothing you can do to finish me. Ah, let's go. That, that holy ghost of Yuri Prohaska's back. Nice, man. Ah, I can die in peace, bro. I can die in peace after that. I'll sleep like a baby tonight. <sighs> and Yuri Prohaska with a vicious finish. Sonny Alexander Rakic. Oh, yeah. So much for the shit talk, man. The king of Europe. <laughs> Nice. Ah, nice, bro. I can finally sleep. Now all we need is Charles to win. Woo! Best fight by far. And you know what? Respect to Rakic. Serious. Respect to Alexander Rakic. I know I was just saying screw you, Rakic. But I'm hyped because Yuri won. Respect to Rakic because he actually tried to stand with Yuri. And you know what? He could have shot takedowns. He could have tried to stink it up. Rakic was going for the $300,000 $300, bonus. And he got KO'd trying. Yuri Prohaska, straight autism. Straight just grit. Like samurai spirit. I'm telling you, man. When Goddard doesn't fuck Yuri's fights up, he finds a way to win. For a guy with no chin, he has a great chin. Who, Rakic or Yuri? Oh, that feels great, man. <sighs> Thank goodness I can die in peace, bro. Yuri Brask is back. Most entertaining fighter on the roster by far. Best fight so far, easily. Easily with the light heavyweight power. <sighs> I'm so happy for Yuri. Me too, man. Yuri doing the Irish jig on Rakic's chitty chin chin. And, dude, he, I thought he was about to fumble to finish with the grappling. He still gets it done. That's what happens when you let Yuri bite down on the mouthpiece and be a warrior. Not that Rakic was on the verge of finishing him, but that is the definition. True. Thank you for the $2. The definition of biting down on the mouthpiece. 100%. Let's hear what Yuri has to say. That's what everyone wanted. Not the Serbians, maybe. The Serbians are upset tonight, but that's what the rest of the UFC fans wanted. Yuri Prohaska, thank you for the five bucks. Thank you so much. Arigato, brother. Yuri. Yuri's saying you didn't take me to her podcast. Dude, he's not inviting you on the podcast because that's the because like, we can't understand you, Yuri. All right? That's no disrespect, but... I don't think Joe Rogan's going to have him on. But he did have Yoel on. He did have Yoel on. But that was years in the making. <sighs> He's talking about the fake samurai stuff. True. I respect the conviction. You're starting to scream. He wants to face the champ no matter what. If Jamal wins, that's the fight to make. Nasty finish from Miri. The drunk master.
Nice. That's a performance bonus too. What do you guys think? I know uh, it's hard to beat Diego Lopez and it's hard to beat Aljo. It's going to be hard to beat Aljo, but that is a performance bonus of the night. All right. Wholesome Yuri Prohaska finish. Now all we need is Charles to smoke Armand and everything's all going to be good. And I think I was the only one picking Yuri. Was, wait, who picked Yuri? I'm pretty sure MMA experts picked Rakic. I'm pretty sure MMA Guru picked Rakic. Who did MMA Joey pick? I'm pretty sure Rigo picked Rakic. The question is, who did MMA Joey pick? All right. Maybe he picked Rakic. <clears throat> Does anyone know who Guru, uh, Bedtime picked Rakic? Bedtime picked Rakic? Guru picked Rakic? I mean, out of all the MMA YouTubers, who did a Joey pick? But um, he's got the aura. Yuri Prasca has the aura, and this is why he's one of my favorite fighters. Nice, bro. Yuri Prasca back in the win column. And he's not overrated. Now people are asking me who wins in a rematch, Yuri or Alex. Again, if Goddard lets that fight go on, maybe Yuri survives. I know that you could always get caught with the left hook. And if Yuri was eating those left hooks from Alex in this fight, if he was getting hit by a few of them, he probably would have maybe been KO'd, but... Against these other guys, that's a granite chin. Rakic was hitting him with some bombs, man. Some bombs. And you know how I was saying, he needs to let his hands go. He looks so slow throwing these looping jabs and these kicks with nothing on them. As soon as he starts letting go his hands, he starts rocking Rakic and, and taking it to him. He broke Rakic. He straight up broke him with his chin, with his toughness. Just sheer grit, man. Amazing performance. That's my favorite fucking light heavyweight of all time right there. Easily. Thank you for the $5, Board Finance. UFC should just forget Magomed, especially if Hill wins. Yuri is way more entertaining. Yeah, if Pereira wins, I'd say give Magomed a shot. He totally deserves it. If Hill wins, I mean, it's going to be rough to give that fight to Magomed when Yuri's right there. But you know what? I think Hill beats Magomed and Goliath. So I actually don't mind them giving Magomed the next title shot anyway. Yuri's not going anywhere. And that division isn't that stacked. Even if Jamal Hill wins or loses, it doesn't matter. They're eventually going to fight. So give Magomed his title shot. You know, Magomed has earned it. He deserves it. He has fought for the belt before. Let's not act like he hasn't, but still. Yuri's chin and will needs to be studied. I know. Insane. Yuri Prohaska is one of the most convicted men on the planet. I mean, I respect it, man. I respect it. At least he, he walks the walk. He talks the talk about this lifestyle that he's got. He's consistent with it. So I respect it. Um, Yuri with checks is still champion. Yuri with leg kick checking defense could be champ right now. If Yuri Prohaska had Jan Blahovic shins, it'd be hard to beat him. I don't think anyone would beat him. <coughs> Is it piss break now? No, dude. We got Bo Nickel. I'm not taking a piss break for a, a massacre. Hell no. Let's tally up our picks. That was a great reaction. I think that's a, that's a viral reaction for me. I was just screaming profanities, but still, that's a good reaction. I was hyped. I was freaking hyped for that one. Uh, Yuri Alexander Rakic. I'll jot down the uh, finishing reaction later. Lots of good fights to break down on my post fight. This is going to be awesome. All right, let's, dude, enough, enough bullshit, please. UFC live stream. I'm tired of the highlights. If Hill wins, Hill versus Yuri, Pereira versus Magomed. Um, if Hill wins, yeah, I like it. Yuri did take a lot of damage, though. If Hill knocks out Pereira early, I don't mind seeing Hill versus Magomed this summer and winner fights Yuri, because Yuri hasn't fought either. And I actually think Yuri beats Magomed. I don't think Magomed knocks him out. He might take him down, but I don't think you're stinking it up against Yuri. Glover Teixeira couldn't. Glover Teixeira couldn't just keep him on the ground and sub him. I don't think Magomed's going to. He doesn't have a great submission game. He's got good ground and pound, but... Yuri Prohaska's got some of the best survivability. I say... Magomed has earned his title shot. Yuri Prohaska took a lot of damage. Even if he sits out a little bit, I don't think it's a big deal. Even if he sits out a little bit, right? But anyway, um, 
Pygmy, the audio is out of sync. Fuck. That sucks, guys. I don't know what's going on with that, but... Let me check it. Let me check it. Bro, if Charles wins, I swear to God, I'm going to cry. And thank God. That's all we need. That's all I need for the rest of the night. Charles and Yuri to win and I'll be happy. Thank you for the two bucks. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you for the two dollars. Ricky Duke. I appreciate that. All right. Is my audio out of sync? It's not out of sync. Okay. I'm not even, I'm not even going to entertain the audio out of sync stuff because that's just going to ruin my mood and I don't even want to think about restarting the stream. It's in sync for me. Refresh the stream. Refresh the stream, guys. Refresh it. And if it's out of sync, it's probably out of sync by like a couple seconds. Let me check. It's not out of sync, bro. It's not even out of sync. Anyway, let's end the poll. And let's... Uh, anyway, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're all good. We are all good. Okay? We're all good. And now we got the main card. Time to buy the pay-per-view. Time to buy it. 80 bucks down the drain. You know what? I'm happy to spend 80 bucks. Card's been great so far. And the UFC did a good job with this. Could have been better. Could have been better. But either way, I'm happy to spend the 80 bucks. All right. Let me log in. Because I'm already on ESPN Plus. I don't know why it's not letting me just log in. Uh, that Yuri Warcry. What, what are you saying about the Yuri Warcry? I was sick as fuck watching it back. At the end? Or when did he do the Warcry? <laughs> I wish they showed us the walkout, man. They didn't show us what we needed to see. I needed to see that walkout. All right, let's see. Let me log in. Thank you for the $5. Can you say everyone who has won so far, I was incognito for a while? Yes, I got you. I'll read you the full card. I'll let you know which ones I've got right. Yuri Praska totally dog walked Rakic. He didn't dog walk him. He got his ass kicked the first round, but nice, bro. <laughs> Just pure will from Yuri Praska. Unbreakable will. That's literally the samurai spirit right there. Like... Rakic can talk all he wants about Yuri being a fake samurai. That's, that's a samurai spirit if there ever was one. Yuri's willing to die in there, bro. He broke him with his will. Now it's time for a future champ to get his win. True. 50-year-old bow fan. The bow fans are coming. Like the eagles in Lord of the Rings. Here come the bow fans. The 50-year-old wrestling dads. I'm happy to see you guys in the chat. It's going to be hard to hold you guys back. There's, a, there's like thousands of you guys tonight. All right? Anyway, let me try to log in. Here we go. Wait, we're good. We're good. We should be good. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. Okay, we're good. Thank goodness. And we are, what? Come on, man. What the fuck? What is this? Like, I have to scan this these days? It's bullshit. Whatever. All right, guys. I just got to get the pay-per-view. Got to get the pay-per-view. Nobody cares about Bo. I mean, I care about Bo, and I, I mean, this is going to be a quick fight. It's going to be a demolition job, so it'll be a fun KO. And we'll be propelled right into Charles Oliveira versus Armand. Okay. Sorry, guys. Just uh, logging in. And getting my credit card information. <laughs> getting my credit card information. Hey, guys, can you do me a favor? Can I just read my credit card? And can you guys just remind me with the numbers? I'll be right back. I'm just going to get the card. Can you guys um, 
can I hold it up and you guys can remind me in the chat what the number is just so I can be, be, uh, be 100% positive on it? Okay, yep, okay, I got you. All right, uh, I'll read it out, just repeat it to me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm playing. All right, let me add this. I'll be I'll be a second, guys. Are we good? I think we're good. When does it start? Please stop spamming in the chat. Putting you in a timeout. And we're good. Nice. We're locked in. We're live. We're there. We're good. We're we're all good. All right, guys, give me one second. I'm taking a piss break. All right, we're locked in. We are locked in. We'll just, wanna see some shadow boxing? <laughs> no, we're not shadow boxing, guys. We are, we're not gonna shadow box. Gonna get a snack, though. Gonna get a bit of a snack. We're good, guys. We're locked in. Just having some chocolate. All right, getting a sweetie treaty. Charles is a Zionist. Thank you for the 20 and okay. Unbanned German Sparrow. Uh, thank you for the $5, Marcos VTS. Yuri's lack of leg kick defense and heavy stance is scary for his career moving forward. Hopefully he makes adjustments. You know what? As that fight was heating up, he started kind of getting better at moving out of the way. He does a decent job at moving out of the way, but yes, he needs to learn how to check kicks. He has skinny calves. It is worrisome, but you know what? Yuri Prohaska may have gotten injured in the first round and he still made it work, so... I mean, even if Yuri has a weakness in his game, he can still sometimes make it work. Thank you for the 799. Muhammad, I appreciate that. Oh, wait, wait. Someone asked me, can you say who won so far? I forgot to do that. I got you. Let's tally up my picks. I'll, I'll show you guys the UFC's page. Let's tally up the picks. Okay, I got you. All right, so we got um, Figueredo submitted Garbrandt. Um, 
Lopez KO'd Sadiq Yusuf. Harrison destroyed Holly Holm. Prohaska beat Rakic. So I'm four and three. Green destroyed Miller. Turner fumbled the finish against Moicano and quit in the second round via TKO on the ground. Just totally quit. And uh, Aljamain Sterling outgrappled Calvin Cater and stunk it up to a decision. But still, decent performance from Sterling. I didn't pick Andrade versus Rodriguez. I would have probably picked Rodriguez, but she lost. So I'm happy I didn't pick that fight. So I'm four and three. I'm about to get this. I'm about to go five and three. Six and three. Seven and three. Eight and three, nine and three sounds pretty good to me. I don't know about you guys, but nine and three to me sounds pretty good. Okay. Now it may not be, you know, the, the typical nine and one that I get on my channel, but still. James the Giant Peach. What are you talking about? I look like James the Giant Peach. Is that what you're saying? Why is Islam not fighting like his brother Habab? Okay, that's a silly comment. I got the pay per view on YouTube. I can't deal with those lag spikes no more. Good shit, man. Yeah, if they even sell it on YouTube, I didn't even know they did, but um, that's smart to get this pay-per-view. It's worth it. It's just, it's probably going to be the best card that we get for the next few years, so you may as well. Yes, I look like, let's look up James the Giant Peach. I've seen the movie, of course. I do not look like fucking James the Giant Peach, bro. Are you kidding me? This is not what I look like, but I'll, I don't look like James the Giant Peach, okay? That is not in any way someone that has a resemblance to me, okay? This guy has no jaw. He's got an oval egg head. He's got a Tracy Cortez head without the Tracy Cortez jaw. But either way, this ain't me, all right? That is not what I look like. That's you? <laughs> Does not look like me. Uh, how crazy would it be if Max gets chinned? That would be one of the saddest things uh, of the night, but it would be pretty nuts. That would be one of the craziest moments in UFC history. It would be nuts. Sick card. I already feel like I watched the whole card. Same. Honestly, like th this is how I feel after an amazing pay-per-view. We're, we're hardly getting started. Yuri winning? Are you? Oh, thank gosh. I was so worried about that pick. To be fair, I, I was saying, you know, the striking of Rakic just ain't going to be enough. Maybe Rakic can stink it up. But on the feet, Yuri wins. And he got it done. I said Rakic's leg kicks are good. They're not as good as Pereira's. They're not as effective as his. Stream East is lagging. Yeah, you, you can't freaking count on Stream East on UFC 300 fight night. Just get that pay-per-view like a good citizen, all right? Uh, it's crazy that Yuri was a Muay Thai champ in Czech, but Czech can't check leg kicks. Yeah, well, the whole Muay Thai champ thing is very sketchy, especially in Europe. Blahovich, uh, you know what? Blahovich was a Muay Thai champion, uh, so that's not in any way a surprise. But Darren Till, Muay Thai champ, where are the low kicks, right? Either way. No, Darren Till is a more Muay Thai style, but Yuri Prohaska's just not got a Muay Thai style of fighting. He has a Yuri Prohaska style of fighting that's only unique to him. He's got to learn how to deal with the low kicks. You're right. But he made it work. We say things like he's got to learn how to work on it. It's true, I agree. But still made it work tonight. That's what happens. Yuri won with the aura alone. True. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about that last fight that he had. Fair enough. That left hook was a great left hook from Pereira, and that could happen in the rematch, and it could be even more definitive. But Yuri was building back up. He could have worked his way back into that and had a similar finish. But in a way, it's even more satisfying that he didn't even knock Rakic out cold, that Rakic had every chance to get back into that fight, and Yuri shut it down completely everywhere, on the feet, on the ground. He shut down any little bit of glimmer of hope that Rakic had. The safe pick in Rakic got destroyed. Lucas looks like a swole baby. I do not look like a swole baby, dude. I do not have a babyish face at all. <laughs> I actually kind of, the way that I just looked at the screen in a way, maybe. 
Babies don't have a chiseled jawline like this, brother. <laughs> anyway. Jocko will link. Jocko. Jocko milk. Dude, Mark Zuckerberg straight up just saying, I know, he doesn't even know this guy. He's too awkward to have a conversation. There's BJ. There's BJ Penn. I think it uh, costs... I think cost lasts more than three minutes. I don't know what you're saying. Thank you for the $2, Calvin. I'm not 100% sure what you're saying. I think it costs last more than a three minutes i have no idea what you mean by that lucas looks like laszlo from gta5 <laughs> um mm, yeah i could see it it's just i don't have the Earrings, and I don't have the flamboyant look. Laszlo the Creep. I remember that guy. Great acting. GTA 5 had amazing acting. Now we have GTA 6. Tough cookie mode. <laughs> Pathetic. Can't wait to play as a, a woman and do petty crimes because women... I mean, there are some women that get into petty crimes, but come on. Women don't do stuff like that. All right. I know some people are going to be like, dude, it doesn't even matter, man. It's still going to be a good game. But come on. It's like, how badass can you feel in GTA if your plan is a tough cookie? It's not a scary thing. Like, imagine rolling up to, what's that street in GTA? What's that street in GTA where all the gangs are? Like, with that, with that circle? Where's the circle street in GTA? There's two, there's two gang areas. No, there's multiple gang areas. There's like a bunch. But I'm talking about... That circle area, Grove Street, in GTA 5. Yeah, imagine rolling up to Grove Street as a tough cookie. You know, sometimes you just roll up there trying to take the whole crew out in, in one moment. <laughs> and you put on the, uh, the, the invincibility glitch. Imagine doing that as a tough cookie. It's just, come on. It just You can't have, imagine that being a real thing. Why is Lester talking? I do not look like Lester. I like Lester, though. Lester's the man. Here comes Brundage. Here comes Cody the Bum Brundage. Yeah, my favorite gangs to take out in GTA. I would say I always have a good scrap with the, uh, the Kings. Not, not the Kings as in, you get what I mean. There's a, there's a gang behind Grove Street. There's like a Latino gang behind Grove Street. You know the one that I'm talking about? They always put up a good scrap in GTA 5. The Los Santos Vagos. Yeah, the Los Santos Vagos. There's always a good scrap there. I hope I, I can, uh, you know, I'm going to get that game. I can't wait for GTA 5 to come out. I'll play it for you guys. I'll do some walkthroughs. I would do some Red Dead Redemption walkthroughs, but Red Dead Redemption is a little bit slow. It's almost like the map is too big. There's not enough stuff going on. I like when, when there's a densely populated area. Oh, fuck. It's sounding bad. You get what I'm saying. In GTA, it's good to, it's good to, you know, scrap in a densely populated area. Uh, <clears throat> Lucas, when you look straight at the camera, the shape of your skull makes it look like you're thinking really hard at something. True. Uh, oil up if Charles wins. I'm not going to oil up if Charles wins. I'll oil up if I get, if I get every single pick right on the main card, I will oil up. How about that? If I get every single pick right on the main card, I will take a teaspoon of olive oil and I'll put it on my head in a live stream. Teaspoon. I'm not dunking oil on myself and going in a bathtub though. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not going to oil up the regular way, but I'll, I'll put a teaspoon of olive oil in my head, in my hair. I'm sure that'll be healthy. It'll be, it'll be good for the hair. You can clip it. If I get, I'll, I'll put a teaspoon of olive oil. 
Uh, much better than Guru. Thank you. I appreciate that. Guru. I'm getting compared to Guru. Like, you know, that's like the Habib thing. He's past Habib, bro. He's past Guru. But I appreciate that. I get it. Guru's like the, the standard to be compared to. Thank you. Uh, longtime fan and active member. Well, I appreciate the support. Squeeze. Thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that, man. How long have you been subscribed? Uh, I meant, do you think Cody lasts more than three minutes? Okay, I got you. Calvin, I appreciate the dono. No, I don't think Brundage lasts more than three minutes. I think, I think Bo finishes him in the first three. By KO or easy submission. Knock down into a submission as possible too. I, I actually want to see a slam from Bo. We don't really see a lot of the takedowns, right? I'd love to see him just annihilate someone with a nice takedown early. Pick him up, slam him, and then do whatever he needs to do after, but... You know, give us a takedown. Show us a little bit of the wrestling. And then get a KO. Can you do two tablespoons for, of oil for the members? <laughs> um, I'll do a couple of tablespoons for the members, sure. If I get every pick right. And you know what? A tablespoon, does it count if I at least drink it? Can I at least just drink the oil? That counts, right? Do I have to? I don't have to dunk it on myself, right? That'd be a little bit weird. You guys mean oiling up, like just drinking a little bit of olive oil, like a shot. A health shot, right? I'll do that. I'll oil up 100%. I'll, 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 I'll um, I don't know. I'll do something. I'm not going to oil up. I'm joking. Obviously, that doesn't count as oiling up. If Brundage wins, you shaved your head. Oh, fuck. You're reminding me of this. Oh, fuck, dude. I have to shave my head if Brundage wins. True. I, I actually do have to shave my head at Brundage Wins. I've been saying it for a long time. I have to get a sick tan. All right, I really, really hope Cody Brundage gets beat now. You're right, though. I'm not going bald. I'm not going bald, but I'll get a buzz cut. I will get a buzz cut, but I will not go bald. I never said I'd go bald. I said I would shave. Shaving does not mean going bald. Ah, oh, fuck that. Screw that. All right, what is it? Muzz or shave? Nah, I'm not getting out of the shave. Although, if you guys say muzz is a good alternative, I'll muzz. Get butt booty naked and oil up your body. That's what it meant. Okay, no. I'm not getting butt booty naked. <laughs> and I'm not... I never said clean bald. I never said that. I said I would shave my head. I'll go... I'll go, uh, you know... I'll go Habib mode. How about I go Habib mode? I'll go current Islam Makashev mode. Thank you for the five bucks, Pedro. Ah, oh, fuck. Would you rather muzz or shave? Shave. This is sounding really weird. Shave, man. We need to see a shaving stream, bro. Screw that. I need Bo to win this, dude. I really need him to win. He's not taking risks. Bo's gonna fucking annihilate this guy. Bo is gonna annihilate this guy. For me, please, Bo. Alright, I'll shave my head. I, I told you guys I would do it. I'm, I'm a man of my word. I'll do it. I'm not going bald though, but I will shave like, you'll see, you'll see, uh, you'll see this. This is what it, it's going to be. You'll see a real shaven head. Okay. Here we go. Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. We're about to lock in. Ready? And they're on. Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage is live. Let's hope we get a takedown. Let's hope we get a takedown. Please get a takedown. This is like betting a million dollars right now. Brundage throws a kick. Oh! Fuck, don't take that risk, man. Brundage is going for it. Oh! Bo takes him down. Nice. Bo gets him down. This is interesting. This is really interesting. Man, now I'm getting nervous. I am getting nervous now. I'm getting very nervous now. I'm getting very nervous. Bo has him up against the cage. Please let me keep my hair, Bo. There's Gracie in the crowd. Nice knee from Brundage. 
Come on, Bo, get the takedown, man. Multiple time Division I wrestling champion. Here comes a takedown from Bo. Here comes a takedown from Bo. Here we go. Yeah! There we go. Yeah! Big takedown from Bo. Big takedown from Bo. I'm scared too. Apology video incoming. Yeah, we're going to have to do an apology. Dude, Brundage is being made to look like he's a tough out right now. This is not a good look from Bo. Let's hope he gets the submission. Bo has him on the ground. He's had a lot of time off, dude. A lot of time off, man. And he's ragdolling him now. He is absolutely ragdolling him. Yeah! Not, dude, it's not a bad look yet. It hasn't even been three minutes. Brundage could give up his neck any moment. And, and Bo is not taking risks. Took a couple of risks so far, but Bo has the back. Nice. Nice. Bo's on him. Bo is on him now. Bo's on his back. <laughs> Brunch is getting made to look like a can. This is like a Hamza performance without the ground and pound. This is like a Hamza versus a number one contender, like real fighter performance. Bo's going for the neck. Brundage is the type of guy to wilt, so we'll see. He's getting mauled right now. And, and Bo is doing a really good job at slowing things down. We might see a submission from Bo. First round submission. But if this goes into the second, it's not going to be the best look. Nice. And Bo's in there. Bo's on him. Walmart Hamzat. I mean, dude, I, he is dominating them. Let's see if it goes to the second. Yeah, he's in mount now. This is bad for Brundage. Bo's elbowing him into oblivion. Nice. Bo is elbowing him now. Be careful with the back of the head shots, though. We don't want him to get disqualified. But really good stuff from Bo Nickel. Just totally dominating this guy right now. Not a lot of ground and pound. Let's hope he gets a finish. He might not get the finish. We may see three rounds of this. And you know what? That's going to suck, but I don't want to shave my head. So right now, I don't mind it. I'm liking the fact that Brundage is being slowed down. The chances of a fluke are decreasing. <laughs> they are decreasing. <laughs> Brundage owns him. True. Brundage is technically like... Brundage is living up... Is, is actually living past the expectations. Like, I don't know if Bo's living up to the expectations, but Brundage is surpassing them. Is the, the Holloway fight is not canceled, bro. He's literally in the building and so is Gagey. Win Cody. Brundage is owning him right now just by surviving. Brundage being made to look like a tough out is actually like kind of Moggin right now. There's some little pit pat chops. Little pit pat. Oh! Oh! Brundage is laughing at him. He's laughing at him. Not the best look for Bo. I would think he would submit this guy by now. Or like destroy him on the ground. He's been out of the cage for almost a year. And this is what he has to show for it. Not a great look. Good control. Not a great look though. And we're going into a second round. 100% no doubt. Brundage is laughing. He's looking up at the crowd. He's acting like he's not getting dog walked. But technically Brundage is winning this. Via morale. And let's see if Brundage can knock him out in the second round or if Bo is going to continue to stink it up. Either way, round one for Bo, but the fact that Brundage is in there, the fact that he's surviving and he did not get beat up is a really good look for him. I say 10-9 Brundage. Pity party for Brundage. <laughs> nah, good round for Bo, but let's be honest. He's been out of the cage for a year. It's not a good look. Jacob Malkoon was making him look like shit. Jacob Malkoon was shitting on him at this point. Right? Who else has destroyed Brundage? Cedricus Dumas did better. Holy crap. Cedricus Dumas literally did better. <laughs> That's nuts. Cedricus Dumas was transitioning and flowing and moving and flowing and moving. But I hope that I hope that Bo wins though, because uh, I don't want to shave my head. And I, 
kind of want him to get the finish. It, I like Bo and I want him to do well. So please get a finish in this round. Let's hope he doesn't get finished. Here we go, round two. Let's see what Bo does. Let's see his plan. If he tries to strike, if he looks for an entry. Time out. What happened? Someone threw something in there? Okay. And they're in. Here we go. Brundage is going to go for it. Bo knows he's going to go for it. He's going to fight him like he's got nothing to lose. Big body kick from Bo. If I'm Bo, I'm not fucking around with body kicks, dude. Unless they're there, but... Oh! Brundage tries to throw a knee. Oh, bro! Oh! Brundage throws Bo. You don't want to get hit by Brundage. There's a takedown attempt from Bo. There it is. And Bo gets him down. Jesse on fire fight earlier was more exciting. Jesse on fire fight earlier. What are you talking about? Did Jesse on fire get in a fight? Bo is mauling him again on the ground. Not really, but it's going to be a Bo round again. Did Jesse on fire get into a fight? That is crazy. Really? You're 15 seconds behind? I'm not 15 seconds behind, dude. Oh, you're right. You're right. I am, I am actually a little bit behind. I am behind. Sorry, guys. I'm a little bit behind. Bo's beating him up a little bit. Uh, three minutes and 24 seconds on the clock, right? Yeah, I'm about 15 seconds behind. We're, we're good, though. I'll make sure the clock is synced next round. Uh, don't shave your head. Shave your eyebrows. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Um... Jesse on fire is... Oh, Kayla Harrison. Okay, fair enough. I see what you're saying. You got me hyped there for a second. I was thinking, oh shit, Jesse on fire got jumped? Like, because I know he's at the event. Just how good is Hamzat? I mean, Hamzat's great. But this is not the best look for Bo. I would think that he would get a finish. But he might come close to one. But the ground and pound, the submission game, he's not tearing through these guys. This is not... The performance he wanted. But let's hope he gets a finish. They're going to boo him. Who's the better prospect? Who? Diego or Bo? Obviously Diego because he came in and went to a good decision with Evluev. But they're different because Diego had a lot more experience. You can't really rate them in the same way. But still, obviously Diego. I still believe in Bo, but this is really a pump the brakes moment. This is where we're going to start to have, you know, I'm not the pump the brakes guy, but we're going to kind of have to start saying it if he doesn't finish him. There's the back take. He's got the back. He's got the back. Good work for Bo. Let's hope he gets the finish. If he gets the submission, there it is. There it is. He's got the choke. He's, he's still dominating him. I mean, let's be honest. He's still dominating him. If this was Shavkat... Versus a regular guy, you guys would be hyping him up anyway. So the expectations for Bo are extremely high, as they should be. But still, it's been nothing but dominance. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Woo. Bo gets it done. And I don't have to shave my head. And I don't have to make an apology video. Damn, Bo is, Bo is pointing to the ground. Hey. He's at least reading the room. He's disappointed with his performance. He is disappointed with his performance, but you know what? He still won via submission, man. Still won in the second round. Fight didn't go into... Fight wasn't, fight wasn't even nine minutes. It was like a seven and a half minute fight. Okay, he needs to work. He needs to get better, but still. No adversity. Hardly got hit. Nothing but domination for the most part. Listen. It wasn't the demolition job that I expected, but he still easily took down Cody Bro. But Cedricus Dumas did, right? Hey, at least he's better than Cedricus Dumas. Hype train dad. It's it's definitely slowed down. The fifty year old wrestling dads tuning in for the pay per view are probably going crazy because they don't know what fights are like. The wrestling dads have no idea what fights are like. They didn't watch Yuri Prohaska, right? They're just tuning in for Bo. So they're probably screaming and jumping on the on the couch right now. But MMA fans, a little bit disappointed. 
He understands it was bad. He understands it. Same with Aljo. Aljo was happy secretly. Bo is actually upset. Aljo was legitimately happy because Aljo knows that he made it boring on purpose. Bo, that was everything Bo could do. That was everything Bo could do. He could have made it a little bit more entertaining, but maybe he felt a big punch from Brundage and thought it would be better to grapple. But he tried to throw some ground and pound. It was all right. You know what? Still a good performance. If this is any other prospect, which I know it's not, you can't judge him the same because he's like the big star and the NCAA multiple-time Division One champ. If it's any other prospect that isn't getting that much hyped, we're probably saying, you know what? Let's keep an eye on that Bo guy. Let's keep an eye on him. He's really good. He's got great wrestling, and he's kind of just dominated everyone. He's got KO power too. Still a good win for Bo. And I don't have to shave my head. And what are we? Uh, we're 5-3 and three or 6-3 and three right now on picks. I think we're five and three on picks. Let's hear what Bo has to say. He said he's embarrassed. Fair enough. But he did dominate and he got him out of there within seven or eight minutes. There are some fighters that have good grappling that can't get anywhere near a finish. Still a 100% finish rate. Brundage kind of big bro him when he was laughing. He kind of did in a way. He kind of did get big broed there. But that's because it, it's, a, it's a big broing from the guy that's a plus 1,500 underdog. He wanted to... Oh, Hamza Chamayev's going to send out a tweet with laughing emojis. I guarantee you Hamza's rushing to Twitter right now with laugh emojis. This guy, this guy, brother, you crazy, brother. Bo dominates every second of the fight, proving he deserved to be there. Anyway, back to the freezer. Hey, 50-year-old Bo fans, enjoy the night. You probably don't know that there are any other fights on tonight because you're not MMA fans. You've never watched the sport, but you're tuning in for Bo. Enjoy, man. Have a good night, man. I'm still a fan, but it's a little bit of a disappointing performance. 200k in wrestling dad buys. True. The wrestling dads showed up in full force tonight. The wrestling dads, where are they? I thought the wrestling dads were going to go to the event. Because, you know, in wrestling, like, everyone goes to the events. They all go. Where are they? Where are all the cheers from the wrestling army? Oh... Oh, I got six fights, so relax, he says. You don't want it. That's a Yuri Prohaska. I wasn't healthy, but let's not talk about that moment. He just said, relax. I got six fights. <laughs> relax, guys. Don't hate on me. But still, you know what? I don't have to shave my head. Bo gets it done. It was a dominant performance, okay? You can tell Bo has talent. He's just inexperienced. Agree? Oh, of course. He's very inexperienced. All right, a lot of these guys that make it to the UFC, they have like 10, 12 fights under their belt by the time they get there. Bo had like one fight under his belt. No, three when he got into the UFC. Two Dana White Contender Series fights. One other fight, and that was it. So that is his fourth, fifth, sixth fight. You know, he's not the monster... That Hamzat was when he entered the UFC, but still, Hamzat had more MMA experience. I think he needs to just work on his submission game, but hey, he got the submission. 100% finish rate. There's Valentina. Um, he has a submission game. His knockout power is there, but it looked like he didn't want to risk the KO in that fight. He didn't want to risk going after it on the feet. Brundage does have some... Big meaty hooks and some heavy slugs. You don't want to sit in front of a big slugger like Brundage, right? Brundage is, is a slugger. I think he won the silver slugger last year, actually. And I think he may have... Didn't Brundage break the record for home runs? Brundage is a home run hitter. You don't want to sit in front of Brundage. He hits home runs, he's a slugger. So I think that was a calculated move by Bo to go in there, stink it up. Nah, he didn't want to stink it up. He was doing what he could on the ground. There's still a lot more to see 
from Bo on the feet, but he wasn't going to risk it against Brundage. He'll, he'll, he'll risk it in the future. Not when he's like a minus 2,000 favorite. Bo called out Hernandez. He did not call out Hernandez, dude. Calling out Hernandez. He didn't call out Hernandez. Oh, we called out Fluffy? I didn't even hear it. I did not hear it at all. Oh, they're going to do a Mark Coleman thing. Here comes a Mark Coleman thing. <laughs> oh, shit. That's a... F oh, wow. I didn't know it was that bad. Holy shit. That house is totally fucked. Wow. That sucks. Lost his whole house. I didn't know he lost his whole house. Are you retarded? I didn't know he called out Fluffy. I, I wasn't listening to the entire interview. Yeah, he does not want Fluffy. Fluffy Hernandez destroys him. That'd be an ugly fight. What's Bo going to do? Submit Fluffy? Bo gasses out in that fight and loses. On the ground. Probably gets destroyed on the ground too. Fluffy has a granite chin. Roman? I don't know. After seeing that, I don't know if he beats Roman. Delidzi after seeing what we just saw. The jiu-jitsu is not necessarily all that there. Oh, there's Mark Coleman. Thank you for the $2. What's up, Lucas Tracy? I'm 7-9 and nine on pick so far. Nice. I believe I'm 5-3 and three so far. Um, you're 7 out of 9. That's good. Uh, bro, I thought, bro thought he would beat Hamzat. Imagine what Hamzat would do to Brundage. Oh, yeah. He's not beating Hamzat right now. I, I never even thought that he could come close to anyone like Hamzat. But I did kind of say he might be able to beat a guy like Roman Delidzi. After that, I don't know. Roman Delidzi is a way better striker than Brundage, too. He's not a good striker. So it just goes to show that there are some serious levels. And I'm a little bit worried that he couldn't beat Brundage better than that. But either way, it's still a good performance. He did dominate. Brundage hardly had any success and any hope on the ground. It's not like Brundage was able to get up at any point. How are you and your boyfriend today? I'm doing well, but the boyfriend that doesn't exist, uh, I, I don't know. I can't answer it because that doesn't exist. But thank you for the $2. Manlet, Sir Flukas, thank you. Um, he called out Roman Kopilov, not Delidzi. Oh, Kopilov? I don't think he wants that either. He could take down Kopilov, but I don't think he wants that smoke. Kopilov has a fight already. He could maybe beat Kopilov, but Kopilov is 10 times better than Brundage. Shitty Brundage, dude. Lucas, you had me stressing for a second. I was stressing out watching that because people reminded me that I would have to shave my head. And I said I was going to shave my head at Brundage 1. Thank goodness I don't have to. Lopez's last three fights combined lasted four minutes. Crazy. That is pretty crazy, yeah. But this is the first time Bo has even been to the second round, so... Not the worst look. Listen, if he had gotten rocked, if he had had a bunch of takedowns stuffed... It, it, he had one takedown stuffed, guys. One takedown stuffed. I say maybe it wasn't his best look, but he's not... Beating Anthony Hernandez. He has no chance to beat Anthony Hernandez. Hardly any chance. What's he going to do? Hernandez has a granite chin. He's powered by the best cardio in the upper weight classes. So even if he didn't have the best chin on earth, it's made even better with the cardio. And then he's got a, a nasty submission game. Great grappling. Just an unbelievable pace. He will not beat Fluffy right now. He needs to stay far away from all those guys. Give Bo time still so early on. I agree. Give him time. You know what? I'm actually kind of happy that we saw that. If we were to see a demolition job, we would actually be shitting on him a little bit more. Now, I wouldn't be shitting on him, but people would be shitting on him and his performance. Not, not, you know what? I take that back. I guess the point that I'm making is, if we saw a demolition job, people would also be unhappy. They'd be saying, the UFC wasted our time. Of course we knew this was going to happen. Like, oh, wow, what a surprise. But we actually get something interesting. Right? We, we get to see him disappoint a little bit. And now our expectations are lower. And it's up to him to kind of change our perspective on him. And it's a humbling moment, too. Some people wanted to see him get a little humbled. And the UFC is going to see that. And they're not going to absolutely love it, right? Here comes Armand. Brazil card looks like an easy card to predict. Oh, yeah. 
It is not really, though. There's some difficult fights to pick on there. Here comes Armand. Um, I know a Anthony Smith is on there. I might even pick Anthony Smith to beat Vitor Petrino. Vitor Petrino is taking a huge step up. I know that people don't love Smith, but he is much better than Tyson Pedro. And then you never know what's going to happen with Elvis Brenner and Odelbay. Odelbay could be the real deal. We don't know. He's got a lot of experience too. So I wouldn't say it's the easiest card to predict. Urseg might pull it off, but I'm picking Pantoja. Do you think Holly Holm would have won if she threw a groin shot? Maybe. Maybe that would have changed the course of the fight. I mean, you don't want to get hit in the balls, so. Possibly. Hamza Chamayev tweeted under the UFC post about Bo. <laughs> Let me look at this. He tweeted, huh? I haven't seen the tweet. Let's see what the comments are like about Bo. That's why Nichols shouldn't have been on the main card. Why the fuck was this on the main card? Yeah, people are not going to be happy about it. Hopefully his confidence doesn't backfire. I mean, he got humbled a little bit by his own performance, so it's not like he was Mr. Cocky tonight. And he did submit him. We're acting like he went to a decision. He choked his ass out. Dominated the entire of the first round. So how are we doing tonight? We got one... Two, three, four, five. Five and three. Let's extend it to six and three as Charles knocks Armand out or subs him. Armand looks nervous. I cannot take a Charles Oliveira loss, guys. I do not want to see it. I can't bear it right now. Whew. Charles time, baby. Let's go. Here he comes. He's going to be walking out to the Brazilian gospel music. Brazilian gospel Charles. Bo versus Pfeiffer? Oh, Pfeiffer. After what I saw, it's clear to me that there are just some guys you can't necessarily pick Bo to beat. Pfeiffer's bigger than Brundage, has even better grappling, way more dangerous striking. I go with Pfeiffer. Bo has not got the experience to compete with those guys right now. Here comes Charles. Here he is, man. Emotional Charles. Shedding tears. Oh, is that his girl? Is that his girl crying right there? <laughs> what is the most alpha muscle? The most alpha muscle traps Traps, probably. Or, I would say, traps and back. MMA Guru down! Holy shit! Oh no, that's rough, bro. Whoa! That's a big problem, man. That is a big problem. That sucks, man. That's the same thing happened to him last time. Oh, shit. He's going to have to get his stream up and running. He's got to figure something out. That's rough. Because the same thing happened at his last card. I guess YouTube is just going to crash. YouTube is going to crash every time he gets over 10k viewers. He's got to figure something out. Because uh, you can't risk it every single time. You cannot risk this. There's Charles, though. Armand punched a fan. We making it to jail. <laughs> Thank you for the $2. Did he punch a fan? Um, yeah, I don't know what he's going to do. Because, like, does any other streamer get over 10K on YouTube? I mean, I know that, that there probably are some other big streamers, but still. He's back. Is he still back? Maybe a stream. Did he have to make a new one? Oh, he's back. He's back. Okay, yeah. I was worried. I was actually worried that the, everyone was going to come into my stream and I was going to crash. I was like, oh, shit. Let's hope that we don't have 10,000 viewers. I don't want to crash either. Kayla Harrison murders Bo Nickel. Oh, yeah. I, I pick Kayla, too. For sure. I go with Kayla. Nah. Come on. 
Kayla is a WMA fighter. I know we say she's like a man and all that, but she's she's just on sauce, man. Good for Guru. That would have absolutely blown, dude. Anyway, here we go. Armand versus Charles. I need to get this one right. All right, here we go. Oh, man. This is it, guys. This is it. So you can. Here we go. Thank you for the 79 cents, Adam. Adam Mahmoud. Here we go. Bring it home, Charles. Bring it home. <laughs> we need this win, guys. We absolutely need this win. He looks... He always looks like this, man. Charles always looks like this. He's just getting emotional. This is how he fights. Charles should fight emotionally. It sometimes can come back to bite him, but we'll see. Here we go. Here we go. Charles Oliveira, our monster Yukian. Here we go. Round one. <sighs> Stop spamming. Charles, here we go. Round one. Here we go, guys. Four minutes, 41 seconds on the clock. Big shots from Armand. He's peppering at Charles with jabs. Something's going on with my stream. Charles has him on the mat. Something's going on with my stream. I don't know what it is. Something's happening with the stream. Oh, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, Charles has a submission! Is he going to tap Armand?
We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah! We're good! We're fucking back! Woo! Oh, I got so scared! I got so scared! Holy shit, I'm not even watching the fight! Submission for Charles! Oh my gosh, that was so scary. We just went down. MMA Guru went down. I went down. What is going on with YouTube? I guess it's UFC 300. Boom. Boom. <laughs> We're back. Charles fouled him. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Nice. We're back. So did Rigo. <laughs> Bro's heart. Bro, I was shitting my pants. I even got something on my screen that said that it literally cut the page off. I it was frozen, the page cut off, and it brought me to the home page of wherever I'm at. And I was like, oh shit. No, dude. Our monster eating got fouled and now he's gonna quit. That was a legit up kick. That's not an illegal blow. What was the issue? Upkicks aren't banned. What are people talking about? He's good. He is fine. He's good. He's good. Okay, good, good, good. It's fine. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. Oh, everyone's YouTube just crashed. Thank goodness I stuck in it. If I had turned this stream off, if I was antsy, thank goodness, guys. I showed some patience. I believed. I believed we would have been good. Thank goodness we're back. All right, guys. Charles and Armand. I'd say round one for Charles, but Armand has landed good shots. I don't know. Good elbow from Armand. He's beaten Charles up, actually. We've never seen this. For the first time, I'm actually paying attention to this fight. I'm sorry, guys. I was not really paying attention because I was just worried about my stream. But I saw that Armand reversed Charles. Hey, Charles reverses Armand. Nice. This is a great fight. Nice knee from Charles. Boom. Big elbow. Nice spinning back kick from Armand. Respect in between rounds. I don't know who won. Armand top five UFC physiques. It's up there. It's a little bit blocky. I don't know. His abs are almost like too blocky. But yeah, he's definitely got an insane physique for sure. Oh my gosh, bro. Thank goodness what my stream is back. Impression of Bisbing fighting drunkenly in a pub. I don't. How am I supposed to do an impression of Bisbing fighting in a pub? Like, thank you for the two bucks, but... Thank you for, I don't know if I could do the, uh, the impression. I, I hate to disappoint, but 1-0 Armand. It might be 1-0 Armand. It may be 1-0. <sighs> no links, no links, guys. Really good moment. I guess it's 1-0 Charles. I don't even know. Because Armand was kind of winning on the feet. How did it even get to the ground? I don't even remember how they got there. Can someone remind me? Did Charles get the takedown? He nearly got subbed. Yeah, exactly. Charles almost got the submission. How did, who got the takedown? Anyway, here we go. Armand slipped. Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think Charles pulled the guillotine, right? Here we go, round one. Or round two. Round two. Saryukian's doing all right so far. Both guys, formidable grapplers. Or, or, Saryukian's popping the jab. Oh, big shot from Charles. Big right hand from Charles. Charles, got to be composed. He's got to stay composed. Nice combo from Armand. Nice knee from Armand. He, he went for that same combo he tried on Benil. Nice one-two from Armand. Nice jab from Armand. He's piecing Charles up. Charles is looking very patient. Oh, nice. What was that, a crane kick? 
A crescent kick? Beautiful stuff. He landed it too. Oh, he he wobbled Charles. Not really wobbled him, but he, he caught him good with that shot. Armand's striking is looking great right now. Charles has to tag him. He's got to get in his face. But that threat of the takedown is there. Nice! Armand's scrambling with him. Armand's scrambling with him. Let's see if Armand can get the takedown or if Charles can stuff it. But Charles got up to his feet. Really good work. Great work. It was an axe kick. Charles is defending this takedown well. Threatening with the submission, but Armand already got out of that first one. I, I think the uh, guillotine chokes are going to become less and less potent. There's a nice takedown for Armand. But let's see if Charles can get up to his feet. Charles has him in his guard. <sighs> Two minutes and 55 seconds on the clock. I think my clock is a little bit ahead. Now I'm scared too, guys. I'm starting to get nervous. This is a nerve-wracking fight. This is a weird fight. I mean, I think it's just weird because Armand's like winning this round and we're just not liking it. This is a depressing fight right now. Round two is an Armand round so far. I think Charles is wary of the takedown. He's not letting his hands go on the feet. He's kind of going Calvin Cater mode a little bit at the start of the second. We need Charles to go berserker mode. So Yukin's not beating him up now. There's a nice elbow. There's a nice elbow. There's another elbow. But here's another elbow from Charles off of his back. There's an elbow from Charles. Charles is getting frustrated. Let's see if he lands an up kick. Big shot from Armand. Charles has him. He has his arm. Okay, and, and Armand's back in the guard. <sighs> Fuck. Armand's winning. Armand is winning. This is not a five-rounder. There's like six minutes left of the fight, and Armand is winning this round, guys. A minute and 29 seconds on the clock. Oliveira is not getting his ass whooped, but he's not winning this position. Armand is doing very well. Damn it, all Armand has to do is get a takedown in the next round to win, guys. That's the only thing he has to do. <sighs> Armand can't finish. Oh, he's not taken down Islam Makhachev. Armand screwed against Makhachev. Charles doesn't have the best takedown defense. But I would think Charles is good enough to get up to his feet. Oh, wow. Saryukin is actually cutting him open. There's another elbow from Armand. Another elbow from Armand. Armand is, is landing tons of elbows on him right now. He's not going to finish Charles, though. We better not get a doctor stoppage in between rounds. Another elbow from Armand. Another elbow from Armand. Damn, he's whooping Charles' ass. Damn it, dude. Damn it. Big shot. And, oh, there's a submission attempt and it's not locked in. Fuck. Guys, let's, let's chill with the spam. It is so far 1-1 or 2-0 Armand. This is not a good look at all. Not a good look. It's 1-1, one, one, guys. He had it locked in, I know. But it's the end of the round. Armand probably was willing to take a risk in the last couple of seconds. Look at that kick. Armand's kicks are underrated. That is insane. Crazy flexibility with that kick.
That is insane, man. I think that's a Charles round. Ar Armand did well. He definitely beat Charles up, but I got to give it to Charles just because he's my favorite fighter, you know? 2-0 <laughs> Charles. All he needs to do is survive this round. That's a, that's a win for Charles, and he won the stare down. He did win the stare down. Anyway, guys, here we go. That's not a 10, that's not a 10, eight. Armand is elite though. He's proven that he's elite and he is different than a lot of these other guys. We need a TKO from Charles. We need a big shot. Let your hands go. Let your hands go, please. He needs to throw punches. You can't just sit behind kicks. There you go. There you go. That's what you got to do. Armand might get tired. Ah, they should have made this a five-rounder. Fuck. There's a nice shot from Charles. Charles lands a big shot, and it could be a completely different fight. No. Get your back off the cage. Back off the cage. Oh, fuck. Now Armand has him up against the cage, and he's going to take him down. Shit, man. Armand beats Benoit St. Denis. Maybe. Different matchup, but you never know. Nice from Charles. Big elbow from Armand. And now they're back at range. Three minutes and 50 seconds. They're in the middle of the cage. Yeah, they should have made this five rounds just for the heck of it. Three minutes and 40 seconds. Charles needs to let his hands go. Right hand lands. It's a completely different fight. Oh, no. It's a takedown attempt. Stuffed from Charles. Nice knee to the body from Charles. They're back at range again. Armand is going to slow down if he gets a couple more of these stuffed. But Charles has to let his hands go. Charles is slowing down big time. Oh, man. Come on. We need a right hand. Throw a punch! You could say cope all you want. I am coping because this guy's not throwing a punch. Like, let your hands go. This is not the offensive Charles that we're used to. There's a nice body kick. We don't need a body kick in round three. We need a right hand. We need this guy to let his hands go. What, what is this patient Mr. Kicker? What is this bullshit? And Armand gets him down again and it's fucking over. It's basically over. Fuck. He's not throwing punches, man. How is he supposed to knock this guy out? How is he supposed to hurt him if he's not even letting his hands go? I don't understand it. This is the patient Charles Oliveira that gets frustrated against grapplers and starts to get worried of the takedown. Where's the guy that's slugging with Justin Gagey? Where's the guy that's like throwing punches with Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler? Where is that guy? He didn't break Charles. Charles is not broken. He's just kind of wary of the takedown. He's just not throwing punches, man. But yeah, Armand's going to win. He's definitely winning this fight. Like, Charles ain't doing shit. I'm sorry. He's basically just giving this fight away. He's not quitting, but he's straight up giving this fight away. Or at least he's not really giving himself a, a chance. Oh, big mistake from Armand. He's got Charles's back. Big mistake. He might let Charles get up. He's not a guy that does really well with back takes. Let's see what Charles can do here. There's a minute and 20 seconds. Wow. Armand Sarikian is straight up dominating him right now. Armand, the first guy since I think Paul Felder to dominate Charles on the ground. Damn. Armand Sarikian, the real deal. Did better than Makhachev on the ground too. Crazy. Not better in the fight. He couldn't finish Charles and make it look clean. But still, like, on the feet, I think it's a dominant performance. Charles is up. Don't go for a submission. You need a KO. Let's see if he can get it. 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 There's 30 seconds. Does he have something? 
Does he have something? Oh! He's got something! There's 20 seconds! 20 seconds! Oh! He's in deep! He might tap him! He's putting his tongue out! He might go to sleep. He might go to sleep. <sighs> he didn't get it. He didn't get it. So close. Armand's tough. You're right. You got to give it to him. He's tough. So close to pulling it off, dude. He had it cinched in. Oh, no. He left him hanging too. Armand left Charles hanging. He tried the big brother him. Damn. Not only did he beat Charles, but he left him hanging. Okay, I want Islam Akshif to, to beat up Armand, dude. Damn. Charles got so close to a couple submissions, but he lost the third round. He, he lost that decision. It's 2-1 Charles, but to be fair, my stream crashed during the first round. And Charles got really close to his submission. And it's not like Armand really beat him up in the first. Yeah. I know, I know the clock is... Uh, we're just going to let it run out. I guess that's it. Charles Oliveira. I think he could have won that fight if he actually threw some punches. Yeah, the sub attempts aren't really going to get him that win. Armand has the chimp factor. <laughs> Armand is a, a pretty built manlet, dude. He's got the manlet power. But, man, I really wanted Charles to win. Uh, so much for that aura mog. I mean, um, Charles still mogged him at the weigh-ins in the stare down. That's all that matters. <laughs> Armand will never be able to live that down. Charles won the, the stare down, which was the most brutal aura mogging I've ever seen. But still... He didn't throw punches. You need to let your hands go in a, t in a, I mean, not a title fight. Where was the Charles that was aggressive against Gagey? Where was the Charles that was aggressive against Poirier? Where was the guy th that we saw fight Kevin Lee, putting Lee on the back foot? Where was the confident Charles throwing punches, moving forward? It was Armand putting Charles on the back foot basically the whole time. Charles just doesn't fight aggressively against these wrestlers that can mix it up. That's the issue. When someone takes him down and can hold him on the mat a little bit, he gets skittish. 29-28. Oliveira, 29-28. Holy. They're going to give it to Suryuki and it's not going to be a robbery. They're not giving it to Oliveira. Oh, I wish they robbed him. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> I wish they robbed him. But you know what? R respect, Armand. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of pulling for a robbery there. Almost what we wanted. I would have admitted. I would have admitted it was a robbery. But I kind of needed Charles to win. But either way. Yep. We can kiss Charles' title dreams goodbye. They're gone. Champion doesn't have a name anymore. Or he does. It's, it's Islam Akshav. I'm not behind, dude. The fight is not on. The clock is still on, but I'm not behind. I'm watching live. They're interviewing Arman. Wow, Arman's the real deal. He's legit. Doesn't even have a scratch on his face. Wow. So much for Oliveira being the super aggressive marauder on the feet. That doesn't exist anymore. Against these guys, honestly, against these guys, he's a bit of a pushover. He showcased some good moments, but to be honest, that was basically Diego Lopez versus Mavzar Evluev. A couple of submission attempts, but other than that, mostly dominance. 
He was sticking out his tongue. He almost got it, man. I thought Charles had the best squeeze. What happened to that squeeze, Charles? I'm genuinely worried for Max. Justin might actually beat him like he did Tony. That's not going to happen. I, I'm actually worried that Max is going to prove me wrong. But I like Max and I'll be happy if he ends up winning. But I'm a little bit pissed off about this. He's going to call out Makshev. But I think Makshev's too much for him. I don't think this guy's taking Islam down. And on the feet, Islam's too much for him. Gagey and Max may take too much damage. Armand didn't take a lot of damage because, I mean, Charles just didn't throw any punches. 5-7 Chad, too. <laughs> I'd like to see it. Armand versus Makashev is much more competitive than Makashev versus Gagey. I could see Max being competitive, but come on. Max is not finishing Makashev. He probably gets controlled a little bit. That's the fight to make. I wish Charles knocked him out. Damn. So he proved me wrong. I guess he was good enough to control Charles on the ground and beat him up. First guy to ever beat Charles up. You know, prime Charles, that is. First guy to beat a prime Charles on the ground. There's Kayla Harrison. Doing a 303. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. You're going to get us on the 303. Dude, we're not buying into that. We know you're not fighting McGregor, all right? Just give it up. There's Gagey. Justin Gagey. Waiting in the wings. <sighs> Armand gets ragdolled by Islam? No, that's not happening. Armand doesn't get ragdolled by anyone, dude. Anyone that's in his weight class, there's no one that's ragdolling him. Where did Muay Thai Charles go? I don't know. He's, he's hiding, man, but... I, I think it's just he doesn't have the same confidence on the feet against people that are shooting takedowns, right? And to be fair, we didn't really see Charles fight the heavy pressure wrestlers on the come up. Sure, you could say Michael Chandler's a wrestler, but he's got no IQ. And Michael Chandler gasses out easily. He's not the same kind of guy as Armand. You curse Charles Lucas. Dude, I, I didn't want to pick Armand. I didn't believe he could get it done. So I thought he could maybe win, but I thought Charles was going to win. What can I say? I picked the guy that I think was going to win. Sorry, guys, but I got to go with whatever I think is going to happen. And I, I feel like the right pick was Charles. But you know what? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The reason I picked Charles is because I thought he was going to be really dangerous on the feet. And he just doesn't have that ability against these wrestlers. Or he gets skittish. He gets worried. He gets scared of the takedown. And so he doesn't take risks. But you can't go out there and beat... Uh, a heavy pressure wrestler without taking risks on the feet. Some of these guys are not just going to be able to submit them easily. Damage trumps all. Oliveira lost. Oh, yeah. Oliveira e easily lost. If they gave Oliveira the decision, it would have been a brutal robbery. So, would have been a highway robbery, dude. What is Anik even talking about? Who's going to the Hall of Fame? Oh, Anderson Silva. How is this guy still not in the Hall of Fame? That's crazy. You're telling me Anderson's just now getting brought into the Hall of Fame? Armand just won custody of Benil? True. Congrats to Armand. At least he's got custody of Benil. Custody. Oh, is it Chael? Oh, they're doing they're in, they're inducting this fight into the Hall of Fame. Not either guy. Here come the waterworks from Chael. Here come the waterworks. What is up with fighters not throwing punches? They're scared shitless of the takedown. And now we know that about Charles. Against these guys that are throwing consistent takedowns or shooting them, he's not the same scary guy on the feet. We saw it against Makashev. Wasn't letting his hands go. Remember, remember when people were saying things like Charles was too aggressive against Makashev and he should actually be more patient? Yeah, they couldn't be more wrong. Like, I knew that Charles was way too patient against Makashev. He's not aggressive enough against these guys. He backs up, bro. I'm pretty sure Armand had him on the back foot for the majority of the striking exchanges. So, yeah. For Islam, to be fair, he was moving forward, but not throwing punches. Kicks, little body kicks, little teeps.
meaningless shots. He was not too aggressive, dude. He was not too aggressive. Too aggressive? Come on, enough. That's bullshit. Armand was throwing his little pipsqueak shots at him. His little pitter-pats, tootsie rolls. Charles Oliveira getting backed up by that? Are you kidding me? Not the same guy that's fighting a striker. So, unfortunate. No one wanted that outcome outside of the Armenians, I guess, but whatever. Good for Armand. And you know what? At least I know Armand's going to take it to Makashev. At least I know that he's not going to be scared shitless of the takedown. Because I actually think the grappling is going to cancel out. And I think Makashev's going to knock him out. I can't wait for it. Or at least win a decision. If Armand beats Makashev, that, that'll shock me. I don't think he's going to because he doesn't have the same power and he's not going to hit Makashev as much. But there's no way either, either guy gets the upper hand in the grappling. Just how good is Mateusz Gamrot? Um, not that good. I mean, he did beat Armand Sarukian, but I, I think that he just has a different style and he's a better wrestler. I think that's what it is. It's just a different style. He's got good wrestling defense and he's not afraid of guys that are like chaining takedowns together because that's his style too, which is why I think uh, the fight with Islam looks a lot different. Thank you for the four months membership. Tracy doubting Armand. I know I was doubting Armand. But you're acting like that's some kind of a surprise. I don't understand why that would be something that I shouldn't do. Like, Charles is just way more proven. And I thought that he'd be aggressive on the feet. And maybe he had learned a lesson against Islam. And I'm starting to think that actually Charles was there against Makashev. That it wasn't 1% of him. Remember, that was the excuse he was offering. That was 1% of me. No, that was the same guy we saw fight Armand. And said Armand was even better. So, better on the ground. Islam finished him and cleaned him up. Let's not say that it was, you know, done a lot better. I think they're both good performances. Charles took a round off of, Mar of Armand and got close to his submission a few times. He never put Islam in danger like that. Never lost a fight, never mispronounced a name. Yeah, Alex Piera. Is that his real name? I guess we're all mispronouncing it. Not chill, though. He purposefully does that shit to be quirky, doesn't he? He said Alex Piera about a thousand times on the pre-fight show. Thank you for the $10, Giga Chad. To be honest, I don't think you should be in the Hall of Fame for one close fight against a top guy. It's almost insulting Chill showing his losses in a highlight reel. And if we're being real, Armand beat Gamrot. Yeah, Armand did beat Gamrot. So let's not act like Gamrot had some really like great, amazing win. He had a good performance, but it was a robbery. And I actually gave four rounds to Armand. So Armand Sarukian, basically undefeated. Hail San, and thank you for the two New Zealand dollars. Listen, did they put Chael into the Hall of Fame? Or did they put the fight into the Hall of Fame? I'm pretty sure they just put, because I, I wasn't listening. I, I took my headphones off. I'm pretty sure they put the fight that he had with Anderson Silva into the Hall of Fame. Which, if that's the case, I, I don't have a big issue with it, but... They put way too many people into the Hall of Fame these days. I think it should be more like baseball or basketball where they only put the best of the best, like the most dominant champions and the guys with the craziest records. They put too many people in. It was for the fight. Yeah, it was for the fight. I don't mind that. It's a famous fight. We all know about it. Induction was for Chill, not Silva. Uh, thank you for the $2. Okay. So maybe it was for Chill, Son, and... But it was for the fight, was it not? Basketball has too many? Okay, maybe not basketball. I know baseball is really difficult to get into the Hall of Fame. There are guys that had like multiple MVPs and World Series wins that don't even get in. And there's only like six guys every year that are elected into the Hall of Fame. And you can only imagine how many positions there are in baseball. It's real difficult. But the UFC, they'll, they'll put in um, Chandler Cole. They'll put Chandler Cole in there for at least showing up on the Dana White Contender Series, right? They'll put any fighter that, that has a couple of bonuses in there because, you know, they were entertaining. And it's fine. I don't mind it. I actually don't mind it. I think it, it's a little bit different. It's a different sport. I think some fighters should be valued for 
taking every fight, having fun fights, having good performances. I also understand wanting to have like a certain level of excellence in there, but still, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. You and Guru were wrong about every big top five lightweight fight. No, he picked uh, Gagey to beat Poirier. I'm pretty sure... I picked Benil to beat Gamrot, though. And I... Oh, we picked Benil to beat Charles. Um, But yeah, I see what you're saying. Top five, I guess... Are you not going to count the volkanovsky Makshev fights? Because I picked Makshev to win those. Um, I picked Gagey to win this, and he picked Holloway. So let's see who has the better one. Uh... Who is your favorite Dana White Contender Series prospect? Uh, Lou Sassoli. Lou Sassoli is a great prospect, dude. Lou Sassoli. One of the best <laughs> prospects ever. Uh, Dixon. Dixon. Dixon Kyder. Dixon Kyder. Really good. And uh, Bendover. Bendover's the best. I like Bendover, honestly. He, he's the GOAT. But, you know, Lou Sassel. <laughs> Lou Sassel is the fucking man. Literally, he's the man. He is a man. But, dude, that's sus. Dude, I don't like that guy. He's a creep. Um, no, my favorite Dana White Contender Series guy. Thank you for the $5. I would say... I guess Jamal Salty Mall Hill. And Pfeiffer. Jamal Hill and Joe Pfeiffer. Probably Jamal Hill. Level of excellence is required. Chill was almost a champ. Yeah, almost a champ is a little bit... You know, I don't know if that's Hall of Fame worthy, but still, maybe they just inducted the fight. Armand versus Islam in Abu Dhabi. Lots of Armenians here. Why not do it in Saudi Arabia? That's in a few months. Armand didn't even take a lot of damage. But to be fair, it's a little bit weird that these champions keep having contenders rushing to fight them after a whole training camp. So let's give them some time. Let's do Islam Aksha versus Poirier and then have Islam Aksha fight in the winner. No excuse. About, oh, I got to do this in the spring. Have him fight in the winter. Okay? Is this Max? He's coming out to some other song, but it's going to it's gonna turn into Hawaiian kickboxer. UFC should make a Hall of Fame for fighters who are very fun to watch. Uh, I just think it'd be like the Mickey Mouse Hall of Fame. I don't think you could do both. I don't think you could do both. It would get watered down. And you'd have overlap too, because some of the best fighters ever are really entertaining. Hawaiian Superman, interesting. Here comes Oh I don't know how, I don't know the song. Let me look up the lyrics. Oh Hawaii na Oh, Hawaii, in ha. Oh, Hawaii, in ha. Ah, what are the lyrics to this? Max is looking big, dude. He's looking jacked. This is not skinny Max anymore. He's actually. Looking like a legit lightweight right now. Big lightweight. Uh, I think Holloway's going to beat Gagey. I think I should have changed my pick. Fuck. So I'm 5-4. and four. I'm 5-4 and four tonight. We're not doing that well. Oliver choke in the third. Not enough to steal the round. No, not enough. Armand was whooping him on the feet. Controlling him on the ground. Landing good elbows. Like a 20-second submission attempt. You know... Armand wasn't on the verge of going out. Like, he was fine. Charles had it for 20 seconds and he couldn't get it. So, you got to ask yourself, how, how dangerous was that moment? It didn't look like Armand was in danger. At least Armand has a better chance against Islam. I like that fight. I mean, I'm, a, I'm excited for that fight. I am looking forward to it. And I think that that is the most competitive fight for him right now. Not Gagey, not Max. We'll see how Max does, but... Him beating Gagey in a stand-up battle doesn't really prove that he's the better guy. But Holloway's looking big. He is looking dense, man. Big back. He's got abs, too. Full chest. The delts are there. Holloway's looking big right now.
This is good. We'll see. I could see Holloway putting him away. Thank you for the 79 cents, Grandmaster Yoda. Thank you for the 20, Elvish. I appreciate the 20 pounds. Here we go, guys. All of you Oliveira fans are coping. I'm not coping. Not at all. I think that uh, he got the good win, and good for him, man. He proved me wrong. Good for Oliveira. Oliveira beat Armand at the stare down. But good win for Armand in real life, though. That was a good one in real life, though. Here comes Gagey with his random walkout song. Gagey doesn't have a consistent walkout song, does he? Here comes Rufus and his pipsqueak. Here comes Rufus and his sidekick. I think that's that's not his brother, I don't think. It doesn't look like his brother. I know Gagey has a brother, but that's not him. That's the guy that, you know, Gagey beats up in training and stuff. As I was saying earlier on the stream, a lot of these fighters, they have like a sidekick that they're just allowed to beat up in training. DC had one of them. You guys know who I'm talking about? Gagey has one of them. They're always like a short, middle-aged, bearded, beige guy. You got what I'm saying? <laughs> that we can always see getting beat up on Embedded. I don't know. Are there any other fighters with those? Gagey by submission? No chance. No chance, dude. There's the UFC four coach that we never see from Justin Gagey. Where's Trevor Whitman? Gagey's got like all his coaches. Where's Whitman at? The custom shorts are the move. Bring in more creativity. I like it for the bigger stars. I think you should earn them though. Are those Gagey's custom shorts? They don't, I mean, it's kind of hard to really tell. Like I could see the pattern right now because he's in the Cutman corner, but. It's, gonna, it's hardly going to be noticeable when he's actually fighting. There, there's Whitman. I picked Lou Sassoli over Dixon Sider. No surprise. <laughs> uh, Lou Sassoli ain't even real. All right. But thank you for the two bucks. Fam God, I appreciate that. Here's the white belt. Yeah, yeah the white belt Gagey. I want to rock and roll. Typical Gagey track. Justin Gagey track. If the UFC went bankrupt and the company shut down, um, what would you want to see as their last fight? Um, Ilya Teporia versus Islam Makhachev or Volk versus Aljo? Volk Aljo. One last win for Volk. <laughs> what about you guys? Volk Aljo or Islam versus Teporia? Honestly, it'd be good to see Yuri. How about Yuri versus Jamal Hill? That'd be a good one. Yuri always brings it. I, I think like Volk Aljo might be a bit of a slower fight. Volk just controlling him. Mark Goddard's refereeing. Should I be nervous? Nah. Yeah, you should. Yes, you should. If Max drops Gagey, like he could step in and have an early stoppage. Or if Gagey like hurts Max and Max is standing and getting wobbled, Mark could fuck it up. So yes, you should be nervous. Thank you for the $2, Truth Teller. C next to BMF champion is silly. Fake belt. Yeah, it is silly. They don't need to do that. They should have a BMF next to it, not the championship thing. But are they wearing the gold gloves? Oh, no. We have Zhang Wei Li up next. No, they're wearing the regular gloves. Speaking of the gloves, I've not noticed a difference all night at all. They look exactly the same. The fights are playing out the same. You know what, guys? I'm starting to think Holloway wins. Like, I, right now, I just have the vibe that Holloway's just going to win. So, let's hope he gets it done. Either way, no matter the outcome, I'll be happy. Holloway second round? I could see it. I think Holloway might win, guys. I think he actually might, might get it done. They're not using the new gloves? Oh, they're not using it yet. Why? Why? I guess it's good not to test it out on this event. You don't want to fuck anything up. Fair enough. I was actually kind of excited uh, to see the gloves when I just thought about it. But yeah, whatever. Holloway's looking dangerous. He's looking different, man. Let's see if he comes out there. Jerome. Is it Jerome or is it Max? We'll see. Or Edgar. Let's call him Edgar. Max, Edgar, Jerome, Holloway. 
I guess Max is his middle name, right? Jerome Max Edgar Holloway. If Max bites down, I think he gets it done. But will he bite down or will he fight the way he's normally been fighting? I think he's going after that bonus. It's time to lock in. Here we go. We're locking it in. Woo! I'm getting nervous now. Thank you for the $1, Bob Leal. Thank you for the five dollars. Would you rather see Max get the submission or TKO? Uh, honestly, TKO. It's time to get locked in, guys. Here we go. Gagey looks ready. Holloway looks ready. All that's left is for us to ask them how the weather is. <laughs> How's it feel to be there? Put Mr. Quivers in the octagon. We have a fight. <laughs> Imagine it's just Holloway Gagey versus Mr. Quivers. Turn the table on him. Here we go. Thank you for the five dollars. Five hundred KES. I hope Max doesn't come out like Ferguson since it's five rounds. He's not Tony Ferguson. We're not saying that. Don't worry. That's not what it's gonna be. Here we go. Round one. This is it. Holloway versus Gagey. Holloway's looking big, man. He's looking dangerous, but Gagey's looking dense. Battle of footwork. Gagey's been talking a lot about that Trevor Whitman school of footwork. Nice little shot to the body for Max, little body kick for Max. Max is on the board. But Gagey is kind of marching Max down a little bit. Oh, he tagged Max on the top of the head. Actually, I don't know if he landed anything. Gagey faints a low kick. Hard kick from Gagey. Hard kick from Gagey. Four minutes and 16 seconds on the clock. Little body shot for Max. Gagey is on the front foot. This is interesting. Low kick checked by Gagey. Gagey faints the takedown. Hard low kick from Gagey. But he's not putting a lot into them. Nice little jab to the body from Max. Low kick from Max. Max is putting points on the board. Nice shot from Max. Uppercut and a jab. Beautiful combination. Gagey knocks him down with a low kick. But I think Max was more off balance than anything else. Gagey's got to really invest in those low kicks early to take away that movement. He's got to really batter the legs. But Gagey's looking to check these low kicks. Gagey... Doesn't follow through with that one. Oh, fuck off, Rogan. I think that one kick already damaged him. Dude, shut up. This is not, you know, the first calf kick that was ever thrown against McGregor. Calf kicks are not going to change the fight that much, dude. Low kick for Max. Big shot from Gagey, but Holloway moves with it. Holloway moves with it really well. Holloway still landed the best shot in this round. Big uppercut from Max. Oh! Big shot from Gagey, but Max counters hard. Dude, I think Holloway's knocking him out. Holloway's gonna knock him out. Holloway's gonna knock him out. I'm telling you, Holloway's knocking him out. After, after that exchange, Holloway ate that like it was nothing. Holloway's knocking him the fuck out, dude. Big low kick from Gagey. Holloway's looking good. He's looking fast and he's catching Gagey coming in with the straight shots like uppercuts, right hands, little tap to the leg for Max. Max's speed is looking awesome. But this is a chess match. Gagey got jabs coming in. He's looking like he's wild. Max is winning. Nice one, two for Max. Straight shots. Max is looking really good right now. Gagey's getting his fucking ass whooped. Honestly, Gagey's not getting his ass whooped, but Max is taking control. Holloway, Holloway, nice two jabs for Max. 
All right, honestly, Max is winning. Max is winning, guys. I'm getting hyped for Max. Gagey is whiffing big. Holloway's defense is looking like it's on point, dude. And he's not even biting down. He's actually fighting that, like, slower kickboxing style. It's actually working really well. Holloway's fighting as if he's got, like, one-shot power and if he could tag Gagey at any time. And it's working right now. Gagey is looking really reserved. Like, he has not landed anything worth a damn. And you cannot be low output against Max, dude. Like, Gagey's fighting like Yuri was in the first round. Head kick attempt from Gagey. He said he was going to try to land that lead kick. Holloway's looking wide-eyed. Oh, big uppercut from Max. Little teep from Max. Max is winning. It's a Max round. He's going to win a decision. This is... Hard low kick from Gagey. Nice one-two from Max. Dude, Max is going to put this man out. Nice body shots from Max. One-two from Gagey. Dude, those straight shots are a problem. <laughs> Max throwing those fruity pebbles. <laughs> yeah. Fruity pebbles from Max. Nice body shot from Max. Round one for Max. Oh, Gagey's took a bad step. Max is making him look like schmuck. <laughs> Thank goodness Homer Simpson is done, dude. We can finally see some real slick striking prevail in front of him. He is not turning him into Tony. Sunned him. Sunned him. Sunned him. Spun him around. Nice. Master class. How good is Volk? I'm trolling, guys. Let's go, Max, dude. It's over for Gagey. He's screwed. Max wins. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just going to start getting hyped for Max because after what I just saw, Gagey is not built for Holloway. Straight up not built for him. Damn, he fucked his nose up. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. It was on the nose. Holy shit. I thought he hit him to the body. Whoa. Oh my goodness, man. He's done. Broken nose from the back kick. Those spinning back kicks from Max, they're nasty, but that landed flush on the nose, like on the side of it, spun it back. Gagey screwed. Nice, dude. Gagey's going to have to bite down. If Gagey tries to bite down and, and, and slug with Max, he's going to get finished. He's looking way too wild. Holloway's straight punches. They're an issue for Gagey. Fight of the year? This is not fight of the year. It's a little bit of a slow fight. Here we go. Holloway's going to win. Broken nose. First round. Holloway up big time. This is the featherweight skill. Featherweight skill. Featherweight speed. Prime Holloway. I'd love to see him versus Tapori after this, man. Gagey's nose is screwed, dude. Holloway is busting him up, dude. I think this is the round, guys. I think this is where Holloway is going to gain tons of confidence and start to pour it on. It's a big couple of shots for Gagey. Hollow and Gagey has to breathe out of his mouth now. All that cardio training at altitude, he's got to breathe out of his mouth. This is a better version of Max than the version Volk beat, so the wins... Oh, okay. Thank you for the five bucks, fam god, but either way, Max is still whooping his ass. And uh, we're six minutes into it, and Gagey might start freaking out in this round. Holloway's got his, him busted up. He's got him bleeding. He's got his nose broken. Those pebble punches for Max, Rudy Pebbles, are an issue. But that was the spinning back kick flush, dude. Game of inches, right? Hard low kick for Gagey, but those low kicks are not TKOing Max, bro. Holloway's not going anywhere due to a couple of low kicks, bro. Nice jab from Max. But Gagey's still in there. Max is still giving him respect. Patient Holloway, dude. Oh, nasty elbow from Gagey. What was this? Oh, come on, man. An eye poke? Fluke no shot ruined the fight. All right, we got some Gagey copers in the chat. 
it was a little bit fluky, I'll give you that, but still, that's what fighting is, man. That, that, that shit happens, so it's legit. So much for Max looking like Ferguson to whoever said he was going to look like Tony. All right, they're not going to end the fight due to an eye poke. Gagey is not quitting. Gagey will fight if he's blind, dude. Yeah, that was a bad one. That was a particularly bad eye poke. That was a bad one. But Gagey's not going to quit. He's in there. He's in there. He's good. He's good. Bad eye poke. It was a bad eye poke. The nose is legit. That's a legit shot to the nose, though. And that's really what's going to be an issue for Gagey as this fight goes on. Taking a lot of damage to that nose. He could turn into Rory McDonald. Anyway, my bad. I, I uh, didn't sync up the clock. I should have paused the clock. We'll, we'll wait till we get to 2 minutes and 28 seconds. 3 minutes and 2 seconds on the clock. Holloway live odds. Minus 345. Good body kick from Gagey. Max gets it back. Max is really good at getting those right back. Gagey's footwork, not an issue for Max. Max takes the kick like it's nothing. This is not looking like a fight of the night so far. Nice shot from Max. Hard body shot. Nice body kick. That was a nice fruity pebble shot from Max, dude. That was a tootsie roll. Tootsie roll down the pipe. Strong jab to the body from Gagey. Strong jab to the body. Damn. Yuri and Rakic and Bobby Green and Miller might get fight of the night. Because this is not looking like a, a fight of the night style of fight. This is two patient strikers. Nice shot from Gagey. But he's not KOing Max like that, man. That Gagey power against the best chin in the UFC. When Gagey's being super patient, like he's got to get a lot of those shots off. Nice elbow from Gagey. That was nasty. Step and elbow. He's been working on that Muay Thai, he says, with uh, Cosmo Alexander. Nice shot from Gagey. Landed a good shot there on Max. Another eye poke? Oh, come on, man. Another fucking poke? Listen, I, I like Max, but come on, dude. Gotta control that. A fake poke. Let's see. That was not a fake poke. That's a thumb in the eye, dude. That's a thumb in the eye. Uh, nobody is crumbling. Gagey is not crumbling right now. That was a bad eye poke. Don't be, don't be starting this shit. Don't be starting this bullshit. That was a bad poke. Oh, my clock isn't synced up. My bad, guys. A minute and 22 seconds on the clock. Hard low kick from Gagey, but Max checks it. Nice right hand from Max. Max is winning this fight. But another warning, good warning for Mark Goddard. Another eye poke, Max is going to lose a point, And that first round may not matter that much. Nice shot from Gagey. Nice hook from Gagey. Gagey is still in here. He's not crumbling. He's still in here. Is there a good eye poke? No, there's not a good eye poke. <laughs> you get what I mean, dude. It's a nasty one. Oh, hard low kick from Gagey. That was the best kick of the night. Right on the thigh. Leave it up to Rogan to tell us how Max is already struggling to stand on that leg. Max is thinking about switching stances. How do you know what he's thinking? <laughs> oh, good shot for Max. Max ate the shot from Gagey and landed one of his own. That chin is holding up. Gagey is really committing to the leg kicks now. Really good work from Gagey. He's got to go Jan Blahovich mode. Don't even care if they're getting checked. Gagey checked that kick from Max too. That was a fruity pebble kick. Nice body kick. Spinning back kick from Max. Nice. Oh! Big shots from Max. Holloway's eating these shots like nothing, dude. He's eating these like Tic Tacs. That chin is holding up. Snowball is coming. Gagey is starting to get a little bit impatient. He's turning it up with the low kicks. But you know what? You know who was turning it up with the low kicks? That got his ass whooped in the later rounds of a fight? You know who lost... The early going of a fight and then turned it up with the low kicks and still got his ass whooped. Tony Ferguson. That was what Ferguson tried to do against Gagey. I'm saying Gagey's going to be Tony. Tony started mincing Gagey's legs up at one point and then, you know, didn't mean shit. So, again, if it's not McGregor 
And if it's not the first year of calf kicks being a thing, these fighters can take a million of them. All right? They know how to deal with calf kicks. His steel cup is affecting his balance? Sure. You're being Rogan calling every pitter patch? No, there were some big shots in that final exchange. I can't believe he didn't take a point. I mean, three, I, I, I you know, it could be accidental, but one more, he's going to take a point. That means Holloway better be on point. No pun intended, but you get the point. Oh, no pun intended, but you get the point. I can't believe I just said that like multiple times, bro. Anyway, here we go. Round three. That cardio of Holloway is good. Gagey's two low kicks in, but all these kicks are doing is just putting points on the board. Max Weidman, he's landed two. If he lands another, it'll get bad, but let's relax. Eye pokes happen. Nice one, two for Max. That Justin Gagey power, not looking that great. Nice front kick from Gagey. This is not the BMF fight that we thought it was going to be, but you know what? I love it. It's a good chess match. Hard kick from Holloway to the body. Justin Gagey turned away from that kick. I didn't like that. I didn't like how he uh, just simply turned away. Heavy kick from Gagey gets blocked by Holloway. Went for the head on that one. Nice body kick from Holloway. Really good chess match from these guys. Holloway checked that one. Holloway's been doing a good job at checking these kicks from Gagey. At least 30% of these kicks that Gagey's thrown have been checked. But Holloway's being Mr. Patient, right? Still the volume king. Gagey's being extra patient. It's just hard to tag Holloway with that featherweight speed. Max is throwing scared leg kicks. Oh, that's a nice shot for Gagey over the top. But Holloway eats it like it's nothing. Thank you for the two bucks. Yeah, I mean, a lot of fighters throw them these days. The little tap kicks. But they are going to the lower part of the leg, which is the most painful part to get kicked, to be fair. So I can understand just kind of sinking it in there. And also, there's the idea where you don't want to get it checked hard when you're putting everything into a kick. So I understand it. There's a nice kick from Holloway. And a nice oblique kick. See, it, it's like in between those big exchanges. There's a nice hook from Gagey. In between the big exchanges, Holloway does a really good job at putting points on the board. There's a body shot. Little teep from Gagey, but Holloway gets it back. Holloway's just really good at putting points up there in between these big exchanges. Oh, big right hand from Holloway. And a spinning back kick from Holloway. Head kick just misses. Big moment from Holloway. Right hand and a spinning back kick to the body. Oh! Holloway rocks him bad! Not bad, I'm sorry, but he kind of, he kind of flustered Gagey. He's bringing Rufus out. That's Rufus if I ever saw him. Look at Justin Gagey's face. It's getting bad. <laughs> he didn't get that badly rocked. But a big moment for Holloway. Holloway's winning these exchanges. Every one of these car crashes that Justin Gagey talks about creating, Holloway's ending up winning and looking like the more rooted guy in the ground because of that freaking chin. And he's sitting down on these shots too. Holloway's whooping his ass, bro. He's in charge. Nice one-two to the body, and Holloway's mixing up the targets really well. Oh, brutal back kick to the body. Gagey didn't like that. Gagey's looking real ugly with these shots, man. Fuck, I should have picked Max. He's looking great right now. Nice hook from Gagey, but like he's just not able to hit Max clean. Mythical Holloway has been impressive. This is like the best version of Max. We've seen, I guess, uh, the talk of Holloway declining as, as he gets older, even though he's young. I mean, not that I was saying that, but some people believe that Holloway's prime was back in the day. No, no, no. Best he's ever been here. And Gagey just getting outclassed right now. There's a big shot from Gagey, though. Hard low kick, but Holloway's going to knock him out. Gagey's leaving his head on a silver platter every now and then. Turning his back, turning around. Holloway could catch him and spin his head back with a right hand. I think this is going to be 3 0 Holloway. And Holloway's going to win the BMF belt. Not necessarily the, the war people wanted, but I'm liking it. Nice one, two from Holloway. 
Gagey's got apps not landing shit other than these kicks. Wow. Holloway and his defensive boxing is on point tonight. And this is going to be a big win for him on the all-time list. Schooling Justin Gagey on the feet? Has anyone schooled Justin Gagey on the feet? Like, and not gone to war with him? Because Holloway's not going to war with him. He's legit schooling him on the feet. This is not a close fight. Damn. Think about it like that. Has anyone ever made Gagey look this simple on the feet? I don't think so. Everyone's gone to war with him. Or got na their ass kicked by him. So not only is Holloway beating like a, a solid title defense for other champions like Habib and Charles. But he's shutting him down where he's at his best. This is this could literally be the best win of Holloway's entire career. You could say I'm glazing. Fair enough. First guy to do it with no war. First guy to do it with no war. By decision, clean performance. Holloway's hardly taken damage. Hardly taken any damage. The guy that gets hit the most. Damn. Damn. Holloway is moving up the GOAT list, which means... You know what that means. That means there's a guy across the world that's watching this fight that's getting catapulted to the top. Anyway. Wait, did this shut off? What the heck? Here we go. Round four. Gagey's going to have to go for it. Max can't fight short guys. Volk got KO'd. This just proves that the Lucas is... Okay. No, it does not. Thank you for the five bucks. Um, yeah, I mean, Volk is a harder matchup because, you know, Volk is just built like that. Built different. Volk is literally built different than these other guys. Like, literally. But just build-wise. But yeah, Holloway is schooling Justin Gagey and making it look real simple. Justin Gagey swinging and missing, l looking like the fool. Looking like the schmuck. <laughs> the schmuck Justin Gagey. Mr. Meister on the feet. Mr. Footwork himself is getting shut down by Max and his tried, tested, and proven clean style. Prime Holloway. This version of Max beats the current Volk. I mean, with the chin that he has, I, I don't mind that. Oh, big one-two from Gagey. Holloway eats it like nothing. Best chin. Thank you for the five bucks. Yeah, maybe he could beat the current Volk with, with Volk coming off of a couple KO losses, but had three chances to do it. Couldn't get it done on a, you know, you know, prime Volk. Holloway lands a nice combination there. Oh, big one-two from Gagey. Couple of monster shots from Gagey. Holloway eats it like nothing, though. Classic Holloway eating these shots like Tic Tacs. Oh! That's the nastiest shot of the night from Gagey. Biggest shot of the night from Gagey. Oh, he stung him to the body, did he? Holloway stung him to the body, but now they're going to war. Now they're slugging it out. Gagey's forcing him to slug because he knows that he's down. Oh, he spun his head back with that. That was that Volkanovsky combo. That was that rear into the lead hand. That was that Volk combo. Right hand into the lead shot. Beautiful. Nice body shot and a follow-up for Max. Now they're, they're slugging. This is the best fight of the round. Best round of the fight. I can't even speak, guys. I gotta shut the fuck up. Sorry. Rogan is saying the left leg is grotesque. Is it? Not really. It's not that bad. I mean, it's kind of purplish, but... Two minutes and 30 seconds. Can Gagey pull it off? I don't think so. Nice shot from Gagey. Big shots from Gagey. This could be a Gagey round. If he continues it like this. Gagey's doing really well. He's in there with Max. Very close round still, but... Very close. A couple of shots from Max there. Max has landed some great ones. There's a nice uppercut from Holloway. Jab from both. Oh, Gagey just misses that overhand and Max counters with a 1-2. Beautiful. Holloway's defense tonight is looking phenomenal. A minute and 50 seconds on the clock. Jab from Holloway. Knee from Holloway. 
Holloway's getting this round. He's ahead a little bit right now. Gagey lands a nice shot. Nice hook upstairs. Teep from Gagey. Gagey's in there, though. He's absolutely in there. Teep from Holloway. Gagey just misses the jab. Hard low kick from Gagey. Holloway lands a jab and a nice oblique kick. And Holloway, another oblique kick. Still outpointing him. Nice combo from Holloway. Holloway's ahead. Oh! Knockdown for Gagey! Big shot from Gagey! He knocked Max down. First time he's ever been dropped. Holy shit, Max just got dropped. Gagey wins the round. It was a bit of a flash knockdown. First man to drop Max. But he's not going to KO him, dude. Gagey needs to land flush. There's a nice shot from Gagey. Gagey wins the round now. We got to see the replay on that. He knocked him down. May have been a slip. May have been a little bit of a slip that helped him there, but I need to see that again. Nice jab from Gagey. Gagey's starting to pick up confidence. Kick from Gagey. Let's see if Gagey can capitalize off of this in the fifth round. I'm sure he'll have a lot of confidence going into that fifth. He's going to win this round if that's a legit knockdown. If they're going to count that, Gagey wins the round. Big hook from Gagey. We got to see that again, man. Imagine if Taporia lands some shit like that. At Featherweight too. There's a big one too from Gagey. Gagey wins the round. If that's a real knockdown, we got to see. Slip? Might be a bit of a slip. He slipped in the first and fourth. We'll see. We'll see the replay. He isn't pulling a Leon. He's getting KO'd. We'll see though. It's going to be a decision. This Max versus Sean O'Malley would be peak uh, win or loss. Oh, I don't know. O'Malley's got a ridiculous speed. I don't know. That'd be really competitive. O'Malley's a lot better than Gagey skill-wise and speed-wise. I, I could see it being a very close fight. To say that Holloway dominates O'Malley, like stylistically, I don't know if that's the case. It'd be a close fight. It's 3-1. Uh, Here's the knockdown. 3-1. Here's the knockdown. Over the top of Holloway. That's a knockdown. That's a real knockdown. Right off the top of the head, off the equilibrium. Didn't rock him that badly, though. Did not rock him that badly. What did Whitman say? What did Whitman say, Lance? I, I, I wasn't really paying too close attention to that. It's 3-1, Max. Or... No, nah, it's 3-1, dude. Is he talking about front kicks? Bro, fuck the front kick. Gagey's got to knock Max out. He's got a 10 8 him, dude. Hard kick from Holloway. Well, I guess Max got dropped, but he's still in control and winning the fight. They better not rob Max. Gagey's coming on strong. He's starting to gain his confidence. Nice uppercut from Max. But now Gagey's starting to walk Max down. Little pipper shot. Not even a pepper shot. That was a pipper shot. A pipsqueak shot for Max. Oh, nasty. From Holloway. Lands a spinning back kick. And another shot on top of it after Gagey landed a good combo. Three minutes. 51 seconds. Nice body kick from Max. Oblique kick from Max. Nice jab for Max. Jab Max is ahead. Gagey checked that one. Hard low kick from Gagey. But you're not going to win with low kicks, dude. I know he's got to just throw, but still. like He's got to take any opportunity. Gagey needs to take risks in this round. Otherwise, he's losing. Losing a decision. Come on. It's the BMF title. You got to go for it, dude. You got to go for it. And he's walking Max down a little bit. Oh! Holloway rock Gagey bad! He's going to get knocked out. Holloway's going to TKO him. Fifth round. Fifth round. Gagey's teeing off. Oh, Holloway's got him out of there. 
Holloway's got that schmuck out of there. Big shot from Gagey. Holloway's pouring it on. What is he doing? He's letting up. He's going to rock him again. Gagey's rocked. Spinning back kick from Holloway. He's got him up against the fence. Holloway had the finish. He stepped back. He's letting him get back into the fight. This is not the move for Max. <coughs> I called this in my prediction video. I said if Max rocks Gagey, he's going to be too patient. Remember? Oh, I called it. I didn't predict it right, but I called it. I said Max is almost going to be too patient if he rocks him. He let him back in. He had the finish right there. Right there. He's still going to win a decision. Gagey's done. There's no fucking way Gagey wins this. He's done. He's toast. Gagey's too concussed. He's got to go for it, man. You got to go for it. Surprise, Max hasn't dropped him. No, he did kind of drop him. What round is it? It's the fifth round. Spun his head back again with a 1-2. He's playing it smart. I know he's playing it smart. Which is a good thing if he wants to just win. But I think he could have had the finish. Gagey was out on his feet. And I said in my prediction video that if Holloway rocks him, he, he might even freaking let him off the hook. A minute and 30 seconds, Gagey has to KO him. And that's not going to happen. Max is cruising to a victory. Holloway's about to beat Justin Gagey by decision. Holloway is about to come through with the upset. He's got the schmuck in front of him. And Gagey's out on his feet. Nice shot from Max. Minute left on the clock. Outside of the fourth round, it's been nothing but dominance. Holloway's dominating Justin at this point. Gagey's had nothing in this round. He's had hardly any success. Gagey has to go for it, man. Go out on your shield if you, if you want that KO. You're not going to win a little pipsqueak battle. <laughs> oh, he got close with that one. Gagey is not going to win a little pipsqueak battle with Max. Nice teep to the body from Gagey. Head kick attempt from Gagey. Flying knee from Max lands hard to the body. 20 seconds left. Jab from Holloway. Ten seconds left. Rolling thunder kick from Gagey. They're going to slug. They're going to slug. They're slugging. They're slugging. Middle of the octagon. Oh! Oh! He slugged Justin Gagey out cold. He slumped Justin Gagey out cold last second. Holy fuck. Last second KO. Justin Gagey face plants on the canvas. Holloway points to the ground. Knocks that schmuck the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Holloway's back. Woo. Knocked Justin Gagey out cold. Best last second KO in UFC history. Holy shit. Justin Gagey went for it. Max tempted him. Do not slug in the pocket with Max Holloway. Nobody can slug in the pocket. With Max Holloway. Knocked him the fuck out. I was just about to say, ah, uh, wish knocked Ma Max knocked him out. He knocked him the fuck out, man. Let's go. Look at that. Points down. That featherweight speed. The goaded chin. Here, where is it? Where's the shot? Where's the shot? Where's the shot? Boom! Slumps him out. Woo! Holloway. Knocks Justin Gagey out cold, man. That is insane. And schooled him too. 4-1 Max Holloway going, or, or it was about to be 4-1. Literally schooled Justin Gagey outside of one moment. Knocks him down. Gagey got the knockdown. Max got the KO. Damn, that was nasty. Holy shit, that was nasty. Yes! Yes, dude! I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Oh, I wish I picked Max, though, but nice, man. Slumped him out cold. I'm telling you, Rufus is not the guy to pick in a slugfest with Max.
Jerome Holloway gets it done. Edgar Cut Max. No, Jerome Max Edgar Cut Holloway. Knocks Justin Gagey out cold. That is insane, dude. Hell yeah. Max shut up the true BMF. True, he shut up the schmuck. Justin Gagey, listen, it's rough that Justin Gagey just got knocked out cold. I like Justin Gagey, but I really wanted Max to win. All right. Sucks for the Gagey fans, but rough for the Gagey fans. Not only did Gagey get schooled, Holloway knocked him out in the last second. Because they were about to say, yeah, at least Gagey didn't take a shitload of damage, but he did. That was a bad one. That's a career-ending KO. Oh my goodness, that is literally a career-ending KO. He took a ton of damage in that fight, got schooled, 4-1. No one has ever schooled Justin Gagey. And he gets brutally slumped. Damn. Screw featherweight. I want Max to stay a lightweight. I want him to knock out all these lightweights. Max versus Poirier knocks him out. How about that? Let's get Max. Max is going to be the guy that cleans up shop with all these 35-year-olds that have been stinking up the rankings for so long. <laughs> Not stinking it up as in making fights boring, but Holloway is, is going to be the custodian of the top five. I think he KOs Poirier. We don't need to see him fight Poirier because Poirier is coming off of a... I was about to say a loss, but... He's coming off of a win. Holloway's the BMF. Yes! Let's go! Holloway wins, dude. Nice, man. We came out tonight. Volk on top of the goat list. Oh, for Volkanovsky's resume? Holy shit. He just, Max Holloway just beat the guy that everyone's scared of fighting as a striker. No one's ever done that to, to Gagey. Volk beat Max three times. I'm sure this version of Max could maybe beat Volk by KO at 155, but still. I've seen enough. Ilya beats Islam. Ilya could beat Islam, yeah. He's saying shout out to Justin Gagey. He gave him the KO on a silver platter. Nice, dude. Max Holloway, biggest moment of his entire career. Winning the title back in the day as a featherweight was good. But this is the biggest moment for Max. Nothing comes close. Breakout moment for Max Holloway. As if, you know, he, he, he kind of needed it. He says, I'm him. El Matador. He's saying, sign the contract to El Matador. There he is. Get him in the cage. Get him in the cage. Bring him in. We're going to have Pipsqueak in the cage. Outgunned, dude. Nice, bro. I should have picked Max, dude. People were given great reasons. But you know what? Holloway, patient Holloway won. If I picked Max, I would have banked on like the Edgar Cut Holloway to win. Which, you know, that version of Holloway got the KO. Pipsqueak Holloway got the master class. Edgar Cut Holloway got the TKO. TKO. Honestly, that's knockout of the night. 100% that's knockout of the night. One of the best KOs ever. Yeah, he's, he's getting on Rogan. BMF title. Undisputed UFC champion. Going on Rogan, knocking out the schmuck Justin Gagey. We finally get it. Listen, I, I mean, I don't mind, I don't want to be hard on Justin Gagey. It's just uh I really uh I, I really wanted to see that. Slumps him out. Identical to the TKZ walk-off for Max Holloway. TKZ slumped out the same way. Two KOs in a row for Max. I know I, oh, fuck, dude. I said he had pillow hands. Shit. People are going to go back to my video where I had a thumbnail saying pillow hands now. Fuck. That's not going to be a good look, but it is what it is. Ilya's terrified. Ilya can still beat Max, but, I mean, Max had just had the biggest moment of his career. I say stay at 155. Destroy Dustin Poirier. He destroys Poirier in a rematch. What's Poirier going to do? Swing big meaty hooks and knock him out? There's no way. 
I don't think anyone's knocking Holloway out. The only guy that has a chance is Tapori at 145, but he's got anything he wants. The world is Max's oyster right now. Armand thought he had a good performance against Charles. Holloway just goes out there and schools Justin Gagey on the feet. Striker versus striker, grappler versus grappler. The only domination was the striker versus striker matchup. I say give Max Holloway whatever he wants, bro. Uh, they didn't count Gagey's knockdown. They didn't count his knockdown. It was a slip. All right, fair enough. All right, so Holloway still hasn't been knocked down, but he kind of has, though. He kind of has. Like, come on. W what was it, the wind? He just slipped on a banana peel. He got hit with a punch that sent him on his ass. Okay? Kind of a knockdown. That might be my favorite moment in UFC history. Beautiful performance for Max. The only guy to ever have a clear and looking performance against Justin Gagey. Holloway had one bad moment in the fourth round. Okay? Gagey had one round that he won. Holloway schooled him for the whole fight for the most part. And knocked his ass out. Max was mogging Ilya from the ring. Ilya's shook. I don't think Ilya's shook. But yeah. Amazing moment. And now we have shitty Zen. Yeah. Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhao Nan. Wow, I can't wait. What an amazing choice for, for the co-main event. Wow, can't wait for 25 minutes of bullshit. Glad I picked Max by KO. Ilya looks terrified. I think people are... I think Ilya is just going for like the I don't care look. I'm not impressed. That's what he was going for. He doesn't look terrified. How good is Volk? Yeah, people are going to say... Uh, what are they going to say? Uh, Volk beat a shittier version of Max. Volk beat Max Holloway in the trilogy, like, when he was coming off of one of the best performances of his whole career. What, Max Holloway was a bum back then? Years after Holloway's champion, an improved Holloway gets schooled by Volk. Volk beat him three times, so. Yep, Volk goes up the GOAT list with that one. If there was any doubt about Volk's legacy, beating Max three times, right? Holloway's literally a top 15 fighter of all time. That's a win that most people would be hyping up champions for getting. People hype up Oliveira, for beating him. People hype up Habib for beating him. Holloway schooled him on the feet. Nobody's been able to do that. All right. Yeah, Charles knocked him down, but still. No one's really been able to school Justin Gagey like that. Uh, what's the prediction for the CCP belt? Um, Zhang. Taporia looks like he's seen a ghost. He's going for the I'm not impressed look. He's going for the I could care less. I'm not going to get angry and act like, you know, Holloway just did something cool look. Um, they didn't, yeah, they, they didn't count Gagey's knockdown. They should have, though. That was a real knockdown. Thank you for becoming a member, Nigel. I appreciate that. You used to not like Justin Gagey back in the day. I don't dislike Gagey. I, I just dislike him compared to his opponents. I end up rooting for his opponents. Because, let me just be honest, Gagey has a fun style. He's all right. He's an okay guy. He's a decent guy. But he's got a sloppy style, and I just don't love to see him... You know, outstriking the guys that I think have like very slick and finesse styles. So, and Gagey's been a bit of a uh, salty walty, honestly. Nigel just gifted 10 Lucas Tracy MMA memberships. Who got the memberships? But awesome. Thank you, Nigel, for spreading the Lucas Tracy MMA club. Uh, if Max beats Islam and Ilya, he's ahead of Volk all time. Oh, yeah, there's an argument for that. 100%. He beat Aldo twice. If he beats Ilya and Islam, I could maybe see that for sure. Not a featherweight, though. Him beating Islam and Volk does not... I mean, him beating Gagey and Islam does not do anything for his featherweight legacy. But yeah, on the all-time list, maybe. But to be honest, Holloway winning just kind of puts Volk further up. Congrats to Max. Good night. Oh, dude, we got Diego. A rough night for Diego. Diego's back. It's been a minute since I've seen you in the chat, bro. Hey, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for what just happened to Justin Gagey, but it's the fight game. That shit happens. I had to watch my favorite fighter get slumped out twice in a row. So that's how it goes. But um, I'm happy for Holloway. I was thinking all week about changing my pick, man. At least I said it was going to be somewhat competitive, but you know what? I was wrong. Patient Holloway is good enough to beat Gagey. And Gagey, not good enough to go tit for tat with Holloway. Masterclass. Masterclass. <clears throat>
I think that's the fight that I'm going to make a recap on. I'll do an individual recap video. And I'll do a full card recap. If the main event is not that... Um, if that's not eventful, if there's not a whole lot that happens, if it's just an Alex Pereira early KO, then I'll make one on Holloway and Gagey. Max beats everyone. I don't know about Islam and Tapuri though. So not everyone. He doesn't beat everyone. Thank you for the $2. He beats Pori in a rematch for sure. 100% he beats Pori in a rematch. I would love to see Max knock out Poirier. Poirier is one of the three stooges. We need Max to clean up the old head, old guard lightweights. I think he beats Charles too. Because what's Charles going to do? Shit his pants, go on the back foot and throw a bunch of teeth kicks? Charles was probably always overrated. His golden era was when he finished Chandler, Pori, and Gagey. But as soon as it's someone else's well-rounded, yeah, Armand or Islam, he doesn't have an answer. Yeah. I think saying he was overrated may be true. Like, because this is the thing. People are going to read that and they're going to say he wasn't overrated. He was a champ, dude. But I think what you're saying is... Again, he wasn't as good as we thought compared to the other well-rounded guys. I think he may have always had a bit of a hole in his game where he's kind of gun-shy against these grapplers. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Charles Oliveira was overrated in the sense that he wasn't good or he was kind of a bum the whole time. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it seems like these heavy-pressure wrestlers that mix it up are just always going to be an issue for him. Again, this guy says, overrated, are you crazy? How is he done against the heavy pressure wrestlers that mix it up? He shits his pants on the feet, doesn't throw any punches. And if he's not able to get the submission, he gets out grappled and controlled. So it's kind of true. He was not letting his hands go. Not overrated. Okay, well, if you're going to say he wasn't overrated, then the only good argument for that is you thinking that the heavy pressure wrestlers would be too much for him. If you think that Oliveira was the... Because a lot of people were saying, how is Islam going to beat him? How is Armand going to beat him? I'm guilty of it too. How are they going to beat him when Oliveira has such a nasty ground game and you're screwed if you go to the ground with him? And then you have to stand up with him and he's a marauder on the feet that has KO power. Most people say that, or at least a lot of people do. Well, if you say that, then you're overrating his ability because actually he's not able to do that. He's not easily out grappling these guys. He's getting held down, and he is gun-shy on the feet. So that's what I mean. When I say overrated, I don't mean that he wasn't good. Some people mistake overrated for meaning not good. That's not what I mean. Max was maxing tonight. Yep, Max was maxing. And um, honestly, one of the most beautiful performances and career-changing performances I've seen in a while. Slumped Justin Gagey on the canvas as an underdog. Yes, people started saying the fight was competitive this week. Fair enough. But in the beginning, when that fight was first announced, people were saying it wasn't going to be close. He just schooled a guy that's never been schooled, knocked out the BMF, won the belt on the biggest card that you could possibly think of. And now he can fight Taporia whenever he wants. In Spain, he could fight Islam whenever he wants at lightweight. Even if he gets finished by Taporia, he can move up at lightweight and have a title fight or a big fight. And he still is the BMF. If Holloway fights in a non-title fight, it'll be against someone for the BMF title. Holloway's the biggest winner tonight by far. And um, if there was any doubt about him being a top 15 fighter of all time, there's no doubt anymore. This is the greatest knockout of all time. All right, pump the bricks. Listen, thank you, Diego, for becoming a member, dude. I appreciate the support. Long time no see. Long time no see, but, but it's good to have you in the chat. Um, rough night for the Gagey fans, though. It's a rough night. This is the greatest knockout of all time. I don't think it's the greatest KO of all time. All right? I think that Leon Edwards head kicking Kamaru Usman on like his sixth title defense is a little bit crazier. Um, I think Izzy knocking out Pereira is pretty crazy, too. I mean, just the way it happened. This is, the, this is one of the best. This is one of the best. It's one of the most surprising KOs ever, right? I think the most famous last second KO of all time is TKZ getting put out, but the stakes are so much bigger here. It's a BMF title fight. This is the best last second KO in UFC history. Thank you for the five bucks, Owen. I appreciate the five bucks. Max, 
has whatever he wants on his doorstep, guys. Huge moment for Holloway. Because the thing is, out of the guys like Gagey, Poirier, Holloway's kind of taking a back seat as far as his star potential, right? Or his star power. Because of him getting schooled by Volk, fighting non-popular featherweight contenders. The lightweight division is the division of popular contenders. Holloway finally gets a massive win against a huge name. This night couldn't get better for him. And he gets a KO, a knockout cold moment. Holloway versus McGregor too. Yeah, if you want to see Connor get embarrassed. Thank you for the five bucks. I think O'Malley doesn't want to move to featherweight anymore. Yeah, I see. But, you know, O'Malley versus Max is a different matchup than O'Malley versus, you know, some of these other guys or Max versus Gagey. I think O'Malley's much more competitive against Max than Gagey was. A different style, different output, straight shots, different speed, different footwork. I I'm not saying O'Malley wins, but listen. If I'm Max Holloway, I'm looking for an undisputed title fight at 155. If you lose to Islam, you get controlled on the ground. If you lose to Islam, you get submitted. Guess what? You still have a title fight at 145 pounds. What do you guys think? Should Max kind of look for an Islam Akshia fight? Or should he go down right now? I say look for an Islam fight. Why would you want to cut weight? You just built up into a legit lightweight. Focus on getting even bigger for the weight class. You can always move down in the future. And he just won the BMF title. He still has other options up there too. Fight Islam. You lose that. Fight another BMF fight. You're the lineal BMF champ. What do you guys think? He's going to get submitted? Listen, Holloway's got amazing takedown defense. And he's a dog, man. He's got a really good ability to survive. Maybe he gets submitted. Guess what? That's not a really damaging loss. Holloway getting submitted does not make me think of him any less as a striker. So it's not the worst look for him. What's he going to do? Move down, cut a bunch of weight, lose all the hard-earned muscle that he just put on, fight Ilya, possibly get KO'd, and not have the same pull that he has right now? Because the thing is, I'd rather Holloway come off of a loss at 155 and still walk into a title fight than coming off of a loss at 145 and maybe, maybe not getting a title fight because there are other guys that have earned it at 155. Say goodbye to Ilya. Get ready to learn Hawaiian, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I'm ready to say goodbye to all these contenders, bro. Thank goodness Volk has cleared up the trilogy. As a Volk fan, I'm happy Volk beat that guy three times so he never has to fight him again. Especially at 155 because I don't mind Max's chance to KO Volk right now. But yeah. I'll root for Max against everyone. I'll root for him against every single guy that there is. Holloway's back. Completely back. He was starting to be the, you know, win a couple uh, against these okay, non-hyped contenders and have a couple okay decisions. How good is Arnold Allen, by the way? Taking two rounds from Max. How good are the featherweights? People talk about, oh, this guy's only defended against a bunch of lightweights. How good are the featherweights? I mean, look at what Max did to Gagey. Poirier has to go to war with him. Poirier has to get knocked out by him. Right? Habib's getting his ass kicked by him. Charles is going to war. Look at what Volk does to Islam when he moves up. Gives him the hardest fight of his life. Guarantee you Islam fights a 55er next. He's cleaning him up. But you never know. He could beat Armand. He could beat Armand. And it could be a competitive fight. So we'll see. Armand's the only guy that I think gives Islam a real competitive fight when it comes to the grappling, at least. I really hope Gagey retires. Don't want him doing the Tony. <laughs> Damn. Diego, I remember you were making fun of me or making fun of uh, Volk's future about getting KO'd by Gagey in his fifth KO loss. Now you see how it feels to be on the other side of this. I really hope Gagey retires. I don't want him going the Tony route. My heart can't take it. And yes, Max versus Islam, 100%. He loses the BMF belt or goes down. I don't think they would put the BMF belt on the line for a title fight because the thing is, whoever wins the championship fight is always going to be the BMF. So they'll never put a BMF fight on the line for a championship fight. That'll never happen. Yeah, I say just look for a lightweight title fight. 
or knock out Dustin Poirier. If I'm Holloway and my chin is holding up against Gagey and I'm schooling him, I'm fighting sluggy man Dustin Poirier, who is more finesseful than Gagey, but he's still a bit of a slugger, right? I'm, I'm cleaning up all the old 35 old head lightweights. I hate WMMA so much for lessening this card. I'm kind of happy about it. Now we get the talk. Now we get to talk about Holloway destroying Justin Gagey. Talking about what's next. It's a little bit of a break. Max definitely got the 300K. I thought Diego Lopez had it locked. Not anymore. If anyone's getting KO of the night, it's Holloway. Performance of the night might be Holloway too. He schooled Justin Gagey, got the KO. But that'd be a little bit fishy. I, I don't like that. I think the UFC are a little bit weird. I think the UFC should kind of spread them out a little bit. So give Holloway the performance of the night or knockout of the night because that was the best KO. Give Diego Lopez performance of the night. Give Yuri Prohaska the gritty man of the night, right? And then uh, give Aljamain Sterling the boot. <laughs> Give Aljo the boot. I nearly had a heart attack from that KO. I couldn't believe my eyes. I could not believe my eyes. I thought it was fake for a second. Thank you for the two bucks. 50-year-old Bo fan. I thought the 50-year-old Bo fans would be asleep by now. Um, This is why Pori versus Makachev makes sense now. I mean, yeah, it sucks for Gagey, right? Imagine the guy that Gagey just KO'd gets a title fight, but Gagey had to get three wins in a row to get his. I don't know if it was smart for Gagey to even take this fight. So, who wins Islam versus Max? Good question. Islam versus Max. I go with Islam just to control him on the ground a little bit. I mean, I was saying Calvin Cater is good takedown defense, right? Max is good takedown defense, but has anyone really tried to take him down that often? I bet Mokshev could make it work. And I think Mokshev's smart enough on the feet to make things happen, and I think he would control him a little bit. But you never know. I'd root for Holloway. Is the lightweight division screwed? It is screwed when it comes to 45ers moving up. 45ers always clean up at lightweight, bro. This is the greatest knockout of all time. Nah, not the greatest KO of all time. I wouldn't say that. I've been doing my thing, but I'm back for a little. Maybe after that, I don't know. I'm dead ass sad. I, I get it. You know, especially if you had your hopes up for Justin Gagey. I totally understand it. That's the thing. When I saw Volk get KO'd, I was picking him to get KO'd twice. So I kind of expected it. It's been a minute since my favorite fighters lost or one of my favorite fighters have lost when I really thought they were going to win. I, that was the uh, Olivera Makasha fight for me where I was really sad. I guess Izzy knocking out Pereira had me sad too. Oh, here's Yan Jiao Nan going for the KO. Big shot from Yan Jiao Nan. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm not going to lie, guys. Yan Jiao Nan was coming through with the fits. She was coming through with the outfits this week. Two technical maestros. Zhang Weili can't get the takedown. Two technical maestros. Look at those striations. Holy shit. Look at those striations from Zhang Weili. Why no golden gloves? Apparently, they're not doing any of the new gloves until UFC 302. I don't know why they're waiting until 302, but they're not doing it till then. Imagine a heavyweight fight here instead. Imagine Gon versus Pavlovich was the feature fight, and then Holloway Gagey was the co-main, I know. Yeah, about to get a stink fest. In Honolulu, it's crazy here. Let's go, Max. Shout out to all the Hawaiians in the chat, dude. That's got to be great. I'm feeling like an honorary Hawaiian tonight with that outcome, but yeah. Shout out to all the Hawaiians. How many of you guys are here in the chat? I bet if I were to ask, a lot of people would cap about it, but... Thank you for the $2. I was about to say it must be late there. No, it's actually like the day. It's what, like 4 p.m. over there? 6 p.m.? Why are you pumping the brakes on this KO, kid? Pumping the brakes on this KO? What are you talking about? Like, that wasn't the best KO ever. Gagey's been put out. You know, it was a good KO, but 
it wasn't like against the dominant champion last second. We didn't think it was going to happen. I just think there have been better KOs, but it was a nasty KO. It was a great KO. It's one of the best of all time, for sure. You said it's not the best ever? It is not the best KO ever. Listen, I love Max Holloway and I love the BMF fight. It was a sick fight, but like Kamar Usman getting knocked out in the fifth round against Leon Edwards was crazier. It just was. Is he knocking out Pereira for me? I'm being honest. Is he KOing Pereira? I hate that KO. But that was one of the best KOs ever too. I think that's up there as well. Both are up there. Like, I think the fact that it was at the last second makes it a lot cooler, right? The fact that he knocked him out cold is really cool, but there have been a lot of out cold KOs. Face planting is a little bit better than the Kamar Usman wide eye. So the face plant helps down. Holloway chose to put his win on the line. True. Leon was down and Holloway chose to put his win on the line. That is true. But for me, if anything, the guy that's losing down and not expected to win has a more crazy unexpected KO. Holloway was winning. Like if Holloway was losing the fight and then knocked out Gagey, it'd be a little bit different. But I actually kind of think it's more shocking when the guy that's losing, that no one expects to win, gets it last second. I think that's kind of the more shocking type of KO. This is a competitive fight. I don't mind this co-main, guys. We're, we're chilling right now. But yeah, great decision from the brass to, to really make... Oh, nice crafty throw from Zhang Wei Li. Let's see what Yan Jiao Nan can do. This is big. If Yan Jiao Nan gets up to her feet, that's a big moral victory. I know I, I missed a couple donos. I'm going to get to him. That fight was the true definition of a BMF. Knocked him out at the buzzer. I know. Thank you for the 500 KES. This is literally the greatest card of all time. Just wish we didn't have any WMMA fights next. And Volk's win don't count. Oh, Volk's wins don't count anymore because Holloway just got to win. It's the opposite. They count way more. Oh, she's going to sub her. She's going to sub her in the first. Please put us out of our misery. Oh, she's done. She's done. Submission first round. Submission first round. Is she going to go to sleep? She's good. Wow, she's tough. Literally a tough cookie. Damn, she is tough as fuck. She is tough as fuck. She's good. She's good. Don't stop the fight. Don't stop the fight. <laughs> I think they were about to. They were going to really fuck it up. You got to give her respect for that. That's actually a cool moment. No, not robbed. She didn't tap. Saved by the bell. 100%. That is clean. You don't rob someone from a moment to get back into the fight. Damn. She's screwed. Look at her face. She looks like she just got KO'd. Cheater Wei Li. Why is Wei Li cheating? It doesn't matter if she's out. She survived. It doesn't matter if she's out. She didn't tap. She got it right up to her feet. If the ref doesn't step in, you're not fucking saying, oh, wait a second. She's out. No. The ref didn't step in. Okay. Sorry. She's good. She was out. I don't give a fuck if she was out. That's like Robert Whitaker getting knocked out by Izzy in the first round. It doesn't matter. It was at the buzzer. It was at the end. Good from the ref. Amazing from the ref. You, you don't take someone's grit and shit on them with a, oh, let's stop it after the fact. She looked a little bit, you know, out of it. No, you don't do that. You, you give her the respect for fighting through that. Amazing. Now she's still in here. And now it's entertaining. Who cheated? Zhang? Who cheated? How did Zhang Weili cheat? Oh, Weili held past the bell? Eh, it's not a big deal. She held like one second extra. Cheaters galore? Oh yeah, Holloway did land a couple eye pokes. Oh! Gagey's excuse. There it is. There's Gagey's excuse. Next time he fights, I did get eye poked a couple of times. To be fair, he did get eye poked a couple times. Ragdolled. Zhang Weili ragdolling her. Nice! She's going to choke her out a second time. If she dies, she dies. Hope you guys noticed that whenever you talk crap about WMMA, 
people bring up either Carl Rosa, Aldana, Zhang versus Joanna, which are the only two good WMMA fights over four years. True. People do bring up the very select few ones. Bro, they'll say things like, bro's never seen Joanna versus Zhang, man. But Zhang is totally mogging her on the ground. Hey, at least I'm going to get this one right. So how am I doing on picks? Oh, fuck. I'm not doing that well. I think I might be like six and six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five. I'm six and five if, if Zhang wins this. I'll be six and five. Hopefully we end the night seven and five. Max may have surpassed Aljo. I don't care if it's 155. Aljo? I don't know why people think Aljo is like so high up on the GOAT list. Do you guys not count dominance? Aljo was not. Oh, Aldo. <laughs> Aldo, you're saying. Thank you for the two bucks. Yeah, maybe. On the all-time list? I don't know. It's close. That, that was a huge win for Max. I think that might even put him top 10 all-time with that win over Gagey. Because Gagey was on a win streak. Yeah, it's close. What's... Yeah. Lightweight division getting excited? I know. That's why I wanted Benoit to win. That's why I wanted Max to win. People say, what, you're saying they're not exciting? Of course they're exciting. Oh, yeah, she might TKO over here. Oh, she might TKO over here. Of course those guys are exciting, but we need new blood. I'm tired of the same three stooges fighting each other. Dude, Zhang Wei Li is ripping her apart, dude. She is ripping her apart. Yeah, it's going to be a TKO. The ref's going to step in. Saying Willie's going to get it done by TKO. Dominance, bro. Zhang Willie is, is an absolute tough cookie here. Oh, here's the choke. She might not get it. I don't know. I feel like that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. Zero strikes for Yan Zhao Nan. That's rough. I'm telling you, Zhang might be the only one that could beat my ass. <laughs> Uh, who wins? I already answered that. <sighs> Could Justin walk out of the locker room right now and beat Zhang? Yes, I think Justin Gagey could beat Zhang with a couple of the hard low kicks right now. Yes. Actually, I don't know. That's a good one. What do you guys think? Could Justin Gagey beat Zhang Weili if he walked out of the locker room right this second? Oh, Zhang reverses. Nice. I'm sorry, uh, Yan reverses it. But Zhang Wei Li is getting out of this easily. He would? I think Gagey might be able to beat her. If Gagey fought Zhang Wei Li right now. <laughs> yes. I think so. I think so. I don't know if Zhang Wei Li can knock him out. Like, listen, I, I know the chin suffers, but it's not like Gagey's just going to get KO'd by Zhang. Unless he just lets her hit him. I think Gagey wins. Yeah, I think Wei Li might beat me in a fight. I don't think that's that shocking. I've said, they're, they're, listen, Zhang Wei Li is on a whole other level than most of these women. Who is more big mad, Ilya, Duster, or Volk? Oh, Volk's happy right now. Why would Volk be mad? Volk beat this guy three times. Why would he be mad? He probably has a lot of respect for Max and wants him to win. Um, I'm sure, why would Ilya be mad? Ilya is literally the champ. <laughs> why? Because he's jealous of Max having a big moment? Uh, maybe Dustin? Because he's never been able to school Gagey like that. I think Max beats up Dustin too. Does Lucas Tracy use Stream East or pay-per-view? I get the pay-per-view. Thank you for the two bucks. 
Uh, this made Makachev's win against Volk look better. It did. Yeah. It made Taporia's win over Volk look better, didn't it? Made everyone's win over Volk look better. Made Volk's wins over Holloway look better, too. But you know what? Aside from that, Holloway's just still working his way up to the top. Holloway could, if he wins like two more fights in a row against the right guys, he could pass Volk on the all-time list. Max Holloway's power definitely went up 100%. His power did go up for sure. Um, bro, I'm so grateful to experience this with you all. Thank you for the two CHF. This is probably the best fight card ever, especially with the results that we've been getting. Yuri KO. Charles losing was a stinging blow. Charles losing kind of sucked, but still. I can deal with it. At least Charles didn't get brutally slept. Fluke KO'd. At least it was like, you know, a bit of a competitive fight. And the way that Charles fought, honestly, he deserves to lose. Like, how are you going to fight scared against a pillow puncher like Armand on the back foot? So, I'm not that upset about it. Whoa! Zhang is swinging big. I'm going to take a piss until the main event. To be honest, this is not that bad. I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing right here. Nice shot from Zhang. This fight's not over. But Zhang is... Oh! Whoa! Zhang Weili got knocked down. Big knockdown for Yan Zhao Nan. But Zhang is fighting for her life. She's doing a really good job at regaining her composure. Do not turn into Gilbert Burns. Strong kicks from Zhang. I guess they don't have to worry about these going into the balls. They can go crazy with them. Okay, get up to your feet. Take her down, get up to your feet, and get a takedown. Do, do, do. Get up to your feet. Get up to your feet. Holy shit. <laughs> what is this, dude? What are these noises, man? Tough cookie noises. Oh, my bad, the clock. I, I forgot about the clock. We'll, we'll make sure it works next round. If it even gets there. Zhang has to go for the takedown. She's not looking that great on the feet. She's been finished before. She just got dropped. And Yan's looking dangerous right now. Zhang's got to close that distance. Get her to the mat. Hard body kick for Zhang Wei Li. It's a good fight. Honestly, it's a good fight. Oliver's legacy, I know. Further and further away from lightweight goat status. Zhang Wei Li has to shoot. Oh! Big elbow from Zhang Wei Li. <clears throat> you want some? Thank you for the $2. I appreciate that. Da -da 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 -da. Thank you so much. Oh, whoa. Big takedown for Yan. Yan is starting to take over this round. It's been nothing but dominance. Two 10-8 rounds for Zhang. Now, uh, it looks like Zhang's eyes are swollen. Yan is building her way into this fight. Zhang, women's BNF, uh, she's not looking like it right now. And honestly, I feel like you have to be a slugger to get the BMF. This is getting interesting. What is your specific prediction for this fight? I went with Zhang Wei Li 49-46 or 50-45. Smelling salts, thank you for the two bucks. Jalen Turner got the best KO ever. Oh! Oh, I thought that was a knockdown. I thought it was a knockdown. Jalen Turner got the best KO ever. Does he? Oh, over Bobby? No, that was not an amazing KO. Just a late stoppage. The C belt. Thank you for the two dollars. Dozen. I appreciate that. Do you think Valentina is the women's BMF at least before she lost the belts? Fuck no. She's not the women's. Are you kidding me? That's the style plays into it. Valentina had boring decisions. She had like a heavy 
safety grappling style as well sometimes. She had a couple KOs over cans, but I would not say that she was the BMF. BMFs are people that go out there and put on wars and are not afraid to take risks. Like Holloway, pointing down to the canvas, taking risks, last 10 seconds. Holloway put his win on the line. The guy Gagey KO'd is fighting Islam, so cruel. Did they make that fight? I hope that they didn't. That'd be a shame. That is cruel. That is honestly brutal for Justin Gagey. Let's see. Nice. Holloway gets it done. Big knockdown. Oh, uh, wow. Here's Aljo's excuse. We got it done tonight. Solid performance. I truly expected to do better. So I was a bit hard on myself. I need to go back and watch the fight to see where I can improve. Uh, even when my opponent isn't presenting windows to me. It's about you taking opportunities and taking risks and looking for them. This idea my opponent just didn't give me anything. Like, bro, don't fucking blame it on your opponent. Like, you can take risks too. It was a good performance, but this whole, like, you know, blame it on Calvin Cater for making it boring. Aljo's going to do that, I bet. He's going to blame it on Cater. He's going to say, like, bro, like, this guy was just uh, stinking it up. What was I supposed to do? Like, maybe throw some ground and pound. But I'm happy that Aljo won. I'd much rather Aljo win than any of these other guys. Aljo versus Volk. Make it happen. With every max KO, that makes Volk the GOAT. True. It makes Volk even look better. I agree. MMA is beautiful, isn't it? It absolutely is. Thank you for the two bucks. John Bird. I appreciate that. Eat your words. How dare you doubt Max? Uh, okay. They'll say that about everyone. How dare you doubt Gagey? Remember they were saying that? Don't doubt Gagey. Going into the Poirier fight? People get doubted. That's how the game works. People can pick against other guys. Uh, holy hell, you're like 25 seconds behind. Am I actually 25, second 25 seconds behind? No, I'm on time. I'm, I forgot the clock. My bad. He might win. Zhang is gassing. Oh, another knockdown for Yan. Holy shit. Why is she not able to get the grappling exchanges going? Yeah, I might get this one wrong too. Shout out to O'Kane. Hey, shout out to O'Kane. Thank you for the two bucks. Unironically a good fight. It is a good fight. I actually want to start paying attention. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I need to be on point with the clock. Zhang is going to reverse it. And here we get a Zhang Weili moment. Three minutes, 42 seconds on the clock. It's going to be big for Zhang. She's back on top. But Yan is working her way up. Zhang is starting to slow down. If she's not able to gain control here, she might lose a decision. No, but she gets her down again. I'll start the clock uh, in the next round, guys. If I start it now, we're going to be you know, off in the beginning of the fifth round. So I'd rather it be perfect in the fifth. And people said Amavov had bad cardio because he tried to finish Delidze. Really? I mean, Amavov doesn't have the best cardio. But he did go for some finishes, for sure. Best MMA channel on YouTube. I'm a Glazer. KO of the year, Max. Thank you for the support. Thanks for the two bucks. KO of the year so far, 100%. Without a doubt. It's going to be hard to beat that. This is like Nunez versus Pena. One, Zhang gassed for the finish. Well, she's controlling her right now, and she's not getting totally dog-walked, and she might even win this round. She's winning this exchange. So if Zhang gets the takedown in the fifth, she wins a decision. And she had 10-8 rounds. First round was a 10-8. Second round was a 10-8. Two 10-8 rounds. How are you going to beat her by decision if she's got two 10-8 rounds on you? Yan may have won a round, but... Hard to come back from a deficit like that, unless you get a finish. My stream froze right as Justin got knocked out. That's why you don't risk streaming it on these weird websites. And arguably should have been ended round two. Arguably should have been ended. I agree. If I, you know, some refs may have stopped it, but you know what? Good that they didn't because Yan's still in this fight and she's had moments and she's even won a round. Round two wasn't a 10-8. I mean... Zhang was, I think, up 
58 strikes to zero in round two? I think you're saying round one, there was almost a finish. It was a 10-8. Yes, it was. 50 strikes, significant strikes to zero? That is 100% a 10-8. Look at this. Zhang is beating the fuck out of her again. Charles lost, I know. It's rough. We're going to have to deal with it, though. Smush fest. You know what? This is a better fight than Zhang's performance against Lamos. It's better than that. It actually is a good fight. And Zhang is actually throwing shots on the ground. She's making it entertaining. Look at this. She's beating the fuck out of her. Yan had a nice little round three comeback, but no cigar. This is Aljo. This is not Aljo, but women. Do you guys even watch the fights? Like, do you really think Aljo had anything similar to this? No. Aljo was throwing little pitter pat shots. Zhang Weili is actually like throwing lots of ground and pound. Has gotten close to submissions and had a 10-8. Aljo couldn't come close to this level of dominance. Uh, Lucas, what's fight of the night so far? Um, Miller versus Green. You know, I, I don't think they should give it to Max versus Gagey. I could see the UFC giving it to Max Gagey, but that's not fight of the night. Outside of the fourth round, I know it was like a five-round fight and all that, but outside of the fourth, it was not very competitive. Like, I think that's maybe performance of the night, but not fight of the night. It's knockout of the night, maybe. But it should only get one bonus. What are you going to do? Performance of the night, knockout of the night, and fight of the night? 900k to max? You could, but I don't think they should. They should spread it out. I'd say KO of the night, Max Holloway, or performance of the night. I, I don't think they should give him both. But if you want to be honest, that was the KO of the night, and it was the performance of the night. I would say you could also give KO of the night or performance of the night to Diego Lopez. Fight of the night, in my opinion, is Miller versus Green. But that also wasn't that competitive outside of a couple moments. Yuri versus Rakic is fight of the night. Yuri versus, yeah, yeah. Yuri versus Rakic, fight of the night. Good answer. Because Rakic dominated the first round and Yuri dominated the second. That's fight of the night, 100%. Classic Yuri performance too. That was my favorite fight, by the way. That was my favorite outcome. Because the thing is, Yuri was losing and then he got one big moment and he pulled it off and I trusted in him. He was, I think, the underdog going into this. Whereas Holloway was winning and, I mean, he was on his way to getting his hand raised anyway. So I wasn't as hyped for the finish, even though it was a great finish. Gagey dropped Max. He did. Doesn't matter what people say. It's like the whole Colby Covington didn't take down Usman. Covington took down Usman. Gagey dropped Max. What was it, the fucking wind? Of course he did. I don't care what the stats say. He clobbered Max upside the head on the equilibrium and sat his ass to the mat. So, Gagey got schooled either way. He had one moment. Not one moment, he had, he had one round. Gagey won the fourth, I believe. And he got the knockdown in that round too, right? But he lost every other round. It was 3-1 going into the fifth. Holloway would have won 4-1 or he got the KO. Max's leg kicks were weak. I don't think Holloway was really aiming to throw like hard low kicks though. Some of these fighters, they just aim for the bottom half of the leg, the weakest part of the leg, just to create a little bit of extra damage. Anyway, four minutes on the clock. I forgot about the clock. My bad. Sorry, guys. I filled you with the clock. I kind of need to go to the bathroom, but we're going to wait. Remember my stream crashed? Damn, we're at 90,000 total views right now. Well, I don't think we're going to go up uh, to 200,000 tonight, but it is what it is. Let's hope we uh, beat my Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis numbers. That'd be nice. Let's hope we have another eventful main event where there's something that's controversial. Actually, screw that. I don't want any controversy. A Jamal Hill win would be big. But yeah. Amazing win for Holloway.
515,000 likes. No one has ever schooled Gagey like that. We got to make a big deal out of it. Yep. Four rounds to one. Perfect predict, not perfect prediction, but decent prediction. Kind of easy prediction. But Zhang has been dropped in this fight, right? She's had some adversity. So we're going to be seven and five or six and five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we'll be seven and five after this. He took him to fluke school at Cheater University. <laughs> Holloway? Oh, you're coping with the fact that Gagey lost, huh? Yeah. He did land a couple eye pokes, but it was not a fluke, okay? People that slug with Holloway have been knocked out like that. He's the last guy you want to slug in the pocket with because that chin is undefeated. Really stupid decision from Gagey. That's a career ender. That is a legitimate career ender. With all the damage Gagey's taken, I say retire because what's Gagey going to do? Come back against a smudge grappler and get out grappled and submitted by a guy like Mateus? Because <laughs> I know Mateus can't submit people, but he would submit Gagey. It's just not worth it. You can either fight safe grapplers that are still going to dog walk you because of your lack of submission defense, or you could strike with the big boys that are going to knock you out after this. So I think it's over for Justin, guys. I think his career is done. And I, I hope that his team is smart enough to kind of let him know, hey, you're going to go in there and, and like be set up with the, the most dangerous chaotic strikers because that's who you are you're just engagey that's your brand the ufc is going to give you those type of fights is it worth it you're not going to get a title fight there's a log jam in this division hang it up hang it up gagey should fight connor and retire it would be pathetic if connor fought justin gagey fighting a guy that just got flatlined would be a joke that's the only guy he should come back for and you know what Connor might be able to pull it off. Probably not, though. I, I still think Higeji coming off of a KO is tough enough to beat Connor. But you never know. His chin might be gone forever. But yeah, he should retire. He took a lot of damage in that fight, too. So it's not just the KO. Like, he was getting his ass whooped. He got concussed a few times before then as well. You know what? I didn't even mind that fight. I kind of like the shitty co-main events from now and then. It wasn't shitty. There were a couple boring moments, but there were moments where Yan was hurting Zhang, and we thought that, holy shit, here's a comeback. Zhang almost had a submission. That was a moment. Zhang had a 10-8. I think it was an okay fight. I think it was an okay fight. And we get the recover from yelling and getting hyped up. Imagine if we just got right into an Alex Pereira fight. That'd be nice. But I almost think that the card would go by too fast. If this was Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill, the card would be over. It'd be over. We'd be done. We'd all be logging off and we'd all have a, you know, a big crash and energy and we'd go back to regular life. I kind of like the extension of the card. We still are excited for something big. And we feel like the night's pretty much over. Wait a second. Nope. Biggest fight of the night, actually. Arguably the biggest fight of the night. So I might stop crapping on the UFC for the WMMA co-main events. I actually don't mind it. I, I know what they're doing. I'm on to them. Is Max KOing Rufus the best moment in UFC history? Uh, it's up there. It is a satisfying KO. I do kind of feel bad for Gagey though. Because, listen, it'd be one thing if he got knocked out by volume and an overwhelming moment in round five. Wait a second. Didn't Holloway almost finish him in the fifth anyway? Holloway almost finished him twice in that round. I'm totally forgetting about that. Holloway had him up against the fence, badly rocked, and let him off the hook. That would have been really nice, but I kind of feel bad for Gagey because like, he was about to survive to a decision. He may have been given the mic to do a speech. Last second, he gets slumped out. That's the worst way to get knocked out. 
especially when you're losing. But think about all that damage. Got his ass whooped. Almost got finished in the fifth, too. And then gets slumped out cold. Hang it up. If Justin should retire, then so should Volk. I agree. I think Volk should retire, too. But you know what? Volk hasn't taken the same amount of damage as Gagey throughout his career. He's taken damage. But he's not gone to as many wars. So... It's not the same. And also, Volk has grappling. Like, this is the difference between Volk and Gagey. Gagey can't just have a safe fight against Mateusz Gamera because he know his lack of submission defense, right? Volk can have a safe fight against Aljamain Pillohan Sterling. Volk can have a nice, easy win over Bryce Mitchell. That's the difference. But I agree. I wouldn't mind if Volk retires. It'd be better than him coming back to fight Taporia. Thank goodness he doesn't have to fight Max again. Thank you for the 50 Norwegian Krone. Uh, they looked down at Islam's win. We saw what folded today. Gagey lost to a 45er who got beat by Volk three times, who Islam beat twice. I've been saying this, and I know that Max and Gagey is a different style. But people called me crazy when I said things like Volk would beat Gagey. He would outskill him. Volk would beat Poirier. He would outskill him. Okay, Volk gets outstruck. A little bit by a guy that has a submission threat and a grappling threat that's way better than Gagey and Poirier. But has a close fight with him still. Still has a really close fight with him. Man, 45ers are better than 55ers. We literally see the skill gap everywhere. We saw the skill gap with Aljo moving up. We saw the skill gap with Figueredo moving up. We see the skill gap with 45ers moving up. Makashev might go on to be the most dominant 55-pound champ ever. Makashev could still beat Max. The point that I'm making is, maybe Makashev dog walks all these lightweights. But when the featherweights move up, Connor wins a belt, Oliveira wins a belt, Poirier's beating peoples up, right? Featherweights do well. Gilbert Burns fights for titles when he moves up. Kamaru Usman gives Hamza Chemaev. Oh, I mean, both former welterweights. So there's that. That's why I want Kamaru to move up. Damn. I want Kamaru to move up because I think he could beat up a lot of 85ers. He would definitely whoop a guy like Brennan Allen. I think that's an easy fight. Why not move up and beat the guy that just won an arguable robbery? You win a couple fights up there, you're fighting for the belt. I think he could maybe beat Robert Whitaker. So maybe I'll pick Hamza to beat Whitaker, honestly. Maybe I'll change my pick. We'll see, though. <sighs> Five-rounder. If Hamza doesn't finish him, it's going to be a long night. Not the most dominant, but the best. Fair and, No, no, I know what you mean. Maybe not the most dominant, but the best lightweight ever. But to be fair, the reason why Islam Makhachev is not viewed as that dominant is because of the close fight with Volk. That's literally the only reason, which kind of proves my point even further. If Makhachev destroys Armand, let, let's do an Armand Makhachev poll. Let's do a poll. Speaking of Usman. Who wins, guys? There's Jorge. There's Mr. Miami, the goon of Miami. Hey, it's Mariano Rivera. Woohoo! There's Mariano Rivera. Nice. I didn't know Mo liked to go to baseball games. I mean, uh, UFC fights. You guys see that? Mariano Rivera's in the crowd? That's awesome. There's Mo at a UFC event. <laughs> um, welcome to my city. Welcome to my city. Me and Miami. Gang of Miami. The fights after don't feel as important as the people's main event. True. That is a little bit of a downside, right? After a good solid people's main event. That's true. When's the last time I felt like that? I guess with um kind of with uh Yuri and Pereira, but the stare down is about to be sick. Stare down's about to be epic, guys. What are your thoughts on Diego Lopez versus Taporia? That's the real future contender for Taporia. I know Holloway's still in the mix, but 
as for the new prospects, I'm thinking that that's the guy that will be Taporia's nightmare in the future. I'm not saying he beats him, but that is the fight. That's the Charles versus Makhachev of that division, basically, even though it's not really similar. Striking version. Actually, it's very similar. Well-rounded guys. It's not like Diego Lopez is just a grappler. It's not like Tapori is just a striker. They're both kind of a mix of both. I think that's the rivalry. Lop yeah, Lopez can't beat Ilya yet, but look at the power that he has. Vicious KO power. He's good in the clinch. Because those are the last two KOs that he's got. Clinch KOs with uppercuts. If Ilya Tapori gets caught up in the clinch, he it could be a bit of an issue. With his head hanging low, with the uppercuts coming in his direction... And uh, we don't know if he's just going to dog walk a guy like um, Lopez on the ground. But I'm starting to no longer have faith in these like special submission experts, these jujitsu guys against the wrestlers. Look at Charles versus Armand. Look at Charles versus Makashev, right? They just get controlled for the most part. What are some other examples of that? Lopez versus Evloev. Yeah, he got a couple of submission attempts, but for the most part, Evloyev was good enough to keep him on the ground. I trust in the wrestling. I trust in the wrestlers with the ground and pound over the submission experts. So that's a lesson that I'm learning. Hill TKO coming. I could see it. Drake bet on Alex Pereira, so it's definitely possible. Thank you for the three months membership, Zach. Armand versus Islam in June and Max versus Ilya in Spain. I want Max to stay at lightweight. He can always go back down to featherweight. He can always move back. He's just built himself up. He had the biggest win of his whole career. He's in the marquee division. He's in the money fight division. Stick it out. Like, is it really a good idea for him to just take all the weight off? And you know what? It, the weight cut to 45 is going to be even harder. Now that he's put on more muscle. I say test his luck at an Islam Makhachev fight. If that doesn't happen, if Armand's fighting Makhachev next, the worst, you know what? I know people want Makhachev to fight. I'm just going to say it. The worst thing that you can do right now at lightweight is giving Dustin Poirier a title shot, which will create a horrible log jam at lightweight. You give him a title shot, guess what? Max Holloway, no title shot on the horizon. Armand Tarikian, is going to get the next one. So when's Holloway going to get his? When's Armand going to get his? I say wait for Armand. Let's give it to Armand, and then let's give it to Max. Guess what you do with Max? Put him up against one of these other schmucks at lightweight that needs to get an ass whooping. Max versus Ilya needs to happen. I want it to happen. It'd be a sick fight. But it's there. It's there for him. Call out Islam Makhachev. He called both of them out. So I'd rather him fight Makhachev. To be honest, Makhachev probably wins. And then you have Makhachev fight Armand. But Dustin Poirier getting the title fight is just going to ruin the division. It's going to give it a logjam. So Oliveira should face Gamrot next. Oh, Gamrot is the fight to make for Oliveira, yeah. Gamrot's not beating Oliveira. Gamrot can't hurt a fly on the ground. But maybe Oliveira shits his pants again and gets controlled, to be honest. <sighs> Oliveira and these wrestlers. You can't pick him anymore in these fights anyway guys i'm gonna take a piss i'll be right back Here we go. Here we go. Thank you for the $20. Congrats on 81K. Thank you. 
Thank you for the $20, Lloyd. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Here comes Jamal. What's he walking out to? What's he coming out to? Oh, did you see the video Jamal posted on his Instagram of the Joker? That might be the biggest mistake of his entire life. Thank you for the five bucks, Diego. I got healed by round two KO, putting Alex out and seeing all the Alex fangirls cry. I got a feeling, I got the same feeling I had with Aspinall and Pavlovich, one, two down the middle. That's what I was originally going with. Let's see if Hill makes me regret picking against him. Here he comes. Here comes the champ. I would honestly love Hill to win. I mean, I want Pereira to win too, but this is a win-win for me. Win-win for me. Win-win situation. Ah, oh, shit. I got both of my picks wrong for the individual prediction video so far. This would be the third. Ah, oh, fuck. If I get it wrong. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. Copying Jones? He's not copying Jones, bro. This is like, he, he's the ex-champ. This is the most fitting song to walk out to. The audio is working, bro. The audio is literally working. 84% of people are going with Makachev. There's Jamal's, damn. Good work, Jamal, bro. All right, let's end the poll. Let's end the poll. 84%. Just saw Cinnamon Paulo in the crowd. Really? I didn't see him. How about Holloway? How about Holloway, bud? What a win. Thank you for the five pounds, MMA guru. Dude, I'm happy that Holloway got it done. Way better than the schmuck Justin Gagey, Rufus winning. Great pick. Great pick. I should have switched my pick. I regret picking Holloway. My ego was too big to let me switch. All right, people were going to be like, you're copying MMA Guru and all this. You had an amazing pick. Good shit. I should have switched it up. Crazy card so far. Best card of the entire year. No, fuck the year. This is one of the best cards of all time. Fuck the year, bro. If only Charles won, but you know what? I say he deserved to lose. Not throwing his punches. Not letting his hands go. I'm kind of sick of Charles shitting his pants in front of these wrestlers, okay? Yuri winning, Alex Pereira winning would be the cherry on top, but Yuri winning and Max getting a KO over the schmuck. I like it. No disrespect to the Gagey fans, okay? <laughs> but no more Gagey grunts are needed, all right? I'm happy Holloway, no, to be honest, the reason why I call Gagey a schmuck is because of the attitude that he has sometimes. And the reason I say that I don't really love his styles because I'd rather the guys with finesse get it done. It sucks to see your favorite fighters lose to a guy that's grunting in the octagon, you know, closing his eyes and grunting. Don't forget the clock. I'm not forgetting the clock. Gru's in-depth breakdown was 100% wrong. 100% wrong on what? He did predict Holloway to win via later KO, right? And you know what? Holloway was on the verge of winning in the fifth round by a, a nice swarming KO, and he left him off the hook. I actually think it was even better. Left him off the hook and got an even crazier, more viral KO. Here comes Pereira. Hi, you know. Hi, you know. Hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. I'm turning this up. Here comes Alex, the boogeyman. Jamal Hill standing outside the octagon. Damn. He's going to stare him down. We're about to get one of the best stare downs in UFC history. Here he is. Yeah. Let's go. Here he is. Woo.
Dude, they're not going to let him stand and block the octagon. What do you think this is? What's Jamal Hill looking for? A kiss? Jamal Hill is either going to have an all-time I'm him or an all-time bro thought he was him moment. Dude, he literally posted like a, a goofy-ass video of him doing the Joker thing on his Instagram today. Yeah, he's taking all the risks, 100%. Gagey is Brennan Schaub 2.0 on the mic. Nah, he's better than Brennan Schaub. Thank you for the $2, Mike Kessler. Keep Gagey's name out your mouth low, bro. All right, I'll take it easy on the Gagey fans. Here comes Alex. He's about to do it. Hey, 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 ha, ha, ha. Yeah! Woo! Knock this man out! Oh, he just bumped into one of the cameramen. Ah, Jamal Hill's getting hyped. It's time for Jamal to reclaim the belt. TKO win. We'll see. Thank you for the 20. Crone. We're about to get an even sicker stare down than the one that we got against Yuri. We might get the best stare down in UFC history right here, guys. Alex is looking like an absolute monster. There's Aspinall staring him down. Aspinall's mean mugging him. That's an intense stare from Aspinall. He's so salty before the fight. He's not salty, bro. <laughs> I hope you're kidding, but yeah. Salty? Dude, he's literally loading up on his salt levels. I see what you're saying. Jamal is fully saturated on salt. He got a couple blocks from Joe Piper's place. I'm pretty sure he stopped at Joe Piper's fridge this morning. Down to a couple blocks of salt. He could just grit through it like Yuri. He could just freaking bite down and, and make it work. It's possible. Sweet dreams, Poetan. Thank you for the two bucks, Marshall Yu. I can't wait for the stare down we're about to get, man. I cannot wait for the stare down we're about. I'm worried for Alex, too. I'm getting flashbacks to that awful night last year, man. But you know what? I like both guys, so. It's a win win. Hey, Lucas, bad news. Bubba Andy. Oh, no, not not Andy's. Oh, man, you shout him out. Shout out to Andy. So happy, but please don't laugh. No, seriously. Thank you for the 799, Craig Hutchinson. Shout out to Andy. Here's the stare down. Here it is. Here it is. Hand over. There we go. I think Jamal's, uh, he's starting to smile. <laughs> he's doing a walrus dance. Jamal's doing his walrus dance, man. That's hilarious. He's jiggling around the octagon with the freaking walrus belly. That's funny as hell. Ah, it wasn't as good of a stare down as Yuri and Pereira. Because Yuri had the freaking music, right? I mean, Pereira's got the music too, but... Yuri had some epic music that made it really sick. You laughed. I'm not laughing. Shout out to Andy. Uncle Andy. Thank you for the $2, Craig. Here we go. It wasn't as good of a stare down as the one we got from Yuri and Jamal. They're still staring at each other, though. Here we go, guys. 7.45. Oh, dude. These ads are always a buzzkill. I got you with the clock. Just going to watch the stare down. Dude, just stand still. I think Jamal should just stand still, bro. He looks nervous when he's, like, pacing around with Poetan just rooted into the canvas. Alex is winning the stare down. I think we've seen enough. We got to have the ref step in. Get ready for Alex to get sent to the Shadow Realm. All right, we'll see. We'll see. They zoom too much on Pereira? No, it's perfect, dude. Walrus maxing? He is walrus maxing. 
All right, here we go. Of the world. Introducing first. Here we go. What's your official pick? Um, honestly, either or, man. No, I'm going with Alex Pereira. Second or third round KO. Drake curse, maybe. We'll see. Jamal just said Shama. Poetan's doing the Irish jig. <laughs> He's doing the jitterbug. <sighs> Let's go! We're here. Main event time. UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Alex. Here we go. Stare down. I got the clock. Don't worry. I'm on it. Alex is dwarfing him. He is dwarfing him right now. Damn, dude. <laughs> Yo, I love how Jamal's freaking playing around, bro. Smiling at him, goofing around at him. He's going Joker mode at him. Here we go. I got the clock. Don't worry. Here we go. What did Rogan just say? We'll be here, baby. Here we go, round one. Here come the low kicks from Alex. Alex looking way bigger than Jamal. Lead kick to the leg of Jamal Hill, who is in southpaw. Low kick already from Pereira. Let's see if he throws his rear leg. Let's see what Jamal Hill's plan is. Nice kick from Jamal. Here comes a head kick. Any moment, Jamal's going to throw a head kick. He's going to whip one up there. Another kick from Alex. Hard low kick from Jamal. Let's see if Alex can check him. They're going ban for ban right now. Kick for kick. Alex looking massive in the cage. They go leg kick for leg kick again. Alex checked that one. Let's see how Jamal's movement looked. Alex misses a low kick. Man, my heart is racing right now. Mixes another, misses another kick. Jamal misses a left hand. Good jab to the body from Pereira. If Pereira stays patient, if Pereira stays patient and he just picks at the legs at a distance and gets this into the later rounds, he will win. He took a big shot from Jamal. Pereira's biting down on that mouthpiece. We'll see how his chin holds up. Hard low kick from Jamal Hill through a couple of them. Another kick from Alex Pereira landed there. Let's see if he can really sink one in there. Jamal's eating them well. Jamal holding his glove. Looking to win the outside foot battle. Jamal circling into that left hook. Jamal smiling at him. He's smiling at him now. Pereira's stalking him down. Low kick from Pereira lands. Right at the bottom of that leg. Nice jab for Alex. If these fans start fucking booing right now, head kick attempt from Jamal. You better not boo this. Nice jab from Alex. These guys have nasty power, bro. They, they can get the finish any second. Two minutes, 35 seconds on the clock. Nice body kick from Jamal. Jamal misses a couple of punches, misses the left hand. Pereira parries it. Nice jab to the body from Pereira and a low kick. Great approach so far from Alex. Check that one. Oh, nasty check. Another check from Alex. Nice little left hand to the body. Nice jab to the body from Pereira. 
Jamal's eating the kicks well. But um, Jamal's being very patient. And Pereira's doing a great job at blocking these with his arms. A little bit of a nut shot. Alex says it's all good, though. Alex says it's all good. Oh! He just dropped Jamal Hill! Brutal knockdown with the left hook! He's out cold! Alex Pereira knocks out Jamal Hill! Out cold! Flats on top of him! First round KO! Brutal knockout from Alex Pereira! Slubbed him out cold! Poetan has his first title defense! Styling on Jamal Hill. Easy work. Give him Magomed and Goliath next week. Sean Mohisan. Damn, dude. Knocked his ass out in the first. Jamal Hill is about to get an absolute clowning on Instagram. Absolute clowning on Instagram. For posting that Joker shit. Beautiful from Jamal. They both exchanged there. Are they giving him his black belt? What? Come on, that's ridiculous. Listen, you're giving him his black belt in what? Jiu-Jitsu for getting a left hook KO? It's a little bit silly, but either way, holy shit. Let's go and get the main event right. Every single pay-per-view main event. Lucas Tracy main event curse is over. Early KO for Alex Pereira, dude. I'm so happy that I fucking switched my pick. Let's see how he got caught. Was his rear hand down? Damn, that sucks for Jamal. Ah, he's gonna get clowned so much. Because he got smoked in that fight, man. Right after the potential nut shot. Here it is, too. Here it is, too. Boom. Boom. Bang. Bang. Boom. It was that rear hand. Oh, man. That was a nasty one. That's that left hook. Out cold. <laughs> he had his tongue out. Oh, damn. That's nasty. Couple of follow-up shots from Poeta. Pereira was pissed. Salty ass Pereira. Pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Woo. Made of that right, baby. Let's go. Shadow Realm. It's been a minute since we've seen Alex Pereira knock someone the fuck out. I like Jamal Hill, but I'm happy about that one. Nasty. He didn't even land that shit. I mean, he kind of landed it flush. Damn. Salty Jamal Hill gets KO'd stiff. Oh, my God. Those were nasty shots. He had his eyes rolling in the back. Pereira flaunted on him. Damn. First round KO. It's over. Over. Not fucking dead. Over. Like Joe Pfeiffer. The salt mines take an L tonight. Alex Pereira is an absolute monster. You know what? I think he beats Yuri Prohaska. I'm sorry. Y Yuri might not be able to grit through a, a fully primed 205 Alex Pereira. You know what? I say Alex Pereira is top 15 of all time right now. Weirdest celebration I've seen? Nah, that was just uh, that was just an I told you celebration. That's not a weird celebration. The black belt is a little bit weird, I'll be honest. I I'm not loving the fact that they gave him a black belt for a, a left hook. Like, how the fuck does that make any sense? I am happy I switched my pick. I'm real happy. I but I guarantee you people are going to go back to my original video where I said Jamal Hill might win, and they'll, like, pretend that that's the fucking real one. But <laughs> Yeah! Let's go! Alex is back with a KO! Woo! First defense, baby. All the good outcomes, except for Charles. But you know what? Charles didn't even throw his hands. Look. Let's see if Alex's kids dap him up, bro. Nah, nah, they're not dapping up Salty Mall Hill. I thought they were about to dap up Salty Mall Hill. And listen, it's rough for Jamal. Damn, he got absolutely bombarded in that one. So much for Pollyanna Viana being a total succubus, but yeah. I guess she wasn't. I'm happy. Hey, Alex Pereira, broken heart Alex Pereira, right? Heartbroken Alex? Gets it done. Jamal was sent to the Shadow Realm. There were so many people in this chat saying, watch this. Jamal's about to knock him the fuck out. Let's hear what he says. 
Let's hear who he calls out. I'd say Magomed. It can't be Yuri. You can't do Yuri versus this guy right away. It's Magomed and Kalayev, and that's it. Nutshot on Alex. Listen, I don't know if I would need to see UFC 301. It's not happening. Come on. We're not in um, peaches and cream world. It's probably going to be International Fight Week. Alex Pereira, International Fight Week. Just make him the main event of all the big cards. I'm good with it. That's a real champ. <laughs> People talk about Izzy. Hey, I hate to be the Habib guy. He, hey, he passed Habib, but to be honest. To be honest, at this point, does Alex Pereira have a better resume than Izzy? He's one and one with him, and he's had like a bunch of really good title wins. How did he feel about what coming into the fight? And also, people are going to be saying it wasn't the best version of Jamal. Fair enough. He was coming off of an injury. But, I mean, was it really the movement of Jamal Hill that made him get KO'd? I just think he traded with Alex Pereira. They both traded big hooks. The Pereira fans are going to... I, I think they have every right to hype this man up after knocking Jamal Hill out easily in the first two minutes into it first round ko he could have knocked izzy the fuck out bro you really rushed that magomed is the next guy guys i'm gonna get to the donos i just want to enjoy this for a minute i just want to watch the speech a little bit and then i'm gonna read the donos UFC 300 has got to be the best card ever. Man, that's a long speech from Alex. He didn't pass Habib. He did not pass Habib with this. I don't want to hear it. But he's definitely a top 15 of all time, maybe. Wait, so who did he call out? Who did he call out? Did he call anyone out? I guess he didn't call out Magomed. But that's the fight to make. And to think, Jan Blahovich almost beat this guy. He said Brazil, huh? Nice. I don't mind it, but I don't think that's going to happen. That's like a month away. You really think Alex is going to turn around that fast? You, you really think Magomed's going to have a training camp that's like three weeks? I don't think so. Oh, Gaziev. I got to watch that fight back. I got to watch the final moment back right now. Damn. Hill just got embarrassed, dude. All right, let me watch the finish again. Damn. Thank you for the two New Zealand dollars. If he beats Magomed and Tom, he's above Habib. He doesn't even need to beat Tom and Magomed. He just needs to beat one of them. If he beats one of them, I'll say, okay, maybe he's above, he's above Habib. But one extra win? Like, come on, dude. Uh, I'm an Izzy Glazer, but he just passed him all time. Yeah, Alex just passed Izzy all time. And that's not to throw shade at Izzy. I'm just saying, like, I think Alex and Max worked their way into the top 15 of all time with these. Jamal Hill, Yuri Prohaska, Jan Blahovich, Adesanya, Sean Strickland. Yeah, man. I mean, those are amazing wins. All right, here's the nut shot. Here's the nut shot. Here, here it is. I'm just going to watch this nut shot over again because I want to see the finish. The cup shot caught Hill off guard. Mm, not really. I mean... Yeah, he had like a nice fist bump moment, but still. You can't have a lapse of judgment in there. What about Pollyanna? There's the nut shot. There's the nut shot. Okay, let's see. Let's see. He's going to exchange with him. He's going to exchange with him. Boom. So what was it? Was it the lead hand of Hill or the rear hand? I think it was the lazy jab. Was it the lazy jab or a hook? Ah. Oh. 
So Jamal Hill threw his rear hand. He threw his rear hand. Backing up, backing up. Yeah. Yeah. Jamal Hill. Got caught on that open side. Trying to exchange hooks with Alex. Boom. I got to watch that again. I need to see this over and over and over again. Here we go. Couple seconds after, boom! Damn. Hey, Jamal was good. It was those follow-up shots that really put him out cold, though. Yeah, it was the follow-up shots that really got him out of there. Jay-Z's not better? Oh, not even close. Not even close, man. So, what did we do on the card? I think I went 8-5. and five. Not bad. We got the main event right, that overrated left hook. I mean, I literally picked him to win, but okay. Um... Sad to see Charles lose. He looked pretty good. I mean, his grappling looked okay, but he did not look good on the feet at all. Thank you for the 10 bucks. Charles looked like shit on the feet. He looked scared. He had a, a little pillow-handed guy walking him down with jabs. I mean, th that was not what I wanted to see from him. Where was the forward pressure? Where was the constant attacks on the feet? I didn't see it. Armand has nothing against Islam. Yeah, I think that Islam Aksha beats him. Because he's not going to get out grappled like Charles. He's not going to accept, you know, bottom position. And he has much better takedown defense. And, um, but we'll see. We'll see how Islam Makhshev looks against a guy that he can't just take down. We'll see. But I think he's got the power advantage. <sighs> Thank you for the 20 Norwegian Krone. Pereira versus Ankalaev, 301 main event. I like it, but I don't think it's realistic. I like it for Alex, but Ankalaev rushing into a training camp, I don't think he's going to do that. No one's taking that fight. They may have some, like, Steven Ersig weird opponent that steps in, right? They may have, like, a... Who else is relevant? A Khalil Roundtree or some shit. But come on, you're really going to give a title fight to Khalil Roundtree? Yuri's not going to take it. Ugh, thank goodness Yuri won. Yuri and Alex won. And Max. I could deal with Charles not winning. We had the three best guys winning on the card. Max... Yuri and Alex. I like Charles. I'm just saying that it's easy for me to accept the loss because of how horrible he looked on the feet. Like, he just didn't go after it. Lucas called it. I called the left hook KO, yeah. And still, four pay-per-views into the year. Duplessis, Taporia, O'Malley, and... Alex Pereira. The last five pay-per-views I've got right. I also picked Leon. So, as far as main events go, we're on a hot streak. And I'm going to pick uh, Alexander Pintoja to get it done over Ursig as well. I'm not really going to look at his little left hook KO over Matt Schnell and just think he's going to beat the granite chin smudge man himself. Alex even beat the Drake curse, which is crazy. He beat the Lucas Tracy curse. He beat the Drake curse. Alex is a powerful man. He's Thanos. He is literally the built different guy. Oh, we got to go to Jamal Hill's Instagram. We got to go to Jamal Hill's Instagram. I'm not going to comment anything. I, I don't think you guys should comment anything. Like, don't shit on him too hard. Because I don't think it's... I would never go to a fighter's page to, like, you know, trash them when they're down. Oh, he just posted something. Tap in fight day. Damn. Oh, no. The Joker never wins. Ah, shit. Jamal Hill, bro. He posted this Joker video. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Did you see this shit? This was the worst idea. It just to get KO'd in like two minutes. Feel bad for him, man. Alex even beat the Drake curse. Beat the Drake curse. Beat all the curses, man. Everyone says Alex is a one-trick pony with the left hook. And they get in there with him and get knocked out by the left hook. True. And you know what? He's not a one-trick pony. He has nasty body work. He has really good kicks. Leg kicks. Head kicks. Amazing body shots. Good jab. He is certainly not a one-trick pony. He is the most skilled fighter in that The most skilled striker in the upper weight classes, 100%. Jamal arguably won on damage. 
To be fair, I could see them giving it to Jamal. I could see them giving it to Jamal. <laughs> so much for salting it through, right? I'm so happy that I changed my pick, guys. What's next for Charles? I respect your opinion. Thank you for the $10. Mr. Chernoff, thank you so much. I say Benoit St. Denis or Mateus Gamrot, someone like that. Gamrot's a good fight for him, but that's only because he can't really hold people to the mat. But Charles still may just shit his pants. If he's not knocking out Pillow Hands Armana, I can't be so confident in him beating Gamrot either, but one of those guys. Or a striker, but what strikers would you give him? What are you going to do, him versus Hooker? I don't think that makes sense. Him versus Poirier too? I don't think so. Him versus Max? No. He doesn't deserve that fight right now. Alex Pereira versus John Jones, who wins at heavyweight? Oh, Jones takes him down. Jones is not standing with him on the feet. He would never entertain that. Um, so Jones. I just want to K off of Max. Uh, Zhang decision and Alex KO. Nice. A parlay. $1,000 parlay. Thank you for, for spreading some of the cheddar. Thank you for the $1. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people had their parlay destroyed by that Jalen Turner fight earlier tonight. That was the parlay killer for a lot of people, but congrats. Did you see Jamal Hill change his Instagram bio to 13-1 and one before the fight? No, he did not change it to 13-1 and one before the fight. There's no way. Also, he is... Wait a second. Jamal Hill is... What, what did he say? 14-1? and one? Well, he is only a guy with one loss. I respect it. Change it before the fight. All you have to do is either add it to 14 or do 13-2. and two. That one loss is not him losing to Pereira. It's him losing to Paul Craig, by the way. But yeah. Alex didn't pass Izzy. Uh, the last face-off, Alex got knocked out cold. If anything, Izzy's stock went up. No, it doesn't work like that for them, though. This is not Volk stop goes up when Holloway wins because they're one and one. Okay? Izzy's stock doesn't go up when Alex beats the guy that Izzy couldn't beat. Okay? Alex knocks out Sean Strickland, beats Jan Blahovich. That doesn't really help Izzy's legacy. And also, they're one and one. So, yes, you're right. In a way, Izzy stock goes up. In a way, it does, but they're still even. They're one and one. That's all I'm saying. Don't say, oh, brother, this guy. This is not an oh, brother, this guy moment. Okay? <laughs> this is not the usual, this guy's stock goes up if, you know, this is the one that has the wins over the guy that just got the KO. No. They're one and one. Alex Perez is just doing better work outside of their rivalry. That's the reason why I think he's kind of passing Izzy. Who is your pick for the bonus? Um, Holloway KO of the night. Pereira performance of the night. It's kind of hard to go with Diego Lopez performance of the night now, isn't it? <sighs> they should just give the... Ah, fuck it, dude. Stop being so cheap, UFC. Give a bunch of these guys 300. It's one night. Be friendly. Be nice. One night. Give them some 300,000. Give Diego a bonus. Give Holloway a bonus. Give Pereira a bonus. Give Yuri a bonus. Those are all the bonuses you need. And Bo Nickel. Give Bo Nickel a bonus. I mean, come on. We got to give him some serious respect for that. I'm joking. <sighs> Bro, no way. He beat the Lucas Tracy curse and the Drake curse at the same time. How do you think he does against Ankalaev? I think he knocks Ankalaev out. I know Ankalaev's going to be shooting takedowns, but Ankalaev's going to be getting his legs chewed up. And he is... I believe, is he a southpaw? He might be a southpaw, but Pereira will make it work. I think Pereira knocks him out. I don't think he's going to get finished on the ground. His ground game's getting better. I think Ankalaev might be winning the fight, but I would go with Pereira. I think Pereira beats everyone in that division. Yes, Jamal Hill was coming off of an injury, but I still think it's an impressive win. Thank you for the five bucks. Um, thank you for the five bucks. Who wins? All right, you answered this. I got Ankalaev by penetration. Thank you for the five bucks, Ignacio. Yeah, I think uh, Pereira hurts him to the legs. Eventually tags him on the feet. Ankalaev can dog walk a guy like Johnny Walker, but it's just a different level of striker. And Jan Blahovich was outstriking him too in the middle of that fight, mostly with the low kicks. 
And we saw what Alex did to Blahovich with the low kicks. Lucas, after this loss to Armand, did this affect Oliveira's claim to lightweight goat? Oh, 100%. If he had beat Armand, he'd still be tied at the very least. But no, he, he's not the lightweight goat. No, there's no way you could make that argument anymore. And I don't think you could make the argument before tonight. He needed to win to at least be tied. I was saying he needed two wins, one over Armand, one over Makashev. But he just set himself back. I think if Jan proves he's not washed, you can put Alex ahead of Izzy. If Jan wins his next fight, but, you know, he's coming off of a bad shoulder injury. So if he's washed after the bad shoulder injury, then I don't think that proves that he was washed when he fought Alex. Alex beat Jan. It was a close fight. Fair enough. But I actually think he beat him. And I picked Jan. So, uh, you know, I, I think I broke that fight down in my recap a while ago. I think there's a good argument that Alex wins. Does Ursic have a good chance against Pantoja? He has a decent chance with straight shots, but Pantoja has such a good chin. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. So we don't really know what Ursic's chin is like. He's been rocked before by much lesser competition. His wrestling's good, though. But hey, he was also controlled by a, a much lesser grappler, too, in his fight before Matt Schnell. I think Yuri could potentially beat Poetan. The first fight was kind of an early stoppage. Yes, first fight was not kind of an early stoppage. Just because Alex won tonight does not mean that I changed my opinion on that. Yeah, it was an early stoppage. For sure. But that left hook is technically kind of undefeated, is it not? Like, Alex Pereira has beat everyone he's wanted to. He's beat everyone. Only one guy has even come close, and that's Izzy. And guess what? <laughs> He's gotten beat three times by it, okay? Izzy just happened to get one, but he's lost a few times. Thank you for the 99 cents. Chapman MMA, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Check Hill's bio. I'm on it. Did he change it just now again? What a night. Good shit, Lucas. Thank you for the $3. Let's see if he'll change his bio. And no, he didn't change his bio. But I'm looking at this Joker video. Let's see if the fans are commenting on his page right now. I don't see any new comments. I don't see any new comments <laughs> from Jamal Hill. The champ is here. Oh, they're probably all in this one. You've just been humiliated in front of the whole world. I hope your children sees this. Dude, these fans are brutal. I don't understand this. Why are people so insistent on like rubbing it in a fighter's wounds? I get it. Like I get celebrating when someone you don't like loses. I get that. We're okay to do that as fans. But I think going to someone's page to shit on them is a little bit too much. I think that's too much. I knew Max would beat Justin. I posted it on my ex account before hand. It was obvious. And bro, Hill sucks. He was talking mad stuff. He beat an old man. He was talking a lot, but he's still a good fighter. It's just Alex caught him with a really beautiful shot. It was somewhat competitive while it lasted, but still. He did kind of get bulldozed either way. Thank you for the five bucks. Congrats on the Max pick. It, it was not the most obvious thing, but still. I really regret not changing my pick to Max. I was thinking about doing that all week. But my ego got in the way. I wanted a win-win situation, though. I wanted to, if I pick Gagey, at least I'll be happy to get my pick right. Thanks for the content, man. Thank you for the five bucks, Teve. I appreciate that. I'm going to make a video right after this. What fight would you want me to do an individual breakdown on? I think Holloway and Gagey is the big story. I think that's the big story. Alex and Hill is a big one too, but it's kind of hard to make like a 15 minute video on Alex knocking Jamal Hill the fuck out. Max versus Justin was the coolest thing I've seen in my life. It's definitely up there as far as MMA moments go. I wouldn't say it is for me, but it's definitely a good one. That was a nasty amount of damage Gagey took, right? Almost got finished in the fifth. Max let off the gas. And then still got the nasty slump out moment KO. Thank you for the five bucks. Zaid, I appreciate that as well. Thank you for the five bucks. Andrew, thank God Armand didn't get robbed. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I was kind of happy when I heard a scorecard for Al I mean for Charles, but you're right. It's good that Armand didn't get robbed. He deserved that win. He definitely won. And Charles didn't deserve the win. All right. Charles frustrated me big time. If Charles had at least tried to let his hands go and got taken down anyway, it'd be more frustrating. But because he just kind of sat there skittish, fully on the defensive like Calvin Cater was against Aljo, I can deal with it. I'm happy Armand got his deserved win. I'm not switching up. I still like Charles. I want Makhachev to destroy Armand. But yeah, it's a good thing that he didn't get robbed. Everyone says that I already read this. Everyone says he's a one-trick pony. Alex didn't pass Izzy. I think he just did. Again, Izzy's best wins. He's one and one with Pereira. He's one and one with Whitaker. He has a win over Vittori and Jared Cannonier. Paulo Costa. Kelvin Gaslam. Okay. And who else? That's kind of it. Izzy has a win over Whitaker, Pereira, Gastelum, and Costa. Vittori and Cannoneer. Six good wins. Alex has a win over Jamal, Yuri, Jan, Strickland, and Izzy. I think those are honestly uh, even better. But either way, they're close. They're very close. They're close. It's not like they're far off from each other. I have to think about it more. We're going to do a lot of GOAT conversation talk after this. We're going to do a lot of striker tier lists. This is the perfect card where we can make a ton of content off of it because we learned a lot, and these are some of the biggest stars in the sport that would usually make those lists anyway, so we have a new perspective on them. I'm so hungry. No food in the house. Gonna eat my leg. Goodbye. Hey, thank you for the two bucks. Enjoy your night of eating. I I've got a long night ahead of me. Long night ahead of me of content. I'm going to have a, another cup of coffee too. The real winner tonight is Volk. Volk's legacy looks amazing after what we just saw. 100%. It looks phenomenal. Missed my last dono. I'm on it. Thank you for the two bucks. I am on it. Who wins? Ankalaev or Pereira? I have Ankalaev by penetration. I read that. Okay. I can see Pereira winning, especially since Jan beat up Ankalaev's legs. But I can't trust the guy who got outgrappled by Izzy to beat Ankalaev. I see what you're saying. But the guy that got outgrappled by Izzy survived the grappling against Jan Blahovich, who outgrappled Izzy. Right? The guy that got outgrappled by Izzy survived Yuri Prohaska taking him down when Rakic really couldn't. It's not like Rakic wasn't rocked, but still. Um, I think his grappling's getting better. And Magomed Ankalaev... Let's be honest, he's not the best finisher on the ground. Yeah, he finished Anthony Smith, but Smith was wilting and he was getting injured and stuff. Credit to Magomed, but still, it wasn't like a brutal finish. He didn't finish Jan Blahovich, who got finished by Glover. He doesn't have a great submission game. So I could see Alex surviving. I could see Alex stuffing some takedowns. I still like Ankalaev's chances, but I think the leg kicks are going to be a big issue for Magomed. Who does have look good leg checking defense, but so did uh, the guy that fucked his legs up, and he got his legs smashed to bits by Alex too. So I got to go with um, Pereira. And one of those left hooks, I think it's over. Also, Pereira's bringing that middleweight skill, glory kickboxing skill. <sighs> yeah. Justin is done. Max is an animal. I want to see him fight Islam. Thank you for the 10 bucks. I want the same thing. I say he should stay at lightweight. Stay at lightweight. You can always move down and fight Iliad Tapori. You have all this added muscle. Stay at lightweight. But I'm going to do a quick poll. Let's do a quick poll. Okay. Who wins? Or, or, no, no, no. Yeah. Should Max stay at lightweight?
Thank you for the five bucks, Dr. Easy. Fighters in 30 years will have the stand-up of Alex and the ground game of Islam. Crazy to think. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Like, in the lighter weight classes, yeah. But again, you're saying the stand-up of Alex. Like, listen, Alex's stand-up skills are great, but there are lighter weight class guys that have his stand-up skills. They're different skills, but there are lighter guys that have his stand-up skills. The thing is... What, Al what makes Alex impressive is the fact that he has those skills at a heavier weight class on the left hook. Let's not act like it's all totally skill. It's also just him having like the genetics to have a left hook like that. That's that powerful, right? Which is also a skill, but you get my point. You can't have the stand-up skills of Alex without the left hook power that's God-given. But yeah, the ground game of Islam and great stand-up skills, a lot of fighters will have that in the future. But I don't think in the heavier weight classes we're going to see light heavyweights with the stand-up of Alex and the ground game of Islam. Like, we, we may never see that. It's going to be real hard for the heavier guys to have that. Maybe in more than 30 years if the UFC doesn't fall off. But there are lighter weight class guys that have amazing stand-up and a ground game of someone that's really impressive. Let me think. Is there a bantamweight? I mean, listen, I don't think Jan has the ground game of Islam, but Jan, Peter Jan... Has amazing grappling, great takedown defense, great wrestling. And I think he's more skilled on the feet than Alex. I know he's not got the KO power and he has a different style, but there are lighter weight class guys that kind of already have like extremely sick skill sets. But I get what you're saying. There's going to be a lot more well-rounded guys. I doubt the lighter weight classes get so much better. What sports are the size of a man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What sports are the average size of man going into right now or the most or most men yeah that's the thing the lighter weight classes are already filled with tons of talent because most people around the 5'9 5, 5'10 5, 170 pound frame are just going into martial arts because they can't make the nfl they can't go to the nba they can't go to the mlb right maybe you could play soccer fair enough but what are the size of soccer players lighter weight class guys anyway so the heavier weight classes are usually always gonna be much less skilled because there's just more money in football and basketball and baseball right max got 600k holy shit let's check this out did max really get two bonuses <laughs> no way look at this photo of alex Pereira on full violence nice bro Big finish for Poetan. Yeah. All right. Where are the bonuses? Let's see the bonuses. I think the black belt was a little bit ridiculous. I'm going to be honest. I think the black belt was ridiculous. Holloway got 600K. He deserves the 600K. I mean, he does. I say give him 600K and give out a couple extra bonuses. But of course, the UFC wants to make some good money tonight they don't want to split even but even still i don't think they're splitting even yeah what did holloway get performance of the night and knockout of the night what were the awards that he got or the, the bonuses black belt was wild i know that the black belt was a little bit ridiculous like what did he do to earn that tonight i always think it's funny i remember tyron woodley subbed darren till and he got his brown belt or his black belt i understand that but didn't Pereira get another belt, like a brown belt, when he knocked out Yuri or some shit? He'll post it on IG. All right, let's check. We'll check right now. He'll post it on Instagram. I'm on it. Let's see. I'm sure he'll he'll be humble in defeat. Keep your head up. Ah, I think he might block me. Should I say keep your head up? What do you think, guys? Should I do the old keep your head up? Because I actually do feel bad for him. I like Jamal Hill. Or do you think he'll block me because he'll recognize my name? Keep your head up. I'll do the keep your head up, champ. But he's not champ. He's not champ, though. He won't. Keep your head up. Still one of the most entertaining 
fighters in the game. But Jamal is not the type of guy to want to just be the most entertaining fighter in the game. Um, Alex said he wants heavyweight Tom Aspinall. Oh, Aspinall is going to run through him. But listen, if Plotty Man Pavlovich can tag Aspinall with a left hook, Alex Pereira can tag him with a left hook. And I actually think Alex is the more dangerous left hook. So it is interesting. I still go with Aspinall. If Aspinall fights him, he would have a much better chance at just shooting a takedown, honestly. Like, it actually is a little bit too risky to stand with him on the feet. It's not a 50-50 if he mixes it up. If Aspinall shoots a takedown on Pereira, he's subbing him. I know we talk about heavyweight skill and light heavyweight skill having a skill gap, but come on. Aspinall's massive. And he's a great submission artist. 50-50 stand-up? I don't mind that. Tom kills him on the feet. All it takes is one left hook from a 250-pound Alex Pereira. One left hook to wobble Tom Aspinall. And guess what? If Pavlovich can land one, I think the Pereira can land one. And Tom tends to take risks. I didn't like the fact that Tom even stood with Pavlovich. You could say, well, he got it done. Fair enough. But he took the risk. That's not necessarily the smartest thing. I think his ego might get in the way to try to have a nice viral moment. What do you think? I like the matchup. I wouldn't mind seeing it. It's annoying that it wouldn't be for an undisputed belt. Oh, fuck. John Jones is going to ruin the potential for us to get a triple champ. Or a guy that wins belts in three weight classes. Just by frolicking around with the belt. Not coming back for the next year. John Jones just going to ruin that. Not his fault, but still, it's the UFC's fault for just letting him parade around with the belt when he's going to be out for two years, ducking fights. You have Aspinall versus Alex Pereira fighting for an interim belt. Yeah, Jones is kind of ruining that division with his injury. So, uh, I go with Aspinall if he shoots a takedown, but you don't know if he's going to be smart enough to shoot a takedown. He might just go in there and try to stand with him, and then I think it's a 50-50 fight. Yeah, Aspinall can smoke him with the right hand. So could Hill. Yeah, Aspinall's fast. I mean, Pereira's used to fighting 85ers. I doubt he's as fast as Izzy. He's still a heavyweight. I think they should strip John Jones and just make Aspinall the undisputed champ. Or just strip him and have Pereira and Aspinall fight for the undisputed belt. You could say, what about Curtis Blades? Okay, what about Curtis Blades? Let me guess. Curtis Blades had a fluke win over Tom Aspinall, which means nothing. Before that, I believe he got knocked out by Derek Lewis, and he had a stinky fight against Jarzinho. We're going to give him a, a 100% like nod. Okay, you definitely deserve the belt just because you got to win over one guy, Jelton Almeida. Mm, I kind of don't mind Alex Pereira fighting for the belt right now. Although he should defend against Magomed. But guess what? If he loses, he'll defend against Magomed. I know people don't like the guys moving up, but I bet they'll have some bias for Alex. And they'll look the other way. I thought Izzy told Jamal Hill the secret. True. And trained with him. Big fan, Lucas. Thank you for the $5. Yeah, what happened there? Did Izzy tell him how to get his ass beat? Thank you for the 5 bucks. Yes, all that for nothing. Pereira via big meaty hooks. I could see him knocking out Aspinall. 50-50 fight on the feet if Aspinall doesn't shoot. And he might just entertain the stand-up like he did against Pavlovich. Did Max beat the pillow hands allegations finally? Um, listen, Holloway, when he sits on a shot, doesn't have pillow hands. I, I never said he did when he sits on a shot. But, I mean, Holloway does not necessarily have, like, big power. Okay, yes, he chinned Gagey. Yes, he did. I mean, I guess, you know what? Yeah, I think he did. Because it's hard to f call someone pillow-handed when they have that many KOs. Holloway does have a bunch of KOs. And if you sit on a shot and have power, I guess you do have power. It's not like Hermanson sitting on a shot has big KO power. He just uses volume. Yeah, I think he beat the pillow hands allegation. Fair enough. But people have been saying it for years. It's not like a bold take to say he has pillow hands. 
Thank you for the two bucks. Tim Hutch, massive Max fan. Who's his next fight at 155? Hopefully Islam Makhachev. Or just take out some of the other 35ers holding up the division. And when I say 35ers, I mean 35-year-olds like Dustin Poirier and Gagey. Take one of them and get him out of there. See you soon, Lucas. See you soon as well. Thank you for the $2, Julian. Read my last dono. A judge gave Justin Gagey two rounds. I mean, that's not the end of the world. He won the fourth. He 100% won the fourth. I don't know what other round they would give him, but the third round was kind of close. One of those middle rounds was close. Would Jones see Alex as a winnable fight at heavyweight? Probably, but I don't think he wants to fight him. I think he's just going to wait for Stipe. I still think he, he knows it's a risky fight. But yeah, I think Jones takes him down and finishes him in one. Either way, like Jones is injured. He's not going to be around for the next four or five or six months. And Alex is going to want to get in there soon. Same thing with Aspinall. And that's a bigger fight. John Jones doesn't even feel like he's part of the division anymore. Matchmaking after 300, which fights excite you? I'm going to make a whole matchmaking video. I usually don't do it, but because this card was so great, I'll do a whole matchmaking video. Thank you for the 299. What are your thoughts on Rakic's performance? He looked good, but he got out dogged. And he didn't shoot takedowns, and I respect it. I respect Rakic for not shooting takedowns. Going for the bonus, because he could have shot on Yuri, but he didn't shoot once. Not a single time did he shoot. Maybe he did when he was rocked. I don't remember. Maybe Yuri pancaked him or something and got him on, on the ground before the finishing sequence. But I respect that he stood with Yuri. Not a good idea, but he was whooping his ass. So he was gaining confidence from it. But he got outdogged. Yuri just outgritted him and salted his way through it. <laughs> I'm literally going to rewatch <clears throat> this whole card. Just because of how good it was. I think welterweight is the best division in the UFC. They have way more young guys on the come up than any other division. Um, I don't know about that. Welterweight has JDM, Shavkat, Ian Gary. Who else? That's kind of it. I mean, that's that's a good amount. But lightweight has... I know Benoit just lost. But still, Benoit, Armand... Young, Max Holloway's in the mix these days. Let's think of the other guys. Mateus, Rebecki. I mean, to be fair, n not as many great young talent. A lot of them are, are kind of older, have been around for a minute. I see what you're saying. But it's like the big three and then some old heads, and that's kind of it. Leon is young, but he's not exactly someone that sells the division that much. He's kind of boring. Bilal is not young. Kamaru's kind of done, and Colby's done. So I want Kamaru to move up. I think the most exciting divisions right now are bantamweight, middleweight, middleweight stacked, especially outside of the rankings. And um, 45 is getting interesting with Diego Lopez and Holloway. It's getting real interesting with those. Volk and Aljo. Guys, we need to call for Volk and Aljo. We need to call for it. This is what we're going to do. On every single Aljo-related post, we have to hype up that fight. On every single Volk post, we say, please fight Aljo. Please fight Aljo. Tune-up fight. Okay? Gagey was absolutely outclassed tonight. I didn't think he'd be my parlay killer. I had a feeling Max was going to win. I felt it the whole night. I felt it when Holloway was walking out. I felt it all week, but I doubted my instincts. And to be honest, my ego got in the way and I didn't want to change my pick because then people would say, you're switching up, you're switching up, you're just copying other people and all that. And I was also kind of swayed by the idea of me wanting to get it right no matter what. Like, I'll be happy if Max wins and I'll be getting my pick right if Gagey wins. I should have switched my pick. I didn't want to be the guy that switched my pick and also got it wrong as well. But yeah, he got outclassed. He got shut down. I think that that's Max's... Best ever performance, knockout, multiple moments, rock and gagey. Yes, he got knocked down, but guess what? That makes it even more entertaining. And he's the first guy to ever have a clean looking performance against gagey. So I love it. Yeah, outclassed him. And same with Charles. Yeah, 
Listen, Charles didn't get totally outclassed. He was competitive in moments. I think he won the first round. My stream cut out. I was shitting my pants, but... Charles... He didn't take a lot of damage, but he kind of deserved to lose. He wasn't letting his hands go. He was not fighting like a lion. Charles was looking for submissions. He was fighting on the back foot. He looked skittish like he did against Islam. And I think it's clear that that performance against Islam was not an off night. It was a very similar look to what he had tonight. But it was still competitive. It wasn't like it wasn't competitive. Alex's celebration was awkward as fuck. I disagree. I know that some people were saying, what was that celebration? Weird celebration. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it was a good celebration. Awkward? That was just animated. He was just showing like, you know, he, he, I think that Hill was getting to him a little bit. Maybe Hill was annoying him in the buildup, and I, I didn't think it was bad. He was just rubbing it in. Jamal would have done the same thing. Jamal would have done it even worse. Jamal would have freaking done the Jorge Masvidal tapping on the canvas moment. It, I thought it was a great celebration. I liked it. Majority of Alex's resume is former champions. This guy has top 10 potential. Oh, 100%. Thank you for the five bucks. If he beats Magomed and Kalaev, in my opinion, Magomed has a better resume than Jamal and Yuri. If he beats Magomed, you might even put him in the top 10 all time. I have him top 15 and I have Holloway top 15 100%. Holloway may be top 10. Fuck it. I have Holloway top 10. Beating Justin Gagey is a lot of champions title defenses. And not only beat him, it's important to rate dominance. It's important to rate dominance on the GOAT list. That's why people say, isn't Aljo the featherweight or the bantamweight GOAT? No. You can't be with that type of lack of dominance. No, no, no. I've been giving Aljo a tough time tonight. I'm... <laughs> it, it's, it is what it is. I, I like Aljamain Sterling. I'm still happy that he won, but he's kind of the metric for boring and not that dominant, to be honest. I can't lie. Armand versus Islam thoughts. Thank you for the two bucks. I think that the grappling cancels, cancels out. They have a similar style of grappling where they like to get on top of their opponents and they have good top pressure. Um, Makhachev has amazing takedown defense and he's the better striker with heavier hands with amazing defense. I think he wins. Better clinch game as well. I think Makhachev wins. But I want to see that fight. But you know what? No Dustin Poirier matchup. I know people want to see that because they want Makhachev to get in there. Dustin Poirier getting a title fight after getting knocked out by Justin Gagey and winning a performance over an unfortunate circumstance fighter. When Justin Gagey had to get three wins and there's a logjam in the division with Holloway and now you got Armand? Fuck that. I do not want to see him fight someone that does not deserve a title fight. Even if I have to wait a little bit longer, I don't want a logjam. If you create a logjam, guess what? Holloway fights someone else, right? And then he's not there for a title fight. Armand doesn't want to sit out. He fights someone else and risks his spot. Gagey risked his spot tonight. Didn't need to. Could have been Gagey versus um, Makashev, right? But that wouldn't have been competitive. That would not have been competitive. I think Makashev would have totally ran through him. So kind of happy that we don't see the Gagey title fight. And I don't want the Poirier one either. I think he gets smoked. I don't need to see that. Unless they make it tomorrow, I do not need to see that, dude. Especially not in a few months when these other guys start healing up. Fuck that. Who's next for Oliveira? Thank you for the 299. Danny, I appreciate that. Who is next for Oliveira? I'd say Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker's a really good winnable fight for him. Maybe Renato Moicano if he wants to have a, a, a close fight against a fellow countryman. And if it's not Moicano, I say give him a, a smudge grappler like Gamrot. But hey, knowing the style of, uh, you know, Armand, I'm sorry, Charles, when he fights these pressure grapplers, it can get rough. So even Gamrot can beat him. Guru Raid, we got a Guru Raid. And Guru... I guess he's going to beat me on an upload, right? But we're chilling. We're chilling. I, I still haven't finished reading the donos. Shout out to the Guru fans. 
I'm sure you guys were happy about the outcomes tonight. I should have picked Max. I should have picked Max. I was worried about changing my pick. My ego got in the way. I, I, I thought it would be nice to be happy no matter the circumstance. If I get the pick right, that's great. If I get it wrong, I'll be happy. But I think my ego got in the way. I didn't want to be the guy that was swayed by the other content creators, but I should have just fucking owned up to it. All right, Guru was making a good argument this week. He was making a good argument this week. And I was starting to see it too. I was starting to see it too. He had a great prediction. The Guru Army in the chat. Shout out to the Guru Army. My stream cut off too. I know Guru's stream cut off. My stream cut off too during the Oliveira fight. It was like a domino effect. It was Guru's stream, then it was my stream, then it was other content creators' stream. So I, I got really scared, but I trusted in the process, dude. I stuck on. We are stalling you. Thank you for the five bucks. Yeah, it's fine if you guys stall me. I'm, I'm still reading donos. I haven't read all of them anyway. And we're still chilling. I'm not in a rush. I'm going to stay up all night if I need to. Thank you for the $2, Kevin. Islam versus Poirier announced. Costa versus Sean. No, you're bullshitting. You're bullshitting. Those fights were not announced. You're bullshitting big time. Oh, fuck. Are you for real? Dude, I don't like how they announce these big fights. Like, on the very night of a huge card like this. Wait, did he really announce Poirier versus Islam Makashev? Connor versus Chandler? No, you're bullshitting, bro. There's no way they would announce Connor versus Chandler like this. I don't understand. What are they doing? Let people talk about UFC 300. That's not the way to run a business. You let people talk about 300. Okay? They announced Connor just nonchalant at a post-fight presser? Okay, let's see. Main event. Islam versus Poirier. Co-main event. Strickland versus Costa. Strickland Costa, sick. June 29th. June 29th. Connor versus Chandler. Yeah! Yeah, let's go! Oh, dude, Chandler's gonna whoop his ass. Nice! 600k for Max. Bro, I'm kinda pissed, like... Listen, I mean, this is just because I make content. Like, why don't they just, why don't they just wait a couple days? Like, wouldn't they want people to be talking about UFC 300? Don't you want to dominate the off week? Announce this on like a Wednesday and you're still dominating the off week. I say dominate the off week, but why announce it on a Saturday night? <sighs> Lucas, not to say I told you, but I told you so. Do not doubt Max. I shouldn't have doubted him. I shouldn't have doubted my instincts this week. I had a feeling Max was going to win, and I freaking stubbornly stuck with my pick. Listen, I'm not even going to think about those matchups right now. Whatever. We'll deal with it. Makshev versus Dustin. He smokes Dustin Poirier easily. Easy title defense. It doesn't mean shit. But people are going to say, he needs to fight a lightweight. Oh, yeah, because Dustin's going to be such a tough test. Yeah, sure. Um, trust me. 45ers give Makshev way tougher tests than these bum lightweights. Unless it's, Mach Unless it's Armand, though. Armand would be a tough test. Guru friends, donate to Lucas like you do to the piggy. Also, don't bet against the Armenian. Armand Sarikian, next champ, even if he got choked, man. Armand Sarikian is the next champ. What about even if he got choked? What does it mean? He didn't even get choked. He didn't tap out. He toughed it out. I see the announcement, and I see that Holloway got two bonuses. Wait, let's actually read which bonuses he got. Breaking news, McGregor versus Michael Chandler set. I'm happy about the announcements, but don't you see what I'm saying? It's not necessarily the best move to announce these. The night of UFC 300. Wait until the next Tuesday when things are starting to die down and blow it back up. I don't know what they're thinking with this. Dana White, you got to let people talk about this card. 
let people hype it up. But to be honest, I'm just kind of coping because I, I have to, I have to make UFC 300 content that I feel is going to be less valuable now that all these announcements are made. Not that I don't want to make content on the new announcements. It's just like, I wish that they were to give us a couple days so that I can make a bunch of UFC 300 stuff without it going stale. But whatever. The more the merrier. Should Holloway stay at lightweight or fight Ilya? Um, well, I was going to say maybe he should stay in and beat up the other 35-year-old Dustin Poirier, but stay up. No, stay at lightweight. Stay at lightweight. Armand Sarikian's going to be next. Holloway won the... Nah, it might make sense to just move back down because it's looking like Armand Sarikian was in the real number one contenders fight. And I don't think people are dying to see Max versus Armand. I'm sorry, it doesn't... Oh, Joe Rogan's passed away. I don't think people are dying to see Max versus Makashev. I don't think we're dying to see that. I just think that you put on all this muscle, build yourself up into a real lightweight. It seems like a good weight class. You're going to have a skill advantage on the feet over all of these guys. Why would you cut all the muscle off? Have a horrible weight cut to 45, which is going to be the toughest weight cut of his life now that he's actually gotten big. And fight weight drained against Ilya Taporia. I don't think it's the best move. I say stay at lightweight. And if you lose, then fight Ilya Taporia. You'll walk right into a title fight. Man, Dustin versus Islam is a fight no one wants to see. He doesn't deserve it. Let's not make any mistake about it. He, he don't deserve that fight at all. He, he got a nice weird performance over a guy that gassed out because he had staph infection. I'd rather see Max Taporia or Armand fight him. Same here. I'd rather see Charles fight him in a rematch, not Dustin. I'd rather see Renato Moicano and Aljamain Sterling fight him than Dustin Poirier. But whatever, I'm looking forward to Dustin getting absolutely destroyed. I can't wait for Makhachev to cut through him like he's nothing. So I'm looking forward to it. At least they'll shut up about him fighting a lightweight. And you know what? Again, the lightweights are the easy fights for him. Outside of Armand, the lightweights are easy. It's the featherweights that are actually the ones that are giving him problems. People need to start understanding the skill gap between the divisions. And me too. I'm learning my lesson. I picked Cater against Aljo. Um, and I picked Gagey against Max. I'm still learning that lesson. I got to trust it more often than not. That's going to be something that I really take into account most heavily. More than anything else is the weight class skill discrepancy. Sean destroys Costa. Islam destroys Poirier. I agree. I think that... Costa's an easy fight for Sean. Costa's coming off of a loss to Robert Whitaker, who was slugging with him and there to hit and could have not been there to hit. I think Whitaker fought a really bad fight. Yeah, I've been saying this since before the Amava fight, when Costa was an even bigger name, an even bigger boogeyman, even though he still wasn't really a boogeyman. He was kind of the quitter and the guy that wasn't so serious about his career. But either way, yeah, Strickland easily wins that fight. I think Costa is a nightmare matchup for Sean and a good underdog. The constant pressure style really messes with Sean. The thing is, though, Drickus has a freakishly long reach, okay? And he actually hits hard. Jared Cannonier has a really long reach, and he actually hits hard, and he's actually good. Drickus is a champ that finished Robert Whitaker. The other guy kind of got shut down a little bit by Whitaker, okay? And Jared Cannonier is also like known for being really skilled too. Paulo Costa has no power in his hands and T-Rex arms. And I think that Strickland's going to be able to hold him off with a jab. And Costa's constant pressure, who has it really been getting to, to be honest? Has he finished anyone with that constant pressure? Guess what? Strickland has really good pressure. And Strickland, I believe, is going to make him gas out pretty badly. But those fights are on the same card, huh? Those fights are on the same card, but I disagree. Thank you for the two months membership. I do disagree heavily on that. Not that Costa has um, heavy pressure. He does have a heavy pressure style, but Strickland has great cardio, a longer reach, I believe, much better boxing. And Costa, for the most part, has a, a heavy boxing style. Was throwing a lot of kicks against Whitaker, but still, I don't think he's going to land a lot. And he's not going to put himself in harm's way that much either. 
But hey, I doubted him in his last fight when it comes to being tough and like being gritty, and he showed that. So he could go out there looking for a finish. I don't think he's got the power to finish Strickland. Strickland has a good chin. Wasn't even rocked or hurt once by DDP. Or Jared Cannonier. They hit harder than him. Thank you for the $2. Sosa man. Costa will wreck Shitland. Prepare to cry. Um, I don't think so. He's not wrecked anyone worth a damn. Thank you for the $2. That's the same thing people were saying about Garbrandt. Costa's just the Garbrandt of his division. He's had one star aligning moment against Yoel Romero, which he lost that fight as well. And then he's beat an old head that was washed, like Garbrandt beating some old heads, right? Yuri rematch, don't feed Pereira to Aspinall. No, I don't want the Yuri rematch. You got to have more time in between it. Yuri took a lot of damage. Pereira hardly took any damage. I say give Pereira a fresh guy like Aspinall or Magomed. Give him Magomed. Let him defend his belt. If he defends against Magomed, he's basically cleared out the who's who of that division. He's cleared out Yuri, Jamal, Jan Blachowicz, and Magomed. Those are the four guys. Those are the big four. So then he's actually cleared out his division. And then he can move up. Top five strikers in MMA, O'Malley, Ilya, Pereira, Holloway, and who else? Volk was in the mix, but it's hard to put a guy that's coming off of a brutal KO loss in the mix. I still think skill-wise, Volk is up there, but um, Wonderboy. O'Malley, Ilya, Holloway, Wonderboy. I think Volk is a better striker than Pereira. People are going to disagree with it, but he is coming off of a KO loss, so that does affect him. But he's a better striker skill-wise than Pereira. But yeah, Holloway's in there. No, not McGregor. Not McGregor. Connor confirmed I saw. What do you guys think? Am I crazy in saying that th this is not the time to announce those fights? Wouldn't it be better for us to have those announcements later in the week? Like, don't people want to still bask in the glory of this card? Don't people still want to sit on this card for a little bit? Then, when we think we're going to get a down week with no fights next weekend, the UFC surprises us with those announcements on a Tuesday. It's the time to announce it. I don't think so, man. I think they should have waited. I feel like announce it when the week starts getting slow when we're back to normal. Give us something to look forward to. Timing is unusual. I don't like how they announce these big fights on the same night of a pay-per-view. It's good for the spotlight, yes. But do it at the press conference because there's not a whole lot happening on Friday. Right? Friday is usually the downtime before a big paper review when everyone's kind of done with all of the, uh, the press and all the interviews. They just want to see the fights. I say announce it after the press conference on a Thursday or do it on a Friday at the weigh-ins. But you don't want to do it the same night as all of these other big moments. You want to let those moments like gain traction on social media. But hey, I have fuckloads of content all week. And Connor and Chandler's finally here. You know what? I don't even know if I'm going to make an individual video on Connor and Chandler. I've made too many. I'll just do a video about all three matchups. Is your DDP at 305 and Alex Magomed at 301? Thank you for the $2. Is your DDP at 305? Um, that's probably going to happen. Alex and Magomed at 301 is not going to happen. I think it's too soon. I can't see Magomed stepping up in three weeks' notice. I think he wants a full camp. Um, yeah. Dustin beats Fazeev, then the title. He's not fighting Fazeev, he's fighting Makashev. That fight's been made. They announced it just now. Thank you for the $2. Lucas, I'm depressed. I didn't even bet tonight, though. I thought Max was going to win. Help me cope. Thanks for the content. Uh, even though I thought Max was going to win. Oh, you're depressed because you didn't bet? You should not be depressed because you didn't bet. Smart not to bet. Thank you for the five. Hey, just be happy that you got your favorite guys winning, right? This fight was the wrong fight for Hill to come back to. Yeah, I think a tune-up fight would have been good. But he didn't look that bad. I just think he was really cautious, as you should be against Pereira. And it's not like the leg kicks got to him or his movement looked awfully slow. He just got caught exchanging hooks with the best left hook in MMA. So 
cannot afford to lose. Thank you for the $2. I don't know exactly which one you're talking about. Islam versus Pori announced Costa versus Sean. I saw it. Thank you for the $2, Kevin. And thank you for the $5, Milk. I have seen the announcements. Post your vid of your reactions only, please. I will. I'm going to do a reactions only video. I'm going to do that too. Connor's fighting Chandler. Dana confirmed. I saw it. You chatted shit for months about Max. Okay. Was I chatting shit about Max this week, guys? Or was I just saying he had pillow hands? Which people say. I was not shouting shit against him in my prediction. In both of my predictions for Holloway this week, my main card predictions or my full card predictions and the video itself, I wasn't shitting on Max. I spent like the first eight minutes talking about how Max has actually got a decent chance. I was talking shit about the fight and I was wrong on that, but I wasn't shitting on Max this week, bro. I said he had pillow hands. Oh, pillow hands. Okay, yes, I did... Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I chatted shit about his pillow hands. Fair enough. But come on. You're going to tell me that it's like some kind of a stretch to say he has pillow hands? Holloway's kind of known for pit pat shots. But we got to take it back because when he actually sits down on shots, he gets KOs. And you know what? Most KO fighters try to sit down on their shots. Holloway purposefully goes out of his way to land volume. So he doesn't have pillow hands. Holloway's got that Polynesian power. You were pretty close to switching. I was close to switching. To say that I was talking shit all week is disingenuine. Disingenuous. Fair enough. I was shitting on the fight. I was saying he had pillow hands. I have chatted shit, but I love Holloway. You guys know I was rooting for him, and I was giving him a chance this week, and I was thinking about switching. So I wasn't, like, totally shitting on. This was not, like, a Poirier Benoit moment, okay? That's what I mean. Jan for the title if he beats Khalil and Rakic. I don't mind it. Jan is still in there. But do we really need to see Jan Blahovic rematch Alex Pereira right now? I mean, he hasn't fought since. What, one win and he's back in there? I don't think Yuri should go back in there after just one win. I think it's Magomed and no one else. 100% most people are asleep and they announce Connor. I know, dude. That's what I'm saying. They announce it when most people are going to sleep. Bad move. Wait a couple days. My sources tell me that all the 50-year-old wrestling dads bought the pay-per-view rooting for Bo, a true wrestling superstar. And they tuned out. They bought the pay-per-view for Bo, and they immediately tuned off the TV as soon as he won and went to bed and didn't watch any other fights. Thank you for the five bucks. Who's next for Oliveira? Gamrot. Won an eight-fight parlay. Let's go, Flukas. Congrats on the eight-fight parlay. I hope you won a lot. Thoughts on Bo's Stinker versus Brundage, and how does he do against Hernandez or Kopilov? Uh, he gets smoked by both of them. He has a better chance against Kopilov, obviously, but he gets smoked by Hernandez. Horrible matchup. If he struggled taking down Brundage at times, and if he struggled to do anything to him on the ground, Brundage got outgrappled by Cedricus Dumas. All right. I don't think he's easily out grappling Hernandez. I think Hernandez smokes him. Not a good call out. Not at all. Majority of Alex's resumes, former champions. True. Aljo versus Cater was the most boring fight. Second was Bo. True. At least Bo got a finish. Can you read my last dono? I'm on it. Miss my last dono when Kayla would take you. Kayla would not take me. Kayla would not take me. Gagey was absolutely outclassed tonight. I didn't think he'd be a parlay killer. I've read it by now. I just got it. Thank you for the five bucks. I read that already. Alex said he wants heavyweight. I read that too. Did Max beat pillow hands allegations? Yes, I think he finally did. Massive Max fan. Who's next to 155? Um, I say campaign for a title shot against the winner of Poirier and Makachev. And if he can't get it, then move down. But I don't mind him staying up a weight class. I don't want him to just cut a shitload of weight after working his ass off to get up to 155. And this is the marquee weight class. If he gets smoked by Taporia, he doesn't have the same pull at 155 where he is the sitting BMF champ. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I think I've read all the donos. I think I've read them all. 
Opinion on Max whooping Gagey and flatlining him. Thank you for the $2, Isaac. Um, I love it. I can't wait to talk about it in my recap. Poetan is 36. When does he lose his will to perform at a high level and fall off? I'd say after his next fight, maybe. If he wins another time, I, I think he'll have made it so much. And I think he he'll would have accomplished everything. If he beats Tom Aspinall after that. But I say he re I, sh I say he should retire if he beats Aspinall in a fight. Your prime age to get recruited to go die for the... Okay. Feels bad, man. Yeah, unfortunately, that is a fucking... Dude, I'm not... Listen. I don't want to fight for anything that I think is just ridiculous. I, I hope World War III doesn't happen. But thank you for reminding me about World War III when I was in a good mood. Um, I don't want to fight for that. I'm not saying I wouldn't fight for my country. But I don't want to fight for, you know, either way. I'll defend America. <laughs> I'll defend my country. Um, but you get the point. Uh Fall asleep, woke up back in shock. Thank you for the $2. I love my country, though. I'll defend my country. But I don't want to go to war for something like that. Let's hope it doesn't happen. But Iran is going to do something, right? Iran has prompt. Wait, didn't Iran already do something today? I, I don't remember. Like, I, I'm sure they did something before my, I started my stream. Thank you for the membership, Sebastian. I appreciate that. Uh, fell asleep, woke up, back in shock. Fell asleep, dude. Just It's time. If you fell asleep and you're waking up, I, I say get back to sleep. Or you know what? Wait until I drop my video. Wait until I drop my video. Give me some views and then go to sleep again. Nah, I'm joking. Get some sleep, man. There's no reason to stay up all night if you're not making content, guys. I I'm going to stay up. I'm looking forward to it. I'm in a great mood right now. All right, I'm not trying to think about World War III. I'm trying to think about UFC 300. <sighs> I think that's all the donos, guys. I think that is all the donos. So I'm going to get going. More donos. You don't want to defend. Okay, dude. Let's let's chill about the you know what. Uh thank you for the $2. Do you think a fight between Alex and Khalil would be competitive? No. I think uh, Alex would show levels. Khalil had a very competitive war with, what's his name? Anthony Smith. So no. They had a war. So no, I think he would show levels. Both have six striking skills. I agree. I definitely agree. But guys, it's time for me to film some content. So I'm going to drop my videos. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Thank you so much for the support. I've got a lot of content to make today, tomorrow, the next day, so stay tuned.